Is the way you start a broadcast. That's right. Recording. That's right. That's the way to get in with a bang. I mean, Ladies that is, and wow. gentlemen, thank you for being here at the Deep Dive Live. We are live, and if you've noticed, we have a brand new setup for this yes, political show, absolutely. Corey and Sarah. I mean, if you're going to do it for the political season, you've that's got to do it the right way. That's right. So we thank you guys for being here. We thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Who do we have here? If you are here <laughs> live with us, please introduce yourself. Say, my name is blah, 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 and I am here live. Let us see it in the comment section, because I'm going to show you something real fancy. Crystal says she loves it. Crystal says she loves the setup. Thank you, Crystal. Glad to have you. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Did you see that? <laughs> Crystal uh, said she loves the awesome, setup, awesome. and we've got it right there live Off to on good start. the broadcast. <laughs> yeah, we've upgraded this thing. <laughs> we've upgraded this thing, so thank you very yes. much, guys. Oh, yes. Today, we're going to be talking about political powers. That is the title mm -hmm. for this broadcast. We're talking about the political powers in the United States of America, as you all know, this is a heavy weekend. Oh, yes. Oh, the next yeah. seven days are critical. Yes. Tomorrow is what they call the Festival of Darkness. It's actually not the darkest feast, but it's one of mm. them. It's, it's in the top seven. Yeah. As you know, there are seven of them. And then right afterward, we have the Festival of Jeroboam. That's and then right after that, <laughs> we have the U.S. election. So if you have no idea what we're talking about, then I suggest you go back to our broadcast, Yom Teruah. That yeah. was the Feast of Trumpets, where we talked oh, yeah. about all the light and dark feasts. And if you're still confused after that, then see Crystal or see Chad. Because <laughs> we, we can't help you. Shanika, you <laughs> Shanika can help you. Shanika <laughs> can help you. So thank you very much, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. We enjoy being here on a Friday evening with you guys. We are set right up for the political show. I've got to pull in this comment right here. This, this comment is a special one. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's a beautiful setup indeed. Oh, yeah. That is Apostle Diane Coverly. <laughs> All right. So who do we have here on the broadcast? We have... Corey, cool. Corey, the magnificent <laughs> Corey, the tank. He's an actor. He's a celebrity down here in Atlanta. He's doing big things. You know, Atlanta is the second Hollywood. Yeah, That's what they say, right? It's the Hollywood of the South, right? It is. That's Corey's right. worked That's with right. all the big names. You call a name, Corey's worked with them. So we are so pleased to have Corey on the broadcast with us. And on the opposite side, we can't even see him <laughs> because 
the camera is set up poorly. <laughs> Who set that camera? It was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it in the interim when I he's jump up to surprise. do the, the he's praise a, he's and a worship. He's, yeah. he's, I guess he's a surprise guest for today. Yeah. His name yeah. is Joseph Komenin. We call him Joe the Mechanic, yeah. Joe the Demon <laughs> Slapper. Joe, what else we call you? My Joe the Unstoppable? Joe, yes. yes, my brother Joe. Yeah. Joseph yeah, yeah. the Dreamer, the guy who really does dream <laughs> prophetic dreams. Yeah, uh, man. And, you know, he's going he's gonna to help us out with uh, some information yeah. prophetically tonight because we're going to be talking about some deep stuff tonight. So, you know, stay tuned. And right next to me, yes, the That's beautiful... Right. <laughs> she started the she started the broadcast off with the song. We we had to change up the intro. Joe nor Corey saw the intro, but yeah. my beautiful wife Sarah and Elizabeth. Uh, I have to call the full name, you know, because it's a political show. So yeah. Elizabeth, where that one come from? Ah, Elizabeth. yes, that's the old country. That's the old country. That's the old country. Yeah, that's the old country. yeah. Yes, it, yeah that's, there are many Elizabeths oh, yeah. in her family. Yeah, so she's yeah. Victorian, right, Corey? That's right. You that's know, right. that's the that's the roots that's of, right. of America, right? Exactly. That's the roots yeah. of America. You see these yeah. flags. Waving in the background, oh, yeah. you know, the, the, the very first flag I, I was told had the Union Jack on it, Joe. Yeah. Yes, when they mm. when they revolted against the British. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the first yeah. one had the, the Union Jack on it. So we're, we're grateful to have you guys here along with us. Thank you for being here. And me, I am the guy who sits in the seat filling in for the rabbi until he returns. Yeah. The rabbi is soon to come. So that's until right, he gets here, right. I'm going to be filling in for the rabbi. This is a great question. Crystal says, where is Anika? Great question. Yeah, it is. Corey, great question. Where is yeah. Anika? Anika Corey, yeah. where is Anika? <laughs> where is Anika Corey? <laughs> I'm sure everyone would like to know. Yeah, she's yes. accomplishing some different projects yes. that she's dealing with and sorting out some things to help some other productions going. So yes. she's been helping with some projects and been bothered with a lot of things. So keep her in prayer yes. with that. So yeah, definitely um, yeah, been a busy day for her. That is the answer to your question. Yes. Anika, <laughs> she'll be watching live, of yes, course. Yes. And when she, she has not seen this. So when she does see it on the broadcast, she's going to speed oh, over yeah. here. She's going to say, there's no way I'm going to miss this political yeah. episode. <laughs> but, you know, unfortunately, these things do happen. So yes. we can hold the fort down. Corey said he's taking all of Anika's notes, and he's going to present everything that Anika had prepared. So, Sarah, you're on your own. You're here with the uh, three guys. It's kind well, of... you know, it, I have three brothers. Exactly. Three brothers. I mean, this is so like you, growing so you, up so all you, over so again. So you're right. used to it. Yeah. She's used to it. Yeah. And that's exactly how they oh, fall. Yeah. She's that's got right. two older brothers and then uh, a baby brother. So tonight, <laughs> you're, you're baby Joe. Works. Tonight, he's baby Joe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tonight, he is baby yes. Joe. Oh, my. Yeah. So we, we thought that yeah. since we're doing a political broadcast, we're going to be going into the prophetic and telling you exactly what God has said about this election. Yeah. Prior to the election, we wanted to do this after the election, but Yahweh said, how dare you? Yeah, you need like, to no, declare no. what I said now. <laughs> right. So we're going to declare what he showed, okay? Mm. And, you know, Yahweh's, Yahweh's provisions are always up to interpretation. Yes. But based on the information that is provided, we're going to reveal to you the system and the timeline that he presented to us. Yes. Before we get into that deep content, you know what we have to do? We gotta open mm -hmm. up with worship. Mm -hmm. We have to right. do a worship That's song. Right. You know, political That's powers, right. they are the powers that sit in the high places right. of mm -hmm. these countries. So we have to open up with the song We Place You because we put God at the highest place. No yeah. matter That's what right. party you, you you represent, no matter who you voted for in the early voting, no matter who you're gonna vote for next week, if you're not serving Yahweh and you're not, you're not looking toward the second coming, then you're doing it wrong. True. So so we're gonna open up right quick. And if Ava's on Ava you would be very disappointed to know that I still have not shared the broadcast. There's so many oh, things yeah, going on. Yeah. So when I get back in place, before I utter another word, I'm going to give my phone to Sarah, and then she's going to share the broadcast with me from my phone because, yeah, no you know, it's, it's too much going on. So thank you very much, guys, for being here. We appreciate your patience with us. We appreciate your laboring with us. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is going to be a good one, and it's going to be a long one. So don't go anywhere. Get yourself some popcorn. Yes. Get yourself some water. Take yourself a good break. Yes. Worship with us. Oh, please. Yes. As we sing this song. We, yes, we play oh, yeah. Yahweh at the highest yes. We do. Amen. We do. We give you glory, Place. Yahweh. We Thank magnify Yahweh. you. Yes. We know that you are the mm. great high priest, and we just Amen. come to you with open hearts, open minds, and a temple to worship you and Amen. hear from you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. place you at the highest place for you are the great high priest we place 
is you. I above all else, as we come to you and worship at your feet. to you as we come to you and worship at your free we bring you honor and glory our way we magnify your name always as we come to you and worship at your feet. We worship you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. We thank you. We praise you. Bless your name, we Yahweh. We adore you. We magnify you, Yahweh. your name, you, Yahweh. Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. You are the Prince of Peace. Your name is glorified. The, the great high priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Yahweh. Yahweh. We praise Hallelujah. you. We give you glory. We give thank you glory. Thank you for oh, worthy you are you. Are you. Worthy you are, are you. you. Holy Hallelujah. are you. Hallelujah. Righteous Hallelujah. are you, Yahweh. 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 We, we give you praise. Elohim. Place all things in your hands as we place you on the highest place. Revelation for your name. Yes, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, you are true. Glory to your name, Yeshua. Yes, you are magnificent. Yes, you there's none greater Yahweh. than you. We Hallelujah. just love you, Yahweh. Thank we you, praise Yahweh. you, Yahweh. We thank you, Great Yahweh. Your name in all oh the God, earth. we praise you. Hallelujah. We praise you. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Thank we you, Great Mighty God, King of Kings, Yahweh. Lord of Lords. We give this to you. Hallelujah. We give all things to you, yes, Yahweh. Yahweh. We, we give all Bless things to you, Yahweh. Bless your name. Our lives. Yes, yes. Everything we that we are. Yahweh be praised. We, we thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Yahweh. We thank you, Yahweh. Thank you. We thank you, Yahweh. Yahweh to we the thank fullest. you, Yahweh. Yeah, we praise, praise. Your name Thank you, Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! I tell you, Powerful. boy, listen, this crew, man, this crew man. believes in man. worship. So you start the music and you start worshiping. Uh, we say forget about the broadcast, forget about the information. <laughs> you know, there yeah. won't be any deep dive lives in heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There will exactly. be worship. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. There will be worship. That's that. So that's right. Sometimes we have yeah. to pull ourselves back. Yes. Get Absolutely. ourselves back into the mind Absolutely. frame of 
Did you share this for me? Did Sarah share it for me? Did no, you share I was it for singing. me? Sarah was singing. She I was, was singing. like, how can I share? She's like, how can I how can I share the broadcast? I couldn't pay attention. Uh, right. To uh, that. How can you do that? You're right. Yeah. 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 So you know, these things. Yahweh take, comes first. Yeah, yeah, Yahweh right. does come first, mm -hmm. and then I come second. Yeah. And yeah. then the broadcast <laughs> comes third. No, right. no. That's how. It works. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Good, good. Right. So thank you very much, guys, for joining us. So yeah. as you see, we're going to be talking about political powers, political, yeah, powers. political powers. In the U.S., we, 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 we have seen unprecedented changes within the last Man. four years. In fact, it's, it started about 15 years ago. This country yeah. has been on such a different path from mm. the one that was set from the foundation of four, the forefathers. But, you know, Absolutely. as we know, in, when you do more, more research and you look into the historical account, you'll actually see that we're actually going back to the original. Yeah. We're going back past mm -hmm. the Revolutionary War into what the country and the landscape mm -hmm. looked like prior to. So if you want to know what it looked like prior to, you hang on to your hats because we're going to be discussing that right now. Corey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anika was supposed to do the 10 things to remember. If you guys yes. remember two weeks ago, Anika actually ran the broadcast. Yes, she did. Yes, yes. she did. We, yeah, should we, should, we should dial her in and make her do it <laughs> over, over <laughs> Skype. <laughs> yeah, we, we should do it, right? Dial her dial in. Dial her in, like, from over the you know, top, and then she can read it off. And right, and then, she can, yeah, and then she can do it. <laughs> no, 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 Corey. No, no, Corey. We can actually dial her in with the webcam. You know, yeah. in season three of the Deep Dive Live, I, I want you guys to get ready now. Get, get your hair done, get your makeup fixed, because we're going to have live interview sessions yes. where we dial in with our scholars, our virtual scholars. So so get ready for that. Yeah, yes. Get oh ready yeah. for that. Yes. So we're going to dive in. You want to look into the um, 10 things. Remember, I'm going to pull that up here, actually here. 10 things, ten to, things remember. to remember. Let's remember what, what the 10 things were. And um, let's see what this program has while I get It's been so here. long, I don't even remember what the bro last broadcast was. What were we talking <laughs> about last broadcast? <laughs> 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 we talked about Alfred to make it. <laughs> 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 I'm asking the truth. Unbelievable. Yeah. See, yeah, the eight, that's, right. that, that's the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Anika did all those great t yeah. right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Joe said he knows I was joking. I, no, I actually said I was right there. It's like, email. what did we do? What did we talk about last week? It's been so long. No, 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 I'm not a senior. I'm not, not a senior. All. We don't believe in senior moments, nor gray hair. So we, we don't believe in gray hair. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we don't believe in young moments. No. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Because we are the, on our A game. Yes. That's right. Yes. So we've got, we've got the 10 things to remember. <laughs> and I'm right on here the spot and I had to pull it up because I had a new email because the other email had so much clutter in it, I had to get a new one. Oh, listen to that. Listen <laughs> so to that. I had to that. go skipping, jumping, hopping over to the new one. So. All right, brother. So the first one we got is... Uh, Ten things. Remember, we got first. We have Alpha Generation, which immediately follows Generation Z. Our children born from around early 2010 to around the year 2025, and the oldest are about nine years old right now. And the youngest have yet to be born. And all current babies and toddlers, preschoolers are included. So that's um, the first thing we got. We got a generation of alphas that are growing, you know, and to be, you know smart beyond their years <laughs> and we're seeing so much with their tech savvy so we, we hear an example of that so we're going to watch what they do with the technology as they learn so early um secondly we've got uh, obedience activates blessings we looked at um deuteronomy 7 9 which says know therefore that the lord thy god he is god the faithful god which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations then thirdly we have when alpha meets omega mankind will be at an all-time height of wickedness and as scripture indicates knowledge will increase and that's uh daniel 12 4 says that but thou O daniel shut up the shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased and fourthly as yahweh desires to influence youth for the kingdom of light so does the enemy desire to influence youth for the kingdom of darkness. And I just saw a text that came in that was pretty exciting that um, our electricity is back on because we lost power. Yes. <laughs> and I left that so. Uh, oh, listen. That's, yeah. That, that, that uh, tropical, well, Hurricane, Hurricane Zeta. Yeah. Was it? Oh, Hurricane Zeta was a beast here in yeah. the southeast region. Yeah. Did you get uh, any damage? Man. No. No. We <laughs> Yeah. It, it came back on. 
Oh, listen. Yeah. It it was terrible. It was terrible. So yeah. in the Gulf, it, it it was raging. In the Gulf, it was raging. Yeah. When it came through yeah. to to Florida and and Georgia, we oh, yeah. had some serious storm activity Absolutely. happening. So for those of you who are watching. Uh, we pray that you made it through yeah. the storm safely. We thank God for covering you and protecting you. And That's we right. know that, you know, God is in control. That's so, right. So, yeah, I'm Absolutely. glad that so your, your power is off for That's two right. days. It was like uh, over 24 hours, like almost a day and a half pretty right. much. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're glad to be that. <laughs> you know, people in Thanks. the Caribbean, they're like, man, when hurricanes come through, our power is off for like two, three, four yeah. months. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. But listen, we don't yeah. expect that from Georgia power. No, no, not right? Georgia we don't power. Expect, <laughs> no, no, no. You're in a different kind yeah. We're talking about political yeah, powers, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're talking about a, a whole different ball game. You're talking about a That's whole right. different economy. So these are things that we don't expect. You, you come right. here and you get spoiled. So, yes, we're That's spoiled. Right. We're spoiled. Uh, deal and, with it. <laughs> yeah. And fifthly, we've got uh, no generation has been bombarded with the levels of technology as such at the early age as the alpha generation. And then number six, this generation will by, uh, witness the 7G Major events signaling Yeshua's return. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, 34 says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And then number seven, we have within just a five-year span, the world seems to change like clockwork. The, with a 10-year span, it's night and day compared to where it was to the present. Technology-wise and policy-wise, different things change so fast um, that, the, that the time speeds along. And number eight, idolatry unchecked visits third and fourth generations as exodus 20 and 5 says thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and number nine the elite's efforts are to merge technology into man and then eventually man into technology and that's where that 7g comes in and they want to go beyond and that's what he, the signal is just his return as he cannot have that as technology and um, clay merged together with the uh, metals and things like that. So that is definitely against what Yeshua, that's why he cursed the ground anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, number 10, the alpha population is expected to reach 2 billion by 2025. So we see things are moving pretty fast um, in these times with uh, a lot more children being birthed, a lot more people in the population uh, density increase as these years uh, progress. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing what we're seeing, what yeah. Yahweh yeah, is doing. Sure is. Amazing. Yes. We're going forth. You know, so, yes, yeah, totally a blessing. And so, shall we dive in the 500 years in the making? Well, we do you want to go in there before that? Yes, before, before we talk about that, those are some great points. So if you guys remember all of that content, uh, let's get an amen down in the comment section. And if you were not yes. here for the broadcast, then uh, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> but really, though, we thank you. Watch. We thank you guys. We thank go you guys for being that. here. Uh, go back and rewatch that yeah. information because it was great. We had we had yeah. a great time. Yeah. You oh know, yeah. Talking absolutely. about Alpha means Omega, and you know the the main important the the main goal is that Yahweh is coming back. He's sending right. His Son. We know we call him the Alpha and the Omega. That's oh, right. Yes. And, and we have a specific time frame on when he's due to return. And it is very soon. We have mm -hmm. very little time left. So mm -hmm. make sure you make your calling and election sure, as the old folks That's used right. to say, right? That's right. All right. So, yeah. yes, brother, without further ado, we're going to have Corey, who is going to be doing his wife's duty. So, Corey, yes, yes, yes. he's going to be talking <laughs> about the political powers of historical America. So go ahead, brother. Absolutely. And, um... Yeah, wow, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. We have a lot to cover today, and um, there's going to be so much you can take in. And I've learned a lot as I see so much, so much of the uh, information over the years has expanded. Yeah. Um, what I was taught in school, what many of us were taught in schools, were, uh, was history based on you know what was given to them in their curriculum and what they were permitted to teach and what they were permitted to uh, tell about, you know, and they had a lot of bias and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of inaccuracies. Yes. And um, I was like blown away at what I found just truly searching, researching. Right. Now, you know, there's always a term out there's always a saying out there, be careful where you research before you know what it's not research if you just Google something up and then just take it off a grain of salt. You know, that's when research comes in. When you really truly research you find you divide truth and error as the scripture talks about. You know, so um but here looking at um how man has come to be 
and the uh, how how they have taken up the population um, and productivity and just making themselves fruitful throughout the entire earth as Yahweh had um, told Adam and Eve since of old. We'll start here at um, just after the flood and how how man has come about in the, to replenish the earth. It is here after the flood we have seen where Yahweh's mercy allowed for the earth to be replenished. In Genesis 10, it shows how quickly the population began to grow through Noah's sons. Mm -hmm. So we'll start here at Genesis 10. Um, and it shows here how uh, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Teras. And the sons of Gomer, Ashenaz, and Riphath, and Togamar, Togamara, and the sons of Japhan, and Elisha, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Ketim, and Dodadim. And I'm going to look at these words and these names here, and I mm -hmm. didn't even go over them, but I can tell you these words are definitely some challenging names to watch. So <laughs> take, pay close attention to this in case you want to name some of your children this name. <laughs> 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 That's be a good one. Be Corey. careful which names you name. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so by these were the, the isles of the Gentiles uh, divided in their lands, and every one after his tongue, after the, their families and their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Phut, and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Reamah, and Sabtaka, and the sons of Reamah, Sheba, and Dedan, and Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth, and he was one of the ones that oversaw the, uh, as you know, the Tower of Babel and how that came about. Mm -hmm. You know this part later, so that's a definitely a prominent name there, recognized. And then uh, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, there wherefore. It is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, at uh, the beginning uh, of this, his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalneh and the land of Shinar. Out of the land went forth Ashur and builded in Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Kala and Resen between Nineveh and Kala. The same is a great city. Now, some of these names here, like, uh, for example, um, that you'll see later, like Enoch, there's two of those, you know, di two different ones and things like that. So there, there are names that you'll see throughout Scripture where it's not necessarily meaning the, the same person that you may know of, you know, prevalently. So there are different multiple names throughout Scripture. So that's where you got to really look at the which names is being described um, mm -hmm. in the Scriptures. And, uh, and Mizraim begot Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim and Pathrusim and Kashuhim, out of whom came Philistim and Kaphtorim and Canaan begot Sidon his firstborn and Heth and the Jebusite and the Amorite and the Gergesite and the Hevite and the Archite and the Sinite and the Arvadite and the Zamorite and the Hamathite and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon as thou comest to Gerer unto Gaza as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah and Adama and Zebuim even the lash unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in the nations. Unto Shem also the father of the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born, the children of Shem, Elam, Esher, and Arphavax, and Lud, and Aram, the children of Aram, Uz, and Hol, and Gether, and Mash, and Aphrax, and begot Selah, and Selah begot Eber. And unto Eber was born two sons. The name of was Peleg, for his days was on earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begot Almadad, and Shavlath, and Hazamath, and Zerah, and Hadoram, Azuel, and Dikalai, and Obel, and Abimelel, and Sheba, Ophir, Havala, Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. And their dwelling was from Misha, as thou goest unto Sephir, and Mount of the East. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, and in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. And so this is, that's, that, that's Genesis 10, 1 to 32. And you might wonder, why do we have to know these names? Why do we have to put these um, items together throughout the scriptures? It's real important that we study the word of Yahweh 
and that we can pinpoint and make the connections as to the generations and the tribes where they came from and why the people were a certain way and why certain things came forth because of uh, the births and the cultures and things practiced during those times uh, with those people. So it's, it's real key important to connect those dots with the names that may seem in unimportant, but they do have significance. That's why Yahweh permitted them to be there in his word. And so here we'll start, um, we'll look at the Beringia and Pangea effect, and uh, we'll I'll explain how that kind of plays in the fact and what that means as far as how the land formations yes, came about. teach us, brother. Very interesting how these came about. And very interesting as what I found growing up as a kid as to these different thoughts as to how these came about. And then what the actual truth is, how Yahweh has put it together. And um, we'll start off with Beringia, also called Bering Land Bridge. Is it a series of landforms that once existed periodically in various forms between northeastern Asia and northwestern North America? The Bering Land Bridge was a land bridge roughly about a thousand miles wide, north and south, north to the south, and it was about as great as extent joining present day Alaska, eastern Siberia, and various times during the Pleistocene Ice Age. It's believed to have had periods of worldwide glacier coverage and also later lo uh, lowering of sea levels. Such dry regions, the lands uh, began appearing between the two continents. The term Beringia mm -hmm. usually refers to the often large areas that intermittently linked present-day northwestern Canada and northern and western Alaska, U.S., with northeastern Siberia and Russia. Mm. It is pre uh, particularly associated with the most recent of these regions, the present-day Bering Strait between Alaska and Siberia, mm -hmm. linking what is, are now known as the uh, Arctic Ocean and the Bering Seas. Okay. Uh, open, disconnected, the uh, intercontinental land connection. Uh, fossil evidence well supports the belief that over time the various land bridges allowed plants and animals to move between the old new land masses. And the most recent Beringia is also considered to be at least one of the ways of, if not the main route, uh, by which people migrated populating the Americas. And now... Um, Pangea, however, or, Pan or Pangea, was uh, a supercontinent. Mm -hmm. So it assembled from the earlier continental units and eventually began to break apart, uh, different from the present Earth and its distribution of continental mass. Pangea was centered on the equator, surrounded by the super ocean, Pathalasia. So that was like, it was a lot larger with the ocean when it was spread, when the lands were massed together. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more ocean coverage. So that was known as Panthalasa, okay. or Panthalasa, however uh, you pronounce that one. So that's um, it was a lot bigger um, ocean mass on that on that on that um, that surrounded the entire Pangaea of the one supercontinent. Yeah. And so Pangaea is the most recent supercontinent and the first to be rebuilt by uh, geologists as to what they try to c construct and what they saw what it made it been like and how it looked in that time. Um, the secular science promotes the millions of years ideology, mm -hmm. and we know the Earth is not. Millions of years old like that, you know, right. those. We hope, no we, hope, we hope they don't know that, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. we, hope, we, we hope you've <laughs> come into the awareness that yeah. the whole spiel about millions and millions yeah. of years ago, yeah. you know, Earth was created. Right. No, 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 we yeah. don't believe yeah, that. We believe exactly. in the 6,000 year theory. Exactly, right. 6,000 years, exactly, because yeah. even as a kid, I was looking at these dinosaur books, I was really into the dinosaurs. I'm looking at 65 million. I'm like, what is all this? How does Which was your old? favorite dinosaur? I like the T Rex, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, yeah, you look like a T Rex guy. What about you, Joe? You're ah. a joke. You're <laughs> <laughs> you, you had no favorite dinosaur. Like, no. <laughs> Just come on, Joe. There's a Karethosaurus, too. The <laughs> no, a C-O-R-Y. Come on, Joe. You got to be killing me. Not the raptor. Brachiosaurus. Pterodactyl. None of them. Steven Spielberg <laughs> would not be impressed right now. <laughs> what, what was your favorite dinosaur, Sarah? Um, I like the pterodactyl. You like the pterodactyl? Yeah, I like Why? The avian ones because it could fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll leave you with the pterodactyl. To see a dinosaur so you have a T Rex, you have a pterodactyl, yeah. we have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, for. for Nicholas for says JJ loves them. JJ yeah. loves dinosaurs. Yeah. Joe, <laughs> JJ loves dinosaurs and you don't love dinosaurs. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, JJ. JJ, what is your favorite dinosaur, JJ? 
So Nicolette said that we look amazing. Said she loves the dress code. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I know, right? Yeah. I, yeah I, we just feel presidential right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. We feel like yeah. we could put our name on a ticket, too. It's you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you said, I'd be like Kanye West. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, you know, if he can do it, yeah, you know, oh, yeah. anybody can do it. That's right, yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, so Nicolette, please tell us what is JJ's favorite dinosaur, and we promise we will throw that comment up on oh the yeah. screen. Oh All right. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite one? Yeah. I was going to say T-Rex, but Corey took that one. I didn't, want to, sound, ah, I didn't want to sound like I was coffee, right? Hey. But, but yeah. you know, I like the T-Rex yeah. too, Corey. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I like the T-Rex. He's like most, the lion of dinosaurs. Most, <laughs> most to, right, most tall guys like the T-Rex, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, 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 Joe, they, they found all of those dinosaur bones in the Ivory Coast, and you don't like dinosaurs? <laughs> Show us from the Ivory Coast, guys. Ivory Coast. Yes, I, exactly. Exactly. He's a mechanic. He's a mechanic. He doesn't like dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, boy. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else, you tell us what your favorite dinosaur was or is. Yeah. Or was is. I, I, I think dinosaurs, they, they still exist somewhere. Yeah, you know, Jurassic Park, there you go. I do. Yes, I do. I do. I believe in the Loch Ness Monster. I do. I believe that's a dinosaur. I mean, it's uncharted yeah. territories down in the deep depths A dinosaur is nothing more Pacific. than a huge reptile. That's what it Megadon. is. And here's what we know about reptiles. Reptiles yeah. do not stop growing. Yeah. <laughs> reptiles don't stop growing. So if Adam was living until 930 years in Methuselah, until 969, Man. then reptiles would live that long too. Could you imagine an alligator growing for 900 years? Oh, it man. would be a dinosaur. Huge. Yes. You're welcome. Huge. You're welcome. You know, <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is a political broadcast, but it's yeah. also uh, the history of dinosaurs oh, as well. Yeah. Why not? We might as well that's include right, it. That's right. You got it. <laughs> might as well include it. <laughs> yes. So we see uh, the scripture uh, clearly points out that Elohim, he had finished the creation in six days yes. and rested on the seventh day. Uh, Second Peter 3 and 8 states, uh, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Mm -hmm. And so the continents have been, could have been joined together before the flood, not millions of years as uh, secular science suggests, right. and separated afterward. Sin breeds separation, pun intended. I took that up does. there, like, right, yeah, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it exactly. Really does. <laughs> Sin breeds separation. Separate, right? Exactly. Like so when you sin, you separate the continents. I took it from him. <laughs> oh, oh, you stole it from the court. Yes, yes. you're welcome. Yes, yes. We, uh, we, we gave court that one. Yeah. So we're jumping in the history of Indian, Native Indian migration through Beringia to the U.S. Okay. And how that kind of um, came through. And so here's uh, America was inhabited by Indian Natives long before the first European settlers set foot on the continent. Mm -hmm. The beginning of civilization in America occurred around the last ice age when the nomadic ancestral peoples of the Americas, the Paleo Indians, migrated into what's known today as the United States and Canada. The last glacial maximum or LGM was the last period in climate history when these ice sheets were at the, their greatest extension. Intended cold weather resulted in the formation of the vast ice sheets across the Earth's north mo northernmost and southernmost latitudes. As the ice surface formed, sea levels dropped worldwide. For years, the floors of the uh, many intergalactical, the glacial um, areas of the uh, open seaboard areas, that uh, shallow seas were uncovered, including the, those of the Bering Strait and uh, Chukchi Sea, the Chukchi Sea in the north, and the Bering Sea to the south. As early pa Paleo Indians lived throughout the Americas, they diversified into many hundreds of culturally distinct tribes. The Paleo Indians' adaptation, uh, adaptation across the North America was likely identifi identified by small, highly mobile bands, roughly 20 to 50 members of the extended family. The Paleo Indians had highly efficient fluted style spear points and microblades for butchering and hide, and pro uh, hide processing. The Paleo Indians spread all over the Americas making regional variations in lifestyles with sharing a common style of stone tool production. As the climate changed and the megafauna, large animals of a given region of the time were considered as a group, that's what that term means, uh, became extinct, Paleo Indians had to adapt to a mixed foraging strategy, including smaller terrestrial game, aquatic animals, and a variety of flora. 
Mm. The uh, environmental changes and multiple waves of migration led to the formation of unique cultures like the Clovis Nature Paleo-Indian culture named after distinct stone tools found uh, at the sites near Clovis, New Mexico in the 1920s and 1930s. All right. And so <laughs> the Iroquois political structure of the 1500s, now we're going to get into that portion here, jumping uh, forward. Uh, the Iroquois peoples of the inhabited areas of the Ontario, Canada, and the upstate New York area for centuries. The Iroquois refers to a language rather than particularly tribes. The Iroquois had five tribes before the European colonization. That's right. The mm -hmm. Their uh, society serves as a, an incredible example of political and military organization, complex lifestyle, and an elevated role of women. Until the 1500s, the five tribes of the Iroquois devoted much energy toward fighting and killing each other. According to oral tradition, it was about this time that they came to their senses and un united into a powerful confederation. The five tribes designated quite an, a complex political system. This included a bicameral two-house legislature like the British Parliament and modern U.S. Congress. The representatives of the Sachems from the Seneca and Mohawk tribes uh, would meet in the house and those of the, the Onidia and the Cayuga met in the other. The, on on <laughs> the Onondaga Sachems broke ties and, and after the power of vetoes, decisions made by the others. There was also and an unwritten constitution that described these proceedings at least as early as 1590. Such a complex political arrangement was not recognized in Europe at the time. And now we go into the WASP, which is known as the White Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Yes. And here we have, <laughs> that is uh, refers to the upper class white American Protestants often uh, <laughs> known as the British descent. Yes. yes. So, the <laughs> so the WASP elites and ruled American society, culture, and politics for much of the American history, maintaining monopoly through intermarriage, inheritance, and nepotism or favoritism among relatives. Although the social influence of wealthy wasps has diminished since the 1940s, the group continues to dominate some financial and philanthropic, uh, philanthropic fields and politics. During the later portion of the 20th century, Americans increasingly crit critiqued the wasps the uh, hegemony of the uh, regarded them as the epitome of the establishment. And according to the 1998 Random House unabridged dic dictionary of the wash term is sometimes disparaging and offensive. Sociologists and occasionally use those term as the widely include all Protestant Americans in Northern European or Northwestern European ancestry. No matter the British ancestry, the term is also, well, depending on that, yeah, no matter the British ancestry. So they just didn't really distinct it from that uh, right. point of view on that one. And the term is also used in the Australian, New Zealand, and Canada as well. Mm -hmm. So the history of America, including all countries that once settled in the continent, will connect those dots here from the Indian, the French, the Spanish, and the Mexican. Yes. As we said, the native Indians were there in, that, um, in their land as, as the natives of their mm -hmm. land. So we, we go into that part. Um, so with the advancement of the European colonization in North America, the Native in Americans uh, were also had been conquered and displaced throughout the land. They were kind of scattered as well. And so the Native Amer American population of America dwindled after European arrival for various reasons aside from wars, primary diseases and, um, such as smallpox and measles played a part as well. Mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and then soon came the Spanish, which were the first actual first Europeans to arrive in the United States uh, the Spanish conquistadors, mm. and so the Spanish conquistadors, conquistadors. yeah, you know that's that's yeah, that's the one of the popular um, Actually, terms yeah, there, yeah, you know. Like the, conquistadors, the conquistadors, conquistadors, the conquistadors, you know. <laughs> Take a little bit of Spanish, yeah, you know. <laughs> the Europeans arrived in the United States where the Spanish conquistadors <laughs> used, that's <laughs> it, yep. such as the the one Ponce de Leon, mm -hmm. and I, I hope it's said, yeah, the one Ponce de Leon. Uh -huh. Ponce de Leon. See, my Spanish accent is coming back now. Is that right, yes. <laughs> yeah. the one Ponce de Leon who made his first visit to Florida in 1513? Mm -hmm. The Spanish set up the first settlement in Florida and New Mexico, such as Saint Augustine yeah. and Santa Fe. And now the French set up their own establishment as well as along the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. notably New Orleans. Now that's uh, here, and I'll go into a little bit more with the French and how that correlates to what we see. Um, 
in New Orleans and New York as to how they've heavily influenced those regions as well. Okay. Um, the Statue of Liberty, I'll touch a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. yes. Go deep, brother. <laughs> yeah, so. Tell us about the Liberty Statue. This is interesting. And a lot of people didn't know this. I didn't know this until like recently, a little while ago. Okay. Years later, a Frenchman by the name of Frederic August yes. Bartol Bartoldi. I see that right there, Bartoldi. And uh, a mid-career mid statue maker had a construction of the Statue of Liberty in New York. Upon traveling originally to Egypt, Frederick Auguste he then designed a colossal woman holding up a lamp and wearing the loose-fitting dress of a fela, mm -hmm. a slave. She was a slave who stood and standing in the and um, to be like in Egypt. He was inspired by the design and what he saw in Egypt. So, fila, So it was she was dressed of a fela, and she was a slave. And to stand as high as a lighthouse, so she was going to be a lighthouse hmm. uh, of the Suez Canal. And so the Egypt deal fell through. And so Batadoli decided to adventure to America to pitch his idea. So while the statue was under construction in Paris, it almost ended up in Philadelphia where the torch was being exhibited uh, for the uh, World Fair in Fairmount Park in 1876. Mm -hmm. The statue almost ended up in Boston as well. But oh. finally, in a uh, 1886, the Statue of Liberty was unveiled in the New York Harbor, where his home is pres presently. So yeah. a lot of funds were raised and some things. It, it was a challenge there, but New Yorkers stepped up and said, no, we'll have this statue here in New York. Mm -hmm. And they cut to the chase and got it uh, placed in New York. And right wasn't, there. wasn't she originally named Liberty Enlightening the World? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Liberty Enlightening the World. It was, uh, the stitch, it was actually the statue figure of a Libertus or a robed Roman Liberty Goddess. Mm -hmm. She uh, holds a torch above her head with her right hand. And her left hand carries a tabula, or tabula asanta, mm -hmm. inscribed July 4th, 1776, in Roman numerals. So that mm. was the date of the That's U.S. Right. Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. And so, and originally Thomas Edison wanted to design a large disc allowing the statue to talk. So like, we heard from wild Miles Webb, like, whoa, this is, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, like mm. have a big disc in there and have it say words. I'm not sure what, but that would been kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that was, um. But also the statue um, has a, a broken shackle or a chain that lies at her feet as she walks forward and commemorating the national ab abolition, the abolition of um, slavery. So that was um, kind of at the bottom of her feet where if you don't see it's like a little chain that's broken shackle on there. So it was interesting, you know, kind of finding some of those. So this yeah. was supposed to be a gift uh, to uh, Egypt. Yeah. Yeah, it was originally going to mm -hmm. be. Yep. But she has a chain mm -hmm. on her. Yes. That's symbolic, yeah, uh, because it's showing something that we can be talking. Oh yeah, about. and it goes yes. far deeper. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we yes, see that, and that's, that's yeah, very you good. know, man, and that's yeah, we can go in there with some hours later on that one. <laughs> yes, but, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, and we will. And so yeah. So that means would, would, would you really start to know that? That means that this is ancient. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Nothing new. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, like the dinosaurs. That yeah, you yeah. <laughs> that, you <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> that you don't like. Nothing new on the if sun. We, if we look at this uh, Statue of Liberty, yes. Yeah. If we go back to the Babylonian uh, 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 legend, yeah. Yes. We see that same that same uh, 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 picture also coming through. We know about and 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 yes. Uh, Tab tabus. Yes. So yeah. anyway, let me leave that alone because I said you oh yeah. Oh yeah. Deep, I guess <laughs> you're gonna go to later. No, no, no. Oh yeah. You can go deep. But you know, just so you know, JJ's favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. Triceratops. Oh yeah. Yes. Triceratops. Yes. Like the big name. It's like Savio, the host of Angels. So JJ, sit down with your dad tomorrow, and you guys watch Jurassic Park one, two, and three. Yeah. Don't even take them to the new ones. more of them. Yeah, wa make him watch one, two, and three. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully some of that rub off on him. And he said, you know what? I like dinosaurs yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> you like a couple more. I think, too. They made a bunch <laughs> of them. They like yeah, some more. They, yeah, I think, yeah, they got a lot of them if you want to go on pretty I fast with it. I think we need to it. do it. Yeah. I think we should watch Jurassic Park tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> she, said she, doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't like sci-fi. She doesn't yeah. like dinosaurs either. I'll do the sci-fi, yeah. not the dinosaurs. You yeah. don't. You don't do. You do the sci-fi, not the dinosaurs. I mean, I watched it a couple of times, but you know, I, I, I don't. Yeah. It doesn't catch me. So it doesn't catch you. Mm. Yeah. It's dinosaurs uh, is for everybody. You know, yeah. It's not for oh everybody. yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't mind sci-fi. You don't mind sci-fi. Okay. Of not. So so <laughs> we have three. So you two like sci-fi, uh, but no dinosaurs. Oh, yes. We I, take I it all. Yeah, Corey's yeah. a sci movie man, so he has dinosaurs. to appreciate all the genres. It's got to make sense, you know. It's yeah, got to make yeah, sense. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Absolutely. I just love a good story. A yeah. good story. Yeah. I agree. I think yeah. dinosaurs are just giant. Some of them, uh, I think the only dinosaur that I like is, uh, 
Is that the... No, that's a dragon. No, that's uh. a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like a dragon? Uh-oh. That was, that was uh, I think, the one with Beowulf. Oh, oh yeah. the dragon slayer. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Beowulf is one of the dragons yeah. too. Oh, yeah, that's right. So he likes Beowulf. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we 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 won him with something. Oh yeah. Yeah, we won him with something. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we'll jump in. Uh, next, I'll get into uh, where how the English came into play um, in the uh, Americas. So English settlement of the eastern coast of the uh, they set off the uh, eastern coast of the North America and successfully began with the version of Virginia county in 1607 mm -hmm. in uh jamestown with the pilgrims plymouth county uh county in uh, 1620 that's yeah. right okay. and uh many of the english settlers were non-conformist christians groups who uh, came seeking religious freedoms yes. and so that was just a definitely uh, a key there you know there's a lot of so, so many pilgrims that came across the um the waters yes you know and then we'll get into how that stems forward into how so many of them you know felt and kind of forgot where they come from that's mm -hmm. true. You know, so some of you have forgotten their lives here, and, and you know, even you see it up in today's time where so many feel that they are the ones that originally, and it's here in the, in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, different um, various people to where they mag migrated from. Mm -hmm. And when it looks at it, most everyone here are immigrants from somewhere. And so that was very, very um, That's important right. thing That's to realize important. in America, yes. you know, so. So Jamestown came after the loss. Uh, settlement of Roanoke, right? That uh, I believe that was it around was that, first. yeah, because um, Jamestown, Virginia, the county in 1607 at Jamestown, mm -hmm. and then the Pilgrims, uh, Plymouth County in 1620. Mm -hmm. So those two dates, they're coming, uh, you know, prominent around those times. And um, and I can remember faintly, but uh, history talking about Jamestown when I was, you know, in um, elementary okay. school in there. So that mm -hmm. was, yeah, definitely interesting times on that. Yeah, Corey grew up in Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah the cold. Yes. Yeah, the great state. Yeah, the great oh, absolutely. State. So he, yeah. he he was right there where yeah where the, the immigrants came and landed. Right yeah, in the same area in the northeast. <laughs> yeah, I, that's so uh, he had to learn all about that. Yeah, he was, he was around the, the Great Lake. Yeah, the Great Lake. That's right. The issue, the issue. I still understand that story about yeah. the, the French. Uh, the the. Uh, the French and Indian War. Yes, yeah. That's yeah. Exactly what the French occupied. The French occupied the other side of the mm -hmm. Great Lake. See that? Yeah. The Ohio River. Yes. Coming down. So yeah. Yeah. You, you, you should be really yeah. well educated. Heavily, heavily, yes, yes, heavily influenced there. And, um, even I have some relatives that have some Native in Indian, and you know, I think I believe have been in relation to the Blackfoot. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, my grandfather, my dad's side, his dad, I believe, had some Indian, and then my mother's mm -hmm. mother, her mother. Mm -hmm. Full blood Indian. So yeah, so full we have blood. Yeah, full yeah, blood. yeah, yeah. All right, so, so Corey. Yeah, so you got some heritage tonight. Yeah, right. so, you got yeah, some yeah. So, so, so that yeah. Means, that means you shouldn't pay tax because you're, yeah. you're native Indian. That's right. Native Indian, so, well, he's yeah. got to move to one of those settlements first. I got to be. Yeah. Yeah. So I should be paying no taxes. So, right. Yeah. You could, you could, you could, you could build a casino. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we don't uh, encourage uh, gambling, but, you know. Black, yeah, exactly. Uh, I would stay with me, you know, yeah. That's how they do it, yeah. <laughs> so he's got, food, you know. Corey's got <laughs> more rights than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, welcome uh, to the three places. Yeah, exactly, welcome to the three exactly, places. You know, yes, whatever, whatever they give you, whatever they give yeah. you for uh, right. slaughtering your ancestors, we <laughs> want a piece. <laughs> <laughs> don't give it all to Nico. Is that, oh, oh no, exactly, you know. And so we go into, and here we see all throughout history, we'll talk about, um, Land grab, the history of land grabs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you That's see right. throughout all history, everything was about land because land is wealth. Yes. To have land is wealth and great potential it could last for generations. Right. And land has been a highly sought after commodity for centuries and caused many unsettling disputes and wars. Centuries. You know, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, be, uh, uh, yeah so for, forever pretty much. Because like <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody wants their piece of the pie. That is the number one yeah. Of war. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. The number, yep. of the number one. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. To this day. Yep. That's the number one cause of fighting. Period. The right. The nation Israel and the Palestine. Right. We, we look, we're just thinking about uh, that, that, that little portion. But yeah. That there has been an entire war from military. That's right. Yes. yes. That's right. Yes. yes. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And this country has, they have perfected the land yeah. grab. They perfected Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They have it down that's to a science. Yeah. For the word. Yes. For yeah. This country. That's yes. right. But they, then you give it to me. Yes, so they have perfected, yeah. perfected the land oh, grab. Yeah. They even Absolutely. take it from their citizens. Yeah. You know? So you oh, got to yeah. be careful. That's right, that's <laughs> right. You, you got to be right. careful because they will yeah. take everything, you yeah. know, and now they move to the virtual space. Anyway, yeah. I'm getting into somebody yeah. else's <laughs> thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> no, you right on par with it. just going into some good you stuff. You're right on par. You know, yeah, yeah, touch, yeah, you can go for Yeah, it's, that's, you know, that's that's all throughout history. You know, and then we define land grabbing as the act of buying or taking land illegally or in a way that is considered morally wrong. 
in many land grabs to deprive communities of land and create environmental changes, changes mm -hmm. and challenges through intensive agriculture and increased water demand. And the poorest countries, local smallholders and forced, were forced to abandon their um, ancestral lands, had to relocate either the cities or clear forests or peatland or to continue their agricultural farming. And so in the past 10 years or so, more than about 80 million acres of land worldwide in an area of the size of Portugal has been sold off to foreign investors. Wow. And some of these types of deals were uh, what's known as the land grabs, and that is the land deals that have been happening without uh, the free or prior or informed consent okay. or communities that often result in fam uh, farmers being forced from their homes and yes. families left in want. That's right. Wow. Terrible. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And the term land grab was uh, defined in the Turin uh, Declaration in uh, 2011 by international land coalition consisting of 116 organizations from community groups to the World Bank. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Absolutely. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely um, it's a dirty game out there. Dirty it's cutthroat. Yeah, it is. Cutthroat. <laughs> cutthroat yeah. to the fullest. Yeah. And so with that going forward, we'll jump into the uh, Louisiana Purchase. Okay. So the we'll biggest land that. grab the in yeah, U.S. Yeah. history, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, yeah. It's wow. huge. This is huge. And so the Louisiana Purchase encompassed 530 million acres of territory in wow. North America. Mm -hmm. I'm like, did I see that right? right. Did I see the right number? And yeah. by the way, like, for those wow. of you who are watching, uh, we have that graphic right there. You see the one that says land and the other one that says grab? Yeah. That, that yellow area right in the middle of the United States. That yeah. was what they purchased during the Louisiana Purchase. Right. So yeah. this is huge. It's about almost a third of the United States of America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't own. At, at, at first, when they settled, they owned that green area, yeah. which was on the east. Mm -hmm. And and then Jefferson said, we need to push west. Yeah. That's so right. they purchased that Louisiana land from who, Corey? Well, yeah. Corey's going to tell oh us. Yeah. Corey's the expert United on this. That's yeah. all a part of Manifest yeah. oh yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Manifest Destiny, that's, that's what they right. call it. Yeah. Yeah. They say we come to this land and we expect to do great things. So yeah. it yeah. must happen. All of oh it. Yeah. You know, they, they live by faith that's right. back that's then. Right. They were like, that's this right. has to happen. Manifest Destiny, it's which is must. why, you know, which is why we have, <laughs> to, we have to expect Yahweh to do certain things. That's right. It is Manifest Destiny for Yahweh to blow your mind this year. It must yeah. happen. It must happen. You're, you're here in the deep dive. So, you know, you manifest That's right. destiny. It, right. It's, yeah. it's going to happen. Uh, there's somebody who came in late. Yeah. Chad, you said yeah. good day. <laughs> that was, what, 10 minutes ago? That means yeah. Chad missed the first hour of the broadcast. So we have to rewind. That's and right. we're going to start the broadcast again just, <laughs> just for you, Chad. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Go yeah. What is Louisiana so, yeah, purchase. The, the United States purchased from France in uh, 1803 for $15 million. Woo! In 1803, that's, that's huge. That's huge. That's big money. Oh, yeah. It's huge. 1803, yeah, 15 million. 15 million. Who actually tallied this money here and yeah. it's worth the day? That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would absolutely. think so, too. I would think so, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. That Very was easy. you know I was wondering I was like why why did the French sell it because I yeah. mean, that was prime real estate. Exactly. But but <laughs> the problem. For the money. Right. But yeah. the problem is you were landlocked. Yeah. That that's was the right, problem. That's right. That's true. Yeah. So that's you right. had the Spanish mm -hmm. on your west. You had the true. British right in the middle. On the east. Yeah. You're right in the middle, yeah. which mm -hmm. means you have to pass through one of those territories to get to your, yeah. your property in the United States. So you're like you know what? Yeah. Forget about it. Let's just sell it to the highest bidder, and the U.S. was. Highest bidder. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Million. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, and as the United States spread across the Appalachians, uh, the Mississippi River became an increasingly important asset for the produce of America's west at the time the land between the Appalachians and the Mississippi. Since 1762, Spain had owned the territory of Louisiana, which included 828,000 square miles. The territory of most of or all 15 modern U.S. states between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. So the Pinckney, the Pinckney Treaty of 1795 had resolved conflict between Spain and the United States over the right to navigate the Mississippi and the right for Americans to transport their goods to ocean-going vessels in New Orleans. With the Pinckney Treaty set in motion and the low-powered Spanish Empire in control of Louisiana, American statesmen felt content that the United States westward expansion would not be limited in the days to come. This, this situation was confronted by Napoleon Bonaparte's ambitions to restore the French empire in the New World. He planned to retain the valuable sugar colony 
of Saint Dominique from well, Saint Dominique from the slave rebellion and then used Louisiana as the granary for his empire. <laughs> France acquired Louisiana from Spain in eighteen hundred and took control in eighteen oh two, sending a large French army to Saint Dominique and preparing to send another to New Orleans. Westerners became very defensive about having the empowered French in control of New Orleans. President Thomas Jefferson noted, there is on the globe one single spot, the processor, the possessor of which is our natural and habitual enemy. It is <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> 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 and upon making uh, military preparations for con conflict in the Mississippi Valley, Jefferson sent James Monroe to accompany Robert Livingston in France, attempting to purchase New Orleans and West Florida for $10 million. <laughs> Unsuccessful, they attempted to create a military alliance with England. Meanwhile, the French army in St. Dominique was being stricken by yellow fever in war between France and England still threatened. Napoleon aborted his plans for New Louisiana and offered a surprise to Monroe and Livingston all the territory of Louisiana for $15 million. This far surpassed their instructions from President Jefferson. They concurred. Yes. When uh, mm. <laughs> the news of the sale, oh yeah, it was huge. And they, they like, <laughs> yes, yes, they even, like, yes, oh yes. <laughs> the man, oh, the number it. crunched, yes. the seriously mm -hmm. number crunched. Right, right, yeah. right. So when the news of the sale reached the United States, the West was ecstatic. President Jefferson, however, was uncertain. He had always supported strict allegiance to the letter of the Constitution, yet there was no support in allowing him to purchase territory. With the public assistance for the purchase and value of Louisiana to the further, further the growth of the United States, however, Jefferson ignored the legalistic interpretation of the Constitution and opted out the passage of the Constitutional Amendment to endorse the purchase. This determination contributed to the principle of implied powers of the federal government. That's amazing. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that brings us into the Alaskan Purchase, another big yeah. one, another big one. Oh, boy. Yeah. So the that, that uh, what is it, uh, uh, Manifest Destiny. Yes. Yeah. Napoleon, we know who Napoleon is. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's a little hard head, you know. Yeah. Yes. He had mm -hmm. temptation to send Louisiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was actually, for one, one of the primary reasons is like, you know, you have a drive, uh, you have a property, but you can't get to your driveway. R right, yes. But that was, that was like his problem. He's going to find a way to get in. Oh, yeah, Napoleon. oh, yeah. Right. But... The manifest destiny was on the hill of the world that he wanted so bad mm. to actually conquer Haiti, mm -hmm. and he could not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he was actually running out of funds. Yeah. yeah. History tells us that he was running out of funds. Mm -hmm. So he said, "You know what, man? Let me let me just capitalize on this here. Oh, Who yeah. wants to buy this? Hire bidder. Right. Yeah. yeah. And take the fifty yeah, million. Man. He probably maybe spent about a million dollars to offer Eddie. Said, look, <laughs> forget this one. I'm gonna ca capture the rest of the money. <laughs> yeah. Let's just." He lost so much money trying to capture yeah. this little island. Oh, yeah. He could not capture it. He could wow. not, yeah. Man. He could yeah. not capture it. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at first I studied history and I could never understand this power by this Indian, you know. Yeah. Until about two, three years ago, I went to Savannah. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Savannah, matter of fact, they have actually, um, if you go to the city, in the, in, the, in the square, they have picture of mm. Europe, mm -hmm. of Asia. And when That's I right. to read this, I said, but wait a minute, I missed this part of history. Yeah, mm. yeah. Matter of fact, yeah. had not been for 80, mm. they left uh, the, the island mm -hmm. and came to Savannah yeah. and captured that island and stopped the British yeah. from taking over Georgia. Had wow. not been for 80. Matter of fact, I believe that you know, the United States of America, oh, 80. They yeah. should have never listened to Napoleon Bonaparte mm. over, that, over, over that deal and mm. to put embargo on 80. That's, yeah. that's ludicrous. Yeah. Wow. Matter of fact, that is... That's what you call a uh, cutthroat. Mm. Cutthroat. Yeah, yeah. Is your mic on? Mm -hmm. Check your yeah. mic. Make sure your mic's on. Yeah, it was like a... Yeah. It's on now. All right, good, 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 good. good. Be, that, yeah. that, that should have never yeah. happened. Thank you, Sean. Right. Sean said, hey, yeah. brother Joe's mic on. We need to hear yeah. it. That, that, should, that should have <laughs> never, never, never happened. Mm. Oh, because yeah. we're talking about 1803. Right. Mm. That is way long ago because we talk about mm. the... Uh, I'm going to jump into it, but I'm just going to talk this. this yeah. Because yeah. before the Civil War... I mean, before the re revolution right. in 1776, right. when mm. they were able to finally get the, with their independence, independence over the British. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it was the a Asian that left the island and came out here and defeated the British. That's right. Yeah. They defeated yeah. the British. So when I read this, I'm not saying he said, she said. I saw, matter of fact, I got a picture of myself on my phone. <laughs> it was so amazing to say, but wait a minute. This part of history mm. should be read in American history. Right. right. But yet, 
because Napoleon couldn't defeat them, mm -hmm. and because he was running out of funds, he sent it to the highest bid. Yeah. And we know how these people go. Mm -hmm. They make an agreement, and then they oh, put yeah. embargo on Haiti. That's but right. they're still they're exploiting. They put an embargo on it, but they're still exploiting that poor country. They yeah. are. Yeah. That's, 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 yeah. that's, that's a shame. Yeah. Exactly. It, is. Shame. it really is. It really is. It's that's a shame. Yes, it's it definitely. Yes. That's a shame because I come in and help you mm -hmm. for your freedom, mm -hmm. and now it's your turn. You right. turn around, and now you put an embargo on me. Right. Yeah. How is this so? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Remember now, you're dealing with a country who's c predominantly black. So. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Absolutely. But continue. I just mm -hmm. wanted to, to to tap that in. Yeah. Because yeah. that 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 that's part of you know you mentioned history and that is right. that is powerful. Oh yeah. On on, on that end. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, so uh, it brings us right into the uh, Alaskan purchase, and this how this this one is pretty interesting too how this yes. came about here. The purchase of Alaska in 1867 marked the end of Russian attempts to enlarge trade and settlements to the Pacific coast of North America and became a key step in the United States move to unparalleled power in the Asia Pacific region. Starting in 1725, when Russia Caesar Peter the Great sent forth Vitus Bering to explore the Alaskan coast, Russia had a long, strong interest in this area, which was rich in natural resources and lightly populated. When the United States expanded westward in the early 1800s, Americans were in rivalry with Russian explorers and traders. Mm -hmm. St. Petersburg lacked the financial materials to support large settlements or a military stronghold along the Pacific, the Pacific coast of North America and during Russian settlers in Alaska never assembled over 400. Defeating the Crimean War further stunted Russian delight for this region. And so here it brings us into the signing of the Alaska Treaty in 1867. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Russia wow. proposed to sell Alaska to the United States in 1859, trusting the United States would counter the designs of Russia's greatest rival in the Pacific, <laughs> Great Britain. <laughs> 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 the growing U.S. Civil War postponed the sale, but post-war Secretary of State William Seward, Seward. abruptly mm -hmm. took up a renewed Russia offer <laughs> on yes, March yes. 30th. Yep. 1867, he agreed to a proposal from Russian minister in Washington, Eduardo de Stoisi, to purchase the Alaska for $7.2 million. <laughs> the Senate approved the treaty of purchase on April 9th. President Andrew Johnson signed the treaty on May 28th, and Alaska was officially transferred to the United States on October 18, 1867. Wow. Wow. This purchase eliminated Russia's presence in North America and ensured U.S. access to the Pacific Northern Rim. For years after its purchase, the United States paid little attention to Alaska, which was governed under military, naval, or treasury rule, yes. or at times no seen rule at whatsoever. Mm -mm -mm. Searching for a way to impose U.S. mining laws, the United States constituted a civil government in 1884. Critics had subdued the, the purchase of Alaska, Seward's folly, but the former Secretary of State was vindicated when a major gold deposit was discovered in the Yukon in 1896. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, <laughs> hey, hey, we bought this land for a reason. For yeah. a reason. Yeah, he had yeah. his fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. He's like, it's got to be something in Alaska. $7.5 exactly. million. Something, you know, something yeah, exactly. in the 1860s. Yeah. Exactly. Get, get, back you know? our, get back our money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got we, we to make this so, money. So, exactly. so uh, Post Secretary Seward, as you mentioned, he loved yeah. the expansion. Yeah. Congress didn't like it then. But right. he loved the expansion. So one, he get the expansion, yeah. and they still get the money yeah. back. Right. So win-win. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to know why we're talking about land grabs in this episode? We're talking about political powers. It's because that's what all political powers do. Right, right. They expand their territories mm -hmm. so that they can purchase land for resources. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So in 2020, it's still going on. Yes. yes. That's right. You still got... You still got territories. They're purchasing other territories. It's just happening subvertly now. It's it's economic. Yep. It's economic mm -hmm. grabs. Okay. Absolutely. So the Chinese come in and they build uh, a few properties and hotels and stadiums yep. and whatnot. Mm. All of a sudden, yep. the Chinese have your territory. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, or, exactly. or the Indians or the French. That's, That's right. It's still real, going on real, in 2020. Real subtle. Yeah. Real subtle. So when you follow yep. the money, exactly. when you follow the money, it can tell you exactly what the geopolitics of that nation mm. is going to be. That's absolutely gonna be. true. Right. Okay, so That's where we are. So you got to look at history. You gotta got look to, at history. Got to. Uh, on that little graphic right there to the end, the very last graphic, you see Alaska, right? You see Canada, and then you see Alaska, and then you see Russia. Mm -hmm. That's how close these territories are. Now, mm -hmm. you could stand at the tip of Alaska, and you can throw a pebble across to Russia. 
But I guarantee you, you can't take a boat there. You cannot enter no. Russian waters or Russian land space nope. as an American without mm. coming through by the proper means. That's right. <laughs> or yeah, else absolutely. You, 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 you'll disappear. Yeah. That'll, be la- that'll be the last we hear, hear from you. Yeah, you're looking for war. Yeah, you're looking for war right there. So, you know, it, it, this is uh, quite literally some of the iciest uh, mm. political yeah. tension that they've oh, seen. Pun intended. Unbelievably. Uh, yeah, it's pun intended. <laughs> Very icy yeah. up there in the north. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't, get mixed yeah. up. Don't get mixed up there. Exactly. Yes. It's the yep. KGB. The KGB. Yeah. Uh, for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and they keep saying that the, the Russians are interfering with elections. Uh, we got to ask the Russians who they want to win this election. I don't think that, that they will do anything this time around. You don't think they'll do anything? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's watching closely. Not, 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 not this time around. <laughs> not this time around. You think they're exempt this time? They're exempt. They got them on lockdown. Okay. And so it definitely brings us to uh, so that purchase of the U- uh, discovered the Yukon in 1896 uh, in Alaska became the gateway to the Klondike gold fields yes and that uh, calculated significance of alaska was finally acknowledged in world war ii alaska became the uh state in january 3rd 1959 well so that yeah 1959 the last state yeah no No. no. Alaska, Alaska became a state, a state, a state. Uh, Guam is a territory. Yeah. Territory, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Hawaii. 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 Yeah, Hawaii is a uh, state, so yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Hawaii, yes. Hawaii. So yeah, Hawaii. they have different kind of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which Hawaii. we would like to get out there and bring that state a little closer this way so you can get the warmth, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. And here, exactly. So that concludes the um, 500 years of the... Uh, Making in the making. Of that. Uh, fabulous wow. work, fabulous work, Anika. Fabulous yeah, work, Corey. Yeah. You did a fantastic yeah. job. Yeah. You know what's so interesting about the, this whole land grab thing? Yeah. Also, let's go back to Beringia. Let's talk about that a yeah, little bit Beringia. more. Oh, yeah. So, so you've got. Hold on, before we talk about Beringia, I have I have to do something. So, my daughter said to me, she said, "Now, um, Father, when you <laughs> go onto the broadcast, you're going to be wearing a suit like uh, Brother Joe." She said, "You want people to think that you're smart, so." What I need you to do is to, yeah. to wear some glasses <laughs> on the broadcast. Because she said, uh, you know, all of the smart people is that on <laughs> CNN. Hey, they, <laughs> they, they, oh, God. They, they uh, glasses. Uh, uh, so, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, Sana, where is she? she? She's not here. Uh, can you call Sana minute. for me? It, it, it looks like you have changed your <laughs> language <laughs> automatically. Oh, my God. Right. This, this, this is, is this right. Rabbi. Yes. This, this man, he, he has arrived. Right. Uh, yes, he, he is here. Uh, he, he, in my line of words, he came up. He is here. Now, she also said, can I have, that's your notes, Joe? Let me Oh, you know, it's for a second. Yes, yes. So, you know, on, 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 on CNN, this is exactly what they do. They, you know, to, to, to look smart. Yeah, they're they uh, shuffling pages. They, they, they yeah. shuffle the pages and, you know, they make sure that, you know. Don't mix up. Don't that, mix that, up. That, I just yeah. did. He doesn't care. Don't mix it all up. He doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. Mixed up anyway. Your page is numbered. Your page numbered. Yes. Oh, so that's, that's what they do. So, yes. Joe, every 10 minutes you have to shuffle your paper so, so that they know that <laughs> you're legitimate when you, when you speak. Come, come but yeah. you and Corey so, are the smartest on the panel. So I, I, yeah, so I, I, didn't say, I didn't say it. She hey. did. <laughs> so so uh, I'm wearing the glasses, you know, so that I can look intelligent on the go. broadcast and people can think that I, I'm smart and I know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> you know, when, when we came, uh, Corey, you got to show them the socks. Oh, yeah, the, the socks. socks. Yeah, you got to see the yeah, socks. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you, you guys don't know. So, yeah, you got to put up. Can you see the socks? Yeah, so you can come around here, Corey. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Can you see it? Can you see it? So, yeah, so. Right. Yeah, it's like right on the spot. Right, that's the socks right there. It's so, you know, socks, she, you know, she's our junior yeah. fashionista. Yeah. She has to approve <laughs> all of the wardrobes when we leave the house. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, as I was leaving the house, I had on my, my, my shoes and my socks, Corey, just like you. Oh, yeah. But there I you had, go. But I, but I had on short pants because oh, yeah. I came to work before <laughs> the broadcast. So, Absolutely. she saw me and she said, exactly. uh, Daddy, uh, you leave in the house like that. And I said, yes, I'm, I'm going to do some work at the broadcast. She said, and you're going like that live. And I wanted to say yes, but yeah. you know, I, I said no. Uh, so she said, okay, good. And about 10 minutes before we went live, I still wasn't dressed. And she said, uh, Daddy, uh, <laughs> are you, yeah. you're going to put on some clothes, right? Because you have to represent, you that's have to right, represent her right. well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, so now you, you see. You I, I, I right, love so that. that. Thank there you very you much for the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, so now, so now, come, come. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. So, uh, I, I want to know, do glasses make the wearer appear wiser or smarter? What do you say? Wiser or smarter? 
You say wiser. Uh, okay, you say wiser. Wiser. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and so we, we, we want to know with you guys as well, you know, glasses. Do they make the wearer appear wiser, wiser or, smarter. or smarter? I think I'll go with a chakma. Wiser. Wiser. Yeah, ah, there you ah, go. Ah, what, ah, what do you say, Corey? I say wiser, definitely. You say wiser? wiser. What do you yeah, say? Oh, yeah. You know what? For this panel, I say wiser, but it's not always the case. It's not uh, always the that's case. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we okay. see it all the time yeah. in TV. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much. So so now that I have my, my glasses on, I, I feel... Super smart now. Yes, you know, yes. I, I feel you're like you're can really, now. Yeah, I, I really feel it, Joe. I, I, I really Absolutely. feel it. I see, I see why they do it. I see why they yeah. wear the glasses. Absolutely. You know, it, wh what do you say? Oh, hey, hold on. Wait a minute. We've got some comments. Crystal says wiser because she wears glasses. Crystal, there you, go. you are a wise yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yes. Way to do it. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. She is very intelligent. Yes, she I, is. I can, I can yes. endorse oh, yeah. that. Yes. yes, she is. Oh, yeah. And she said, not the socks, though. Yes, not we, the we did well. Yes, <laughs> we did for the socks. <laughs> so let's talk about Beringia. Beringia, this was a huge, a yes. huge piece of land yes. that stretched from Alaska to, sorry, from Russia all the way to Canada. Alaska, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so we, hold on. We've got some more. we got some more. BJ says it depends if their eyes are big enough. I don't oh, that's know. Right. No. That's right. Yes. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, I, I totally agree. You know, uh, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I uh, just feel I just feel smart. I yeah. As Joe said, it just changes your posture. It changes yes. your tone, right? Yes, yes, you, you yes, just, yes. I have to sit up straight now yes, because yes. You know, I'm wearing the glasses. That's it. That's yeah. it. So, so uh, Beringia. It is believed that... The early settlers yes. migrated mm -hmm. from Asia mm -hmm. through the Bering Land Bridge. Yeah. When I was growing up, they call it the Bering Strait. The Bering yeah. Street, yes, yes. Uh -huh. I, I had yeah. no idea what a Bering Land Bridge uh, was. I yeah, said, "What is that?" Talk about that all the time. He went up that. He went up in that direction. Right. <laughs> right. So, so if you remember it as the Bering Land Bridge, then say Land Bridge, and if you remember it as the Bering Strait, then you say Bering Strait. Let's see in the comment section. Uh, who remembers it as what? But mm. that's how I, I was introduced to it lately. And so they believe yeah. that the Indians actually came from mm -hmm. that territory, migrated across the Bering huh. Bridge, and then they landed here mm. in what is now called the United States of well. America and Canada. Mm -hmm. So that's how they believe they migrated through yeah. uh, the, the through Beringia, the Bering Strait, uh -huh. here. So what they did was the Indians actually brought their style of government, yeah. their yep. worship, everything mm -hmm. that they believed mm -hmm. to this region and then settled here and became the indigenous people in uh, America. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. The supercontinent Pangaea. Pangaea, uh, you yeah. You know, as Corey said, uh -huh. he went through that and he said it, it broke up. But when you get to the early form of government in America, you have to look at the Iroquois. Mm -hmm. And if those of you who have never heard of the Iroquois, the Iroquois, they are actually the Native Americans that had settled here mm -hmm. before the British came, That's before right. the French came, before the Spanish came. So when they came, they actually met the Iroquois tribe here. That's true. Right. And what were they doing around 1500 AD, 500 years ago? Because we're going back 500 years. We're telling a story of the political landscape right now in 2020, but you have to go back. 500 years to see what the political landscape mm -hmm. was back then because as Solomon oh, yeah. says you yeah. know history just repeats itself it's Definitely. a cycle of loops yeah. Definitely. the Iroquois had actually established peace between all of the Native American tribes mm -hmm. right, they had right. a constitution right. and they came together because they sensed that a great revolution was on the rise mm -hmm. they sensed that there was a foreign nation coming to their territory and they said that we have to armor up and man up so that we can protect our territory. Unfortunately, right. they did not have the army. Mm -hmm. They did not have the army capacity yeah, to or fight. The no. Or the armory. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. You know, because the, the, those countries in the in the east, those fellas, I mean, right. they grew up fighting. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're spilling blood. Because you're yeah. talking about all the life from the Babylonian. Uh, uh, I mean, these, these are the same yeah. guys. Yeah. Same the tentos, the vandals, these guys, yeah. that's all they do for, for that's living. All they do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they came in and they made quick work and, of and, the Iroquois. And, and what I found out, especially in the, in the war system, the greatest mm -hmm. discovery that mankind has ever made mm -hmm. prior to what we're experiencing mm -hmm. was a discovery of gunpowder. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, that changed and, the game. And, 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 and guess who got it? Europe. Europe. Yeah. Yeah. That's what these guys do. Yeah, right. exactly. 
And yeah. wonder where gunpowder come from. It yeah. come from also the east. Yes. But yeah. when they discovered the gunpowder for war. Yeah. So yeah. those guys in, the, in, 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 in Asia didn't know that that was something for, for war. Correct. Mm. But the Europeans, that's all they do. They have been all fighting they all their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So when they discovered it, they said, wait a minute, we found the greatest weapon. Wow. That's like an iPhone to them back then, you know. Yes. There you go, Corey. So much. Yes. Yes. Oh, and this, they had the advantage over yeah. everybody. Oh, yeah, man. Wow. Yep. You have great power. Wow. And that's into the left of them. Yeah. <laughs> and into the right of them. That's right. Yep. Man. All right. Yeah. So go ahead, Corey. Yeah, so that definitely concludes that portion of the uh, the uh, 500 years in the making mm -hmm. of that. So, yes, yeah, so that's definitely what I've got for that one. And um, But, yes, yeah, it's just amazing how that how it all comes in fruition. The, the battle for land, even to this time, you know, like we were talking about, it's still a big thing because you can grow everything you want. You can build things on there. And this, a lot of people want it. Even to this day, they, they scramble and scrap for every inch, every foot. Yeah. Even if it's a couple feet. <laughs> if it's one foot. If it's, if it's one foot or a half foot off or six inches off, they, yeah. will, scra they will scramble for it. Correct. Literally. Because it all the difference matters. It, it, and it's prestigious and a lot, of, and a lot of light. And it's a lot of things that, you know, people can hold and pass on to generations yeah. and stuff like that. So it's powerful. It's definitely a powerful thing. Amen. Wow. Yes. Absolutely. You know, something is true. It's, it's, and people in general, when they have to claim things, you know, they make a fuss of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like when you go to church and yeah, absolutely. someone yes. sits in a particular seat, oh yeah. they don't ever want to give that seat up. That's yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, so it's the same concept. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right. Well, thank you very much, Anika Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to call you <laughs> for, for sharing that information. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, let's talk about let's talk about the U.S. for a second before we jump into the next uh, topic. In fact, no, no, no. I think we need to jump into your topic right away, Corey. Okay. You're coming up next, okay. Right, aren't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, we can definitely do this. This topic here. This is probably one of the most powerful, heavy topics that's um, in this time, especially in election year. Especially, you've got uh, we've got the history. I'm gonna go through the history of the Democratic and Republican Party. Yes. All right. So, yes. Yeah, definitely. So for those of you who've heard it and you're like, you know, I don't know the difference between the, the Democrats and the Republicans. What is right. the difference? Well, Corey is now going to enlighten us and yes. let us know Absolutely. exactly what the difference is. So yeah. take it away, Corey. So yeah, so definitely uh, when when you're researching things, I'll see you, you research a lot when you, you are re looking up different information and stuff. And I was like, how can I get the unbiased truth? Mm. All right. The unbiased truth Which of is history. what we want. History. You know, no, no, no favor of the left or right side of it. The, the unbiased, absolute truth, El Chakma, you know, gives me wisdom to understand yes. the truth, El MF, yes. the truth. Mm -hmm. And so looking through that information, I did find some unbiased truth in different things there and documented in founding documents of uh, the forefathers and what they put together and talking about the uh, Constitution and also how that brings in the Bill of Rights and amendments and things like that. So we get into that. But first, we'll start off with the, um, the uh, history and we'll jump right into the uh, Democratic Party history. Yes. And so here we've got the, uh, they were known as the Federalists, which includes George Washington, John Adams, yes. and Alexander Hamilton, mm -hmm. yes. favored a strong central government yes. and a national banking system headed by Alexander Hamilton himself. Mm -hmm. Federalists were the first political party in the United States. Uh, headed, it's headed by Alexander Hamilton. It dominated the uh, national government from 17... 89 to 1801 it became a minority party while keeping its stronghold in new england and made a brief resurgence by opposing the war of 1812 it then collapsed with its last presidential candidate in 1816 hmm. and remnants lasted in a few places for a few years the party appealed to businesses to conservatives who favored banks national over state government manufacturing and army and navy and in world affairs preferred Great Britain and resisted the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. The Democrats favored centralization, federalism, modernization, and protectionism. However, back in 1792, supporters of Thomas Jefferson, who also owned slaves, and James Madison, who favored distributing administrative powers, limited government, formed an opposition group that would become known as the Democratic Republicans. Yeah. Yes. The Democratic Party founded January 8th 1828, Andrew uh, Jackson, who pushes the Democrat democracy for all white men, and organization wise, the was was a modern Democratic Party. Truly came up in the 1830s with the election of Andrew Jackson. 
mm-hmm. since the nomination of William Jennings Bryan in 1896, the Democratic Party has positioned itself to the left of the Republican Party on economic issues. Yes. The Demo- Democrats took the House in 1910, and Woodrow Wilson won the presidential election in 1912 yes. when the Republicans <laughs> split. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> so that's when the Republicans like split. Sounds like you're a fan, Joe. You like Woodrow? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joe likes Woodrow Wilson, everybody. Write that down. <laughs> so, uh, that, uh, so that was when uh, Woodrow Wilson, he won it, and so that was in 1912 when the Republicans split from the Democratic Party. Uh, and in 1916, so that was between that era, 1912-1916, Wilson successfully led Congress to put to rest the issues of tariffs, which are taxes of goods and services imported from another country, mm-hmm. uh, money and antitrust, which had taken over politi- politics for over 40 years, with, uh, within, uh, with 40 years within the new progressive laws. He didn't secure Senate passage of the Versailles Treaty ending the war with Germany and joining the League of Nations. Mm-hmm. The Democratic Party was deeply divided by issues such as the KKK and banning it in the 1920s. However, the party did organize new ethnic voters in northern cities. Democrats have been more liberal on civil rights since 1948, although conservative fraction factions which opposed them persisted in the South to the 1960s. On foreign policy, both Democratic and Republican parties have changed positions several times. I'll hear the beliefs for the Democratic Party. The modern Democratic Party supports egalitarianism, social equality, protection of the environment, and strengthening the social safety net through liberalism. They also emphasize and support feminism, voting rights, and minority rights, including LGBT rights, multiculturalism, and also religious secularism, a belief ideology that rejects religion for the belief that religion should not be part of the affairs of the state or part of public education. The principles of separation of church and state and keeping religion out of public schools systems are example of secularism, religious freedoms. And here we go into how the religious freedoms, how they uh, correlate together okay. um, on that and that uh, on the regard of their belief system. Uh, religious freedoms, it says we value the right of Americans, America's religious leaders to preach and Americas to freely accord according to their faith, believe the federal government. Specifically, the IRS is consti- uh, conten- constitutionally prohibited from policing or censoring speech based on religious convictions or beliefs. We pledge to defend the religious beliefs and rights of con- conscience of all Americans and to safeguard religious institutions against government control. Uh, marriage and sexuality. Foremost among bo- those institutions in, in America, families, it is the foundation of civil society and the cornerstone of the family is natural marriage and the union of one man and one woman. We oppose the imposition of a social cultural revolution upon the American people which will by wrongly redefining sex discrimination, reshaping or our entire society to fit the mold ideology alien to America's history and the traditions. And uh, let me see with that. And here we go in the economy. Government cannot create posterity through government, li- cannot limit or destroy it. Prosperity is the product of self-discipline, uh, enterprise, saving, and investment by individuals, but is not in it all in itself. And so here we go to Israel. Mm. Let's see, uh, expanded life. And now here we go. Uh, let me read this up here. Let me see which one I'm going to go into the beliefs. My, my monitor did a weird thing here. Let me see. Let me go back here. Okay, yeah, it, it jumped ship. Yeah, let me go back. Yeah, it yes. jumped ship. <laughs> uh, let me go back here. Oh, here we go. So we're back. So we'll get back here. Uh, yeah, Democrats. Okay, so we'll go to Dem- Democrats' beliefs. So the modern Democrat Party supports egalitarianism. Egalitarianism, and I read that part here. Mm-hmm. So we'll go back to uh, religious freedoms. Um, we celebrate uh, religious freedoms. We celebrate. America's history of religious pluralism and tolerance uh, recognize the countless acts of service of our faith communities as well as the paramount importance of maintaining the separation of church and state enshrined in our constitution. Marriage and sexuality. Marriage and sexuality. We will fight to enact the equal uh, act, the Equality Act. We will work to ensure LGBTQ people are not discriminated against mm-hmm. when seeking to adopt or foster children, protect uh-huh. LGBTQ children from bullying and assault and guarantee transgender students access to facilities based on their gender identity. 
We will ensure that all transgender and non-binary people can produce official government identification documents that accurately reflect their gender identity. The economy. We will forge a new social and economic contract with the American people, a contract that creates millions of new jobs and promotes shared prosperity. And here's uh, Israel, as it relates to Israel. We recognize the worth of every Israeli and every Palestinian. That's why we will work to help bring to an end a conflict that w has brought such main, mu so much pain into the, so many. We support and negotiate a two-state solution that ensures Israel's future as a Jewish and democratic state, which recognizes borders and upholds the rights of Palestinians to live in freedom and security in a viable state of their own. So they had a two-state divide. Mm -hmm. And here's uh, a democratic uh, life, life, belief in life. We will appoint U.S. Supreme Court justices, federal judges who will respect and enforce foundational presidents, including Roe versus Wade, belief every woman should be able to access high-quality reproductive health care services, including safe and legal abortion. We oppose and will fight to overturn federal and state laws that create barriers to women's reproductive health and rights. And so that's the conclusion of the uh, Democratic uh, Party belief system. And here we go into the uh, Republican Party, GOP. Yep. Uh, GOP is also known as the Grand Old Party. Mm -hmm. It's one of the two major political parties in the United States. It is the second oldest extent political party in the U.S., Founded in March 20, 1854, mm. the Republican Party came forward in, in 1854 to combat the Kansas-Nebraska Act, created territories of Kansas and Nebraska, and expanding of slavery into uh, America. That's what those ter territories were. So it was, uh, they came forward in the 1854 Act to combat the uh, spread of the territories of Kansas and Mississippi, Nebraska and the expanding of slavery in American territories. So... Um, the other Republican Party included northern Protestants, factory workers, professionals, businessmen, <coughs> prosperous farmers, and after 1866, former black slaves. The party had slim support from, from white southerners, southerners in the time who predominantly backed the Democratic Party in the solid South mm -hmm. and from Catholics who were major Democratic voting groups. While both parties adopted pro-business policies in the 19th century, the early GOP, Grand Ole Party, was known by its support for the national banking system, the gold standard, railroads, and high tariffs. The Republican Party opposed the expansion of slavery before 1861 and led the fight to destroy the Confederate States of America in 1861 and eight through 1865. While the Republican Party had almost no presence in the southern United States at, at its inception, it was very successful in the northern United States, where in by the 1851, by 1858, it had enlisted former Whigs and former free soil d Democrats to form majorities in nearly every northern state. Now, this is interesting because the Republican Party, you consider them the right wing. Right, right. Uh -huh. the Democrats, you consider them the left, the left wing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So right wing means you are very conservative. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you have views that are kind of anchored in biblical doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The left wing, you believe in, and, and you know, you, you have extremes on both sides. Right, so the right, left wing, absolutely. They, they believe in more of a plethora of experiences and expressions. Mm -hmm. So they're not limited. But when the Republican Party was originally formed, Form mm -hmm. they originally. were actually against slavery. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they, they, they believe in the equality of all men. All right. men. Right. Uh, the Democrats, which was the, uh, the left wing, yes. you know, they mm. were actually pro-slavery. And, mm. and, and a lot really of them were, based on what Corey said, mm. a lot of them um, held a faith of Catholicism. Yeah. Correct. They were yeah. Catholic. Yes. Mm. And, right. and yeah. really, yeah. Slavery, mm -hmm. uh, slavery, was actually, slavery was actually endorsed biblically mm -hmm. by a lot of the pastors in the South. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, right, right. They believed that through God's instruction and his ordination that the light-skinned human beings mm -hmm. were superior and the darker skin from uh, various continents were inferior. Right. The so colors. they believed that it was their right to yes. subdue them right. and to give them a, a better a better land, a better hope. 
the Democrats said no. I mean, the Republicans said no. Said no. You know that that it shouldn't be that mm. way. You know, right. Because the Republicans, they were more aligned to, and this is back in the 1800s, they had just come out of mm. British rule. Right, mm. right. And the mm. British rule was, you know, the British rule was based on the uh, Catholic rule, mm -hmm. right. which was the church controls the government. Right. right. So exactly. they came from that and they said, no, 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 we have to make sure that mm. everybody in this country has freedom. This was written into the Constitution. That's right. And one of the framers, uh, Thomas Jefferson, yes. you know, mm -hmm. he, he wanted to write into the Constitution that slavery is also <laughs> anti-American. So he went to yeah. the Constitution. They, they told him no way. He said, no, no, no. Yeah, you, yeah. You, 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 you can't do it. You're going too far. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're going too far now, Jefferson. We might have no. to, yeah, 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 have to yeah, kick yeah. you out and send you to, yeah. to Britain, too. So he, he took it out. He had to take it uh, out. Exactly. Yeah, he had to take it out. Exactly. So, yeah, that's, that's, and, and, I, and I like the term that you used, brother. You said the original, mm -hmm. original Republican, because that's yes. what they, 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 they stood for. Yeah, and, yeah. They, and, and they were they were biblical. Yeah. So somewhere along the way, they just lost their way. Right. But originally, they they, they were actually against slavery. And uh, yeah. matter of fact, while they had the that on the table before they even went to war, they had it on the table to discuss yeah. it. Absolutely. And they said, "This is what we're gonna do. The representation will go according to." Uh, to uh, 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 the people that you are, uh, the, uh, the population. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. And we know what that means. Well, the slave owners say, well, uh, we also want to count our slave. But, you yes. say, but they say, but your slave are property. Yes. Right. So if your slave are property, then we, we too, no problem. You can yeah. count that population. Yeah. But then we know what property is, a chair. A and we got more chairs that appear in the north. Yeah. That's right. We got more, oh, yeah. we got more, so more we property. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. life, our doors. Yes. Yes. So they say, no, 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 no. You guys cannot do that. They say, well, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we <laughs> will do that. Yes, yes. So you will see that how the original Republican, and as you mentioned, the original Republican had that ideology. They were uh, biblical. They were uh, uh, still under the 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 the, the faith and uh, under the fear uh -huh. of the yeah. word. Oh yeah, yeah. They were working through that, even though, as you mentioned, Thomas Jefferson, some of these guys had a slave. But mm. guess what? Yeah. Their idea of the slave was not a permanent thing. Right. So for the man to say it's anti-American, I mean, eventually, look, I want to let you go. This is yeah. not my agenda for you to continue for me to continue with the slavery business. Yes. Right. Yeah. So even as I said, well, some of them are slavery. Everybody has slave, slave, slave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Everybody has slave. Exactly. The Bible even said that. He said, mm -hmm. look, if your brother cannot pay his bills mm -hmm. and 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 and, and, uh, and and you don't need the money and he want to work for you, he said that's fine. Use him as a slave. Mm -hmm. But after seven years, you gotta let him go. Yeah, right. that's right. He paid his dues. Yeah, that's right. Rolling forever. That's right. right. Exactly. Exactly. And when you brought him into and your home, you were supposed to take right a servant because yeah. you were supposed to take care of him. You're yep. supposed to make you sure go. his family take care him, was taken exactly. care of. Take care of yep. You were supposed to make sure that they are fed. Absolutely. They go to worship yeah. with you. They were not considered mm. second class citizens. That's right. no. Exactly. It was a difficult thing to bring no. a, a, yeah. a, an immigrant into the nation of Israel mm -hmm. because you had to treat them delicately. That's yeah. right. That's right. Because you you now That's you're right. now becoming hospitable in Absolutely. Yahweh's sense. So you have to treat them the way that Yahweh would treat them. Absolutely. <laughs> you 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 the, the the red carpet, right? Exactly. And exactly. You, you know you 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 exactly. make sure that they feel welcome in that home. Now you see how, exactly. how powerful that was right. <laughs> because that's the same thing with a centurion. The centurion went to Yeshua and said, my servant is yeah. sick. Yes. He didn't say my daughter. He said, my servant. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So Dr. Burchard said, so why did we have amendments added to the Constitution? Because white men were and are still <laughs> evil. Well, we can't say that white men are evil because now you're talking about an entire class of humanity. And I believe that you have evil in all races. Mm. <laughs> you have to have righteousness in all yeah. races. Fact, brother, that's one of, that's one of, the, things that, one of the things that I he's, always... He, he's joking. He's yeah. stirring oh, yeah, the yeah. butt. Yes, right. oh, that, yeah, exactly. that is one thing that I yes. always disagree. Yeah. When yeah. folks say the white man is evil, it's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. Yeah. Evil has no color. That's right. Yeah. Evil, has, evil no has no color. Yes. Oh, yeah. and if you when you're talking about the, uh, uh, the white man is evil, yeah. there is no such evil when you are there, uh, uh, that, that uh, 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 war trying to happen uh, in, uh, yeah. in, in Rwanda. Oh, yeah. The Hutsi and the Tutsi. You cannot tell me no white man. I oh, don't yeah. care if the white man has to get this, this war. Mm. But when you tell about an, another, another tribe, the Hutsi and the Tutsi, killing each other, chopping each other's limb, that yeah. is evil to his core. Yeah. Don't oh, tell yeah. me about a white man is the evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the white man is not evil. Evil has no color. This yeah. is yeah. biblical and it's the end of the story. Yes. 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 Evil yes. has Absolutely. no color. No color. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And the game changed watch here. Um, what we see uh, with the election of Abraham Lincoln, the first Republican president in 1860, the Republican Party's uh, success in guiding the Union to victory in the American Civil War and the party's role in the abolishment of slavery, the Republican Party largely influenced the national political scene until 1932. 
And here we get into the Republican Party, um, the minority and women's, women's first of the Republican Party. The, for, from the Republican Party's beginning in 1854 to 1964, mm -hmm. when Senate Republicans pushed hard for a passage for the Civil Rights Act of 1964 against the filibuster, which is a delay or rule <laughs> out of a proposal by Senate Democrats, the GOP had a reputation for supporting blacks and minorities. In 1869, the Republican-controlled legislation legislature in Wyoming Territory and its Republican governor, John Allen Campbell, made it the first jurisdiction to put in place voting rights for women. Yes. In 1875, California swore in the first Hispanic governor, Republican Romaldo Pacheco. And in 1916, Jeanette Rankin of Montana became the first woman in Congress, the first woman in any high-level uh, government position. Mm. In 1928, New Mexico elected, elected the first Hispanic U.S. Senator, Republican Octaviano Lorenzo. In 1898, the first Jewish U.S. Senator elected from outside of the previous Confederacy was Republican Joseph Simon of Oregon. Right now. In 1924, the first Jewish woman elected to the U.S. House of Representatives was Republican Florence Kahn out of California. Mm -hmm. In 1928, the Republican U.S. Senate Majority Leader Charles Curtis of Kansas, who grew up living on the, the Carl Indian Reservation, was the first person of non-European ancestry to be elected to the national office as Vice President of the United States of America uh, for Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blacks naturally identified with the GOP uh, rep, uh, Republican Party until the 1930s. Every African American who served in the, in the U.S. House of Representatives before 1935 and all the uh, African Americans who served in the Senate before 1979 were Republicans. Yes. Frederick, Frederick Douglass, after the Civil War, were in Booker T. Washington in the early 20th century, were notable Re Republicans delegates and spokesmen. Yes. In 1966, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Edward Booker Brook of Massachusetts became the first African American elected by popular vote to the United States Senate. In about 2005, political scientists Nicholas A. Valentino and David O. Sears argued that partnership, partisanship at this time was inspired by disagreements of the on the size of the government, national security, and moral issues while racial issues played a similar role comparatively. Mm -hmm. uh, Republican beliefs. The Republican Party is generally affiliated with social conservative polit policies, although it does have moderate groups within the that advocate individualism and freedom of choice. The social conservatives desire laws that support traditional values such as op opposition to same-sex marriage, abortion, and marijuana use is religious freedom to the Republican Party. We value the right of America's religious leaders to preach and Americans to speak freely according to their faith. We believe the federal government, specifically the IRS, is constitutionally prohibited from policing or censoring speech based on religious convictions or beliefs. We, be we pledge to defend the religious beliefs and rights of conscience of all Americans and to safe safeguard religious institutions against government control, mm -hmm. marriage and sexuality. Foremost and most among those institutions is the American family. It is the foundation of civil society and the cornerstone of the family is natural marriage, the union of one man and one woman. We oppose the, oppos we oppose the imposition of a social cultural revolution upon the American people by wrong wrongly redefining sex yes. discrimination. Reshaping our entire society to fit the most of an ideology alien to America's history and traditions. Yes. Uh, economy. Government cannot create prosperity through government, though government can limit or destroy it. Yes. Prosperity is mm -hmm. the product of self-discipline, enterprise, saving, and investment by individuals, but it is not in, in a means of itself, in of itself. Israel. Hmm. Beyond our mutual strategic interests, Israel is likewise an exceptional country that shares our most essential values. Yes. It is the only country in the Middle East where freedom of speech and freedom of religion are found. Therefore, support for Israel is an expression of uh, Americanism. Yeah. And it is the responsibility of government mm -hmm. to advance yeah, policies that reflect Americans' strong desire for a relationship with no, de with no 
daylight between America and Israel. Our par a party is proud to stand with Israel now and always. So that's ex talking about expanded land, which mm -hmm. was uh, we saw recently the um, M U S embassy was moved to yes, Jerusalem. Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Yes. Yep. Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And um, Republican view on life: the uh, Constitution guarantee that no one can be deprived of life, liberty, or property. Deliberately echoes the Declaration of Independence proclamation that all are endowed by their Creator with the inalienable right to life. According, according we, we assess the sanctity of human life and affirm that the unborn child has a fundamental right to life which cannot be infringed. Yeah. We support human life, a human life amendment to the Constitution and legislation to make clear that the 14th Amendment's protections apply to children before birth, their birth. And so we get into the history of democracy from Greece to U.S. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of ties in. You see the different views as to um, where so many are torn between parties. We see yes, nowadays uh -huh. in the U.S., you know, we've got uh, believers on, on both sides with different, you know, dis, uh, decisions on what they, you know, how they value life and yes. different things. Is one of the biggest issues there. And, you know, we have to see it through Yahweh's eyes because no, no party affiliation makes us who we are as far as our identity through Yeshua. Yes. True. Our identity should only strictly be through Yeshua, who he is, and who we are yeah. through him. Mm -hmm. So agree. it's not by party affiliation. Mm -hmm. But we have, to real, we have to really view and look at the values of Yahweh. What does he want us to stand on? What altar does he want us to stand on? And so we have to really carefully look through and assess what is Yahweh's will for us and how should we represent him as we go about these times and uh, spreading the, the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. Yeah. And so um, in starting the history of democracy, according to National Geographic, it was picked up that the United States has also a compounded government system. Uh, one important aspect of the system is democracy in which the power rests with the people yes. and it should rest with the people. As for the United States, that power is utilized indirectly through elected representatives. Although the U.S. has been a strong advocate of democracy, it did not invent democracy. The Greeks are often credited with the developing of a democ democratic government that influenced the structure of the United States. Mm -hmm. Elements of ancient Greek democracy heavily influenced the leaders that constructed the United States government. After declaring independence from England in 1776, the founders of the United States got the opportunity to create a government of their choice. This was tedious, and for re uh, reference, they looked to what they viewed as the best philosophies and examples of government throughout the world history. With the Roman model, the, Democrat, the democratic model of ancient Greece system of self-government greatly influenced how the founding fathers planned to construct the new United States government. Before independence, the east coast of what is today, the United States was divided into 13 separate colonies. Mm. Yep. The founders of the United States decided to keep the country divided into states rather than dismantling the colonial, the colonial boundaries. This was so that the each region that each region could be governed at the local level, with the national government acting as a prime authority overall. These thirteen colonies became the first states of the newly established country. An American state resembles resembles the co community structure of an ancient Greek polis or city state. A polis was an urban center, and the land area surrounding it was developing similar to that of the major cities and state capitals in the United States and the rural areas around them. In ancient Greece, some main cities, st some main city states were Athens, Sparta, Corinth, Thebes, and Syracuse. These city states acted independently. Sometimes they went to war against each other. They also united together to, fe to defend Greece from outside invaders. All Greek city states had rules that the people lived in observance and laws had to follow. In ancient Greece, the ideology of rule of law came from the philosopher Aristotle's belief in natural law. Yes. He believed of a higher justice in nature, certain essential human rights that overrule the laws written out by humans. Aristotle believed that people should align themselves with the natural law and govern by its ethics. In the United States today, the rule of law is a principle that sees that all laws are publicly accessible, accessible equally enforced and independently judged and that they adhere to internationally, international human rights ethics. The rule of law allows all individuals and institutions, including the government itself, to be held accountable for their actions. 
by following the rule of law, the United States can prevent abuses of power by leaders who might act as if they are above the law. Another important ancient Greek concept that influenced the forming of the United States government was the written constitution. Aristotle, or likely one of his students, compiled and recorded the constitution of the Athenians and laws of many other Greek city-states. The written constitution sets the standard as to how people should behave in society. It also establishes clear processes. People who break the law are judged, and those who are harmed as a result can be compensated or given justice needed, if needed. Like the Constitution of the, the Athenians, the U.S. Constitution is an important document. Yeah. It lays out the government's structure and how the checks and balances of power within it relate. The U.S. Constitution acts as the supreme law of the country and puts in place individual citizens' rights, such as the, the right to free speech yes. or the right to a trial by a jury or one's peers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Today, the U.S. Constitution is still referenced in law as the supreme law of the land and is enforced by the U.S. Supreme Court, the country's highest court. The original U.S. voting system had similarities as Ath Athens. Yeah. In Athens, every citizen could speak their mind and mm -hmm. vote at a large ecclesia or assembly that met to establish laws. That's, that word sounds familiar. Yeah. Ecclesia. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the U.S. government, they went back to Greece. They went yeah. to the history books, and they uh -huh. said, if we're going to form a new government, we've got to go back to one of the governments that was located on Daniel's Beast. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, Daniel yeah, Beast. Now, yep. from the beginning, yep. they had ties with Israel. We so they said, listen, we are connected with Israel. We understand this Judaism thing. Mm -hmm. We yes. understand that nothing can be successful unless yeah. God is in it. That's so it. we're going to put as much God into this country as possible. As much as it Absolutely. as possible without offending him too much. Yes. Yes. And then once we get all the <laughs> blessings, then we can kind of drift away from sure. the principle. Wow. But they said, we Man. don't want to go full Israel without government. Yeah. So let's look at the best possible solution that we could have without having a total blown theocracy. Yeah. Obviously, as a government, bear, God, God, God is yeah supreme. Yeah. They said, "Now we need we need uh, a, a human person yes. at the top of this command. We don't want a king. No, yeah. We don't want a pope." Yeah. So the the next thing we could do is look how at how they ran things in Greece. And what they did is they had three tiers of government Absolutely. in Greece. So Absolutely. they said, when we frame this constitution, mm -hmm. we can have the same thing: three yeah. tiers, so that the the country is not run by one singular entity, right. one single person, mm -hmm. but it's run by a group of people who are promoted to that office by their peers mm -hmm. or by citizens of their region. Right. So the, the, the Constitution, the government has been set up in that way, and it continues to run in that same way except for a few uh, added added elements, which we will also discuss as we get deeper. As Shanika said, yeah, you know, it's early. It's early. You can't yeah. expect us to pull out the heavy guns right now in the first oh, yeah. five minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got to educate the people on, <laughs> you know, what, because a lot of people it. just don't know. They yeah. don't know. Simply, yeah. You know, they skip history class or they, they, yep. they don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they skip history class. Yeah. So, so some of you are like, oh, my goodness, why why does it sound like a history class? Because it yeah. is. It's a history it class on politics. Yeah. It's you have to appreciate the history. You have to know the genetics of, uh, you know, an organism, an entity, or a country That's politically right. Absolutely. before you can break down where they're going. You yeah. know, because they, they set the information already in stone. It's already set in stone. So Absolutely. when we go into 2020, uh, they already envisioned this 300 years ago. This right. is nothing new. They're, Absolutely. This is all set in stone. So Absolutely. continue, brother. Manifest destiny. Manifest, yeah, manifest, manifest destiny. destiny. Manifest destiny. destiny. Manifest destiny. destiny. Yeah. If you remember nothing else yeah. on this broadcast, you remember manifest that destiny. manifest destiny. destiny. We're walking in it right now. Yes, yes right. And brother, yes. As, as, as you mentioned, everything is tied together because if you pay yeah. attention to every detail that is coming, right. yes. they connected the dot to the end. Yes. That's right. You know, so yeah. as you mentioned, the two uh, government, democracy, and um, I mean the, the Democrat and the Republican, yes. and what they believe, yeah. and talk about the modern Democrat Definitely. and yes. the original uh, Republican. So all of these things here are tied Together, together and yes. they go back to uh, 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 how the, found fa the founding fathers had their mindset on, on, on this uh, 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 democracy that they wanted to, this government they wanted to build. Yes. So yeah. everything is tied together, so That's you right. gotta pay everything attention to the together. details. That's right, so, That's much. Right. so we're connecting the dots. Yeah. Yes, and it's Crystal said she skipped history, so thank yeah. you. Yeah, oh, yes. hey, Crystal, yeah. we got you. That's we good. We got you, like I said, a lot of when, when, we <laughs> when you walk away from this broadcast, you're gonna be able to tell your friends, listen, I know exactly what's gonna happen in the That's next right. four years. That's right, because it's already been written in stone. That's it, and I, I read the blueprint. That's oh, it. yeah, everybody else was running around saying, Absolutely. oh, you know, vote for Biden, vote for Trump. Listen. Don't worry about that. God God has an agenda that he set. Absolutely. Forth, and, you know, we're going to follow that agenda. That's right. You know? Yes. And a lot of the history, like I said earlier, too, I mean, 
a lot of it, I look, the more I research now, a lot of it was misinformation or hidden information. Yes. That was uh, uh -huh. biased information. Yes. And some of it was entirely not even true at all. That's so right. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, whoa, I have to relearn and unlearn certain things. That's yes. right. You know, and, then, and even now we see a huge suppression of truth. It's unreal. Um, censorship and things like that as we yeah. go forward. talk about land grab. Yeah, land tell grab. Us that uh, uh, Christopher, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Yeah, right. exactly. He, he yeah, yeah. The, 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 the founding father, the Quakers, they came out yeah. here, the founding yeah. new land, exactly. that's right. new world, and then everything begins boom, 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 right. manifest mm -hmm. destiny. Right. Yeah. They never mentioned about the Iroquois. That's yeah, right. exactly. They never mentioned, because that's the hidden, oh, no. Hit, we're yeah. going to get to the Iroquois. You know, oh don't, yeah. don't think that we just <laughs> touched <laughs> over two <laughs> minutes and we're going to come back to that. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to talk about the Iroquois, because, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that's, that, that's the meat of this presentation, yeah. the Iroquois. Oh, yeah. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. They're everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. That's amazing. Hidden secret. America's yeah. hidden secret. Amer exactly. And it says, um, so here, continuing on, with the citizens were elected to special councils to serve as organizers decision makers and judges. The only people considered citizens in Athens were males over the eight, age of 18. Women slaves and conquered people could not vote in the assembly or be chosen to serve on councils. Mm -hmm. The founders of the United States also believed only certain people should be allowed to vote and select their leaders. They choose to develop the United States as a representative democracy. Mm -hmm. With this, citizens elect officials like senators and representatives who vote on behalf of the citizens they represent in Congress. And also means that instead of each individual citizens voting for president, the Electoral College officially cast the votes of each state for the president. Just as in Athens, when the United States was first founded, only white land-owning men were allowed to vote over, white, uh, over time. However, all ci U.S. citizens over the age of 18 who have not been convicted, convicted of a felony were recognized and uh, they're having the right to vote. The principles behind the ancient Greeks democratic system of government are still implemented today. The United States and several other countries have adopted democratic governments to give a voice to their people. Democracy allows citizens the opportunity to elect officials to represent them. It also allows citizens to select to elect a different different person to represent them if they are not satisfied with the current elected leaders. That's right. Today, democracy and the rule of law, other people around the, the world with protecting their human rights and holding each other responsible equally uh, under the law. And so we'll get into the, uh, now that's the key important there. We have to, um, we talked about leaders and, and how the um, citizens were responsible for selecting their leaders. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And so in that, we as citizens have to also be responsible for praying for our leaders. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praying for our leaders, no matter how well we like them or no matter how well we dislike them. Right. We have to always hold that responsibility because Yahweh is watching us and how we not only treat each other, but how we treat those who are in leadership, those who preside over us, those who are pastors over us, those who are bosses over us, those are those leaders. And we have to pray for them because we have to pray for things that we want to go in our yes. favor. Yes. We have to get the ear of Yahweh and prayer, uh, pray a prayer that is pure mm -hmm. pray a prayer that is just and you know praying for that those results we want and praying for those people that we want to see change through so that's yes. the way we want to otherwise if we show yahweh we despise um those who lead over us if we, if we despise the pastors yes. if we despise presidents if we despise um government officials or despise police or if we despise uh bosses or other leaders that uh, even you know children and parents you know things right. like that children despising parents we have to watch because Yahweh will surely give us, uh, he will teach us a lesson. And, and you know, uh, brother, that is biblical too because the Bible tells us clearly. He said, pray for those who exercise uh, lordship over absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. So in other words, yes. he didn't even say those who actually run you fairly, you know. Absolutely. He said those who even abuse you, so pray for them anyway. Yeah. Right. That's yes. biblical. Absolutely. Yeah. Those who exercise lordship. Lordship doesn't mean that somebody come up here and hand you food or, or take care right. of you like a right. servant. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, a good man will take care of his servant in his house. No. Right. Right. Somebody who oppresses you. Absolutely. But the Bible take, go to the extreme. That when you That's do right. that, then you will mm -hmm. understand how it is important mm -hmm. to pray for your leader. Yeah. Because at the end yeah. of the day, he is still the one that makes That's the right. decision that will affect you. That's and right. Because yeah. right. appointment comes neither from the uh, south, east, or west. Appointment comes from Yahweh himself. From Yahweh, exactly. Exactly. So and not to catch him by surprise. Yeah, exactly. Because you see even the time when uh, the children of Israel, when the, when the people wanted the, uh, a leader, and you see when um, Samuel had to elect Saul, yeah. bring, bring, anoint Saul, yes. and because and uh, because Yahweh, he said, they don't want me as leader. 
give them, you know, give them salt, give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he will give the people what they want if he is pressed to give them what they want. And that, that could be a hard lesson for some people in a lot of cases. You know, so that's definitely a dangerous thing if mm -hmm. we but go I far. I want to add one more thing about sure that, thing. that government that you mentioned. You see, a lot of people are confused because they don't understand the history part of it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. They say, oh, the woman didn't have the right to vote. Oh, the mm -hmm. black man didn't have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. But you just read this thing here. Yeah. But some people didn't pay attention to what you read. It says that only yeah. certain white folks will have votes. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Matter that's right. The Constitution of America said that only those who were called craftsmen right. will have the mm -hmm. right to elect. Absolutely. Right. So it wasn't every white man. Right. It right. wasn't exactly. every white folks. No. Yep. The craftsman. Certain. If you are yeah. a horseshoe maker, you're a farmer, these guys. So, yep. so you see, they pardoned it after Greece, but guess they what? Did. That's yeah. where mm -hmm. you begin. Mm -hmm. And as time went along, they make right. amendments, they make changes. Mm -hmm. right. So sometimes I say, oh, well, uh, they didn't they have the black man, uh, the black man in, in mind. They didn't yeah. have all the white men in exactly. mind. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. They only had a select exactly. few. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Only, exactly. the, only, the, only the white men that wore glasses. There you no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Exactly. <laughs> that was the exactly. Only, that was the only one who allowed to vote. <laughs> only ones who wore glasses. That's a good one. Sorry, continue. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So here we're going to get into the branches of government. Yes. Okay. Branches of government explain. And so here we start with the legislative. The legislative branch is in charge of making laws. It is made up by the Congress and several government agencies. The executive is the branch of government that exercises authority in holding responsibility for the government governance of a state. The executive executives uh, enforces the law. And so the judicial is the branch of government charged with the interpretation of laws and the administration of justice to judiciary. So that's, uh, and then a mixed market is a system that combines aspects of both capitalism and socialism. Uh, a mixed economy system protects private property and allows a, s a level of economic freedom in the use of capital, yes. but also allows for governments to interfere in economic activities in order to achieve social aims. Mm -hmm. So example, like governors, yes. They have, they have, they have, they have a certain amount of power. Yes. They can, um, their mandates for anything they want to mandate or something like that, different things and stuff like that, different health regulations. They can only pass a law can only be passed through a government if it first, if a bill is signed and passes through the legislature. That's right. And then it, it is in, it is built out and then into a law. So it can only be a law if it passes first through the legislature. So even in emergency situations, you know, some people had signs up with laws. This is a law. You have to follow this or have a mask here to go to this store and this things like that. Or you have to stand here. You can only distance this amount of people and things like that. Uh, they would try to hurt people like cattle during different situations on the name of uh, for medical and safety. But in actuality, a law can only be pat made actual law if it passes through legislature and is signed. So it, a law has to be first lawful in order to be in order to be considered a law. Yes. It can't be an unlawful law, otherwise it is unconstitutional and breaks the constitution, yes. which is a you know is a law of the, of the land. So that, that's a heavy um, deal that many states are facing. You know, there's a lot of lawsuits going on in these different states. Uh, people being sued, uh, governments being sued left and right. Yes. Businesses being sued left and right because of different medical um, needs of people out there and different mandates that have been addressed. And so, um, and the economy, what the economy is, is the wealth and resources of, the, of a country or region, especially in terms of the production, consumption of goods and services. Presidential power is the separation of powers established by the founding fathers and was got designed to prevent the majority from ruling with an iron fist. Based on their experience, the, fr the fr uh, framers aim to keep from giving a branch, any branch of the new government too much power. That's right. The separation of powers provides a system of shared power known as checks and balances. Checks and balances. Right. For example, the president appoints judges and departmental secretaries, but they must be approved by the Senate. Yes. The president can veto bills or deny them. If he does that, the bill is sent back to Congress. A president can make treaties with approval of the Senate or veto bills and sign bills, represent our nation in talks with foreign countries, enforce the laws of Congress passes that Congress passes, act as commander-in-chief during a war, mm -hmm. call out troops to protect our nation against an attack, make suggestions about things that should be new laws, lead his political party, entertain foreign guests, recognize foreign countries, grant pardons, uh, nominate cabinet um, members and Supreme Court justices and other high officials, uh, appoint ambassadors, uh, talk this uh, directly to the people about problems, 
represent the uh, best best interests of all peoples. And um, I saw there was another guy who recently just got granted clemency. Um, Alice, you know, the, the trial with that one, that was pretty interesting there. I think he's like 70 years old now. Wow. And I was like, whoa, after being. I think, I think this president here give clemency is like, who he think he be. It was, who he likes. I was like, so that's. He reminds me of, of the Pope. The Pope. Yes. It's been so a lot of clemency. And the Pope, he's been canonizing a lot of women lately. All, all right now. Man. Come on now. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, is so definitely. Eh? And so here, a president cannot make laws, declare wars, decide how federal money will be spent, interpret laws, choose cabinet members or Supreme Court justices without Senate approval. And um, so that's, oh, that was a short list. <laughs> a short list that yeah. we cannot do. So you can see right, that. Right. So but the, you um, see how powerful that is, right? Yeah. A president cannot declare war. But then yeah. sometimes, you know, we the people, because we, uh, they miss history class and they don't go out right. and study, mm -hmm. they right. overlook it. Remember right. when President Bush was in office? Mm -hmm. He looked right into the death of Saddam Hussein. He said, Saddam Hussein, yep. I'm giving you 24 hours. Yep. If you don't come out, I am coming after you. Yeah, exactly. And within 24 hours, he began to bomb Iraq. So, oh, yes, the president has the power to declare one. No, mm -hmm. it's because the Republican Party, Congress, right. who were predominant, uh, 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 yeah. predominant majority, yes. they passed the law. They, uh, uh, they, dec uh, uh, they, they declare war. So, uh, and then the president went and activated on it. Right. Yeah. But now we take that as a thing that, oh, yeah, the president can declare. No, Congress declared war. Mm. Right. But right, because right. Congress uh, at that moment was predominantly uh, right. uh, 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 Republicans. Mm. So, of course, anything he says goes. Yeah. Because mm. they have his back. It's yeah. like a little yeah. brother say, oh, I'm going to beat you. And then when you come to fight with him, his big brother, Joshua, say, well, wait a minute. I don't I, 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 I want to fight you. I want right. to fight that little one. He said, right. well, if you mm. fight me, you fight me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So, oh, so yeah. since you mentioned that, let, let's break down this whole political thing uh, to, mm. to make sure everybody understands the way that Congress works. Yeah. You, you're talking about Congress, and you're going to give any definitions on Congress? Uh, no, I can go okay. into that, yeah. So, so this is the way that Congress works. So you have two houses that make up Congress. That's right. Two mm. houses. Yeah. The House of Representatives, mm. and then you have the Senate. The Senate. Right. That's two separate houses that have to come together to make up Congress. So in Congress, the House of Representatives, it's called the junior house or the lower house. Yeah. The Senate is called the upper house or the senior house. Mm -hmm. So you got the junior house and the senior house, representatives, mm -hmm. Congress. Now, in the U.S. right now, you have 435 representatives. Mm -hmm. How do you become a representative? Yeah. You have to run for office, mm -hmm. and it has to be based on your state's population. population. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you have a huge population in your state, you will have more representatives because they are representing your state. That's yes. right. And the capital. Yes. That's the way Congress works. So right now you have 435 representatives in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. You have two senators for every state. Yes. That's right. Equal. That means if you have 50 states, you have 100 senators. Yes in the U.S. Congress right now. That's mm -hmm. right. How do laws work? So Corey mm -hmm. explained how the, the laws work. The law starts as an idea. Oh, yeah. Okay? Definitely. So let's separate the table right now. Mm -hmm. You guys you guys are the upper house, so we'll call you the Senate. Yeah. So you have the Joe, Senate. he's a senator. Uh, Sarah, she's a senator. Yeah. Corey and I, we are representatives. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have more representatives in Congress, but... The senators carry more weight. Yeah, That's why it's less right. of them. Yeah. So this is how laws work. So a law starts as an idea. You say, you know what? There are people who are speeding in my area. I want to make a national law that you can only go 20 miles per hour in a neighborhood. In a neighborhood. That's right. So yeah. what you do as a citizen, you bring that to the House of Representatives or you bring it to the Senate. Yes. Right. Okay? The senators. Now, when you bring it to the House of Representatives, we have to take your idea, we have to uh, talk about it legally, right. and then we have to present it as a bill to a committee. Mm -hmm. And this what has to do with the whole state, right? This has to do with the whole state. Yeah, because usually if it's lower, like if it's in your neighborhood, you have to go to the mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to go to the mayor. That's local. If you want yeah. to we're the talking about the entire state, state, state and all the, all the right. neighborhoods, yeah. Yeah. you take it to the... Now, mm -hmm. yeah, now this is, this, you're playing in the big leagues now. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you bring it to Corey now. We're the mm -hmm. representatives. We, right. sign it, we assign it to a committee. Mm -hmm. The committee is going to look at it they're going to put all the details in, then they're going to bring it back to us after reviewing it, and we're now going to call it a bill. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do with this bill? We take this bill, and the, rep the representatives, we vote on it. 
And if we get the majority, uh, so out of the 435, if we get the majority, which is going to be 218, to pass right. that bill, then we take that bill and we pass it on to the senators. Mm -hmm. Now, the senators have to go and do the same uh. thing. They have to take it to the committee. They say, okay, here you go. We want you to examine this bill that we got from the House of Representatives. <laughs> Let us know if it looks good. If it looks good, we're going to bring it back to the Senate floor to vote on it. Mm -hmm. If the senators get the bill back and they say, you know what, this doesn't look good, we're going to send this back to the House of Representatives so right. those guys can right. you know, reinvestigate right. and clean it back up and then send it back yeah, to us. Yeah. This goes in a loop, and you have some bills that sit in the yeah. House, in right. Congress, for decades. Yeah. For decades. Just circling around. Mm -hmm. When Congress finally decides, okay, now it's good, let's bring it to the Congress floor so the senators can vote on it, if they get a majority of it, which is 51, now they take that bill and they pass it to the president. Right. And the president has 10 days to decide what he wants to do with the bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can sign it into law or he can veto it. Right. Now here's where <laughs> things get hairy. <laughs> what happens when you have more Democrats or more Republicans in Congress? And you say, well, how do you end up with more Democrats or Republicans? Mm -hmm. The states. Yeah. yeah. The states vote. So Corey and I, we are representatives, yeah. right? Representatives, yeah. So let's say mm -hmm. we are the Republican representatives. Mm -hmm. If we have more Republican representatives that have been voted by the citizens of the state, then you have more Republican representation mm -hmm. in the House Our of Representatives. House. House of representatives right. yeah. So when you build, bring a bill to the House of Representatives and this bill looks Democratic, Mm. They decide amongst themselves, hey, mm. listen, we're the majority, so yeah. we're going to reject all the stuff from the Democrats me, me. for the next two years. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Now, you might have all Democrat or all Republicans mm. or the majority of Republicans right. in the House of Representatives. Uh -huh. But what happens when you have more Democrats in the, the, the Senate? Right. In the Senate. Yeah. The Senate. Uh -huh. yeah. exactly. Then <laughs> you can actually bypass the House of Representatives and mm. take a bill straight to the Senate. That's right. Yep. And they can vote on it, and right. it'll be in circulation between the Senate and mm. the House of Representatives. Mm. You send that on to the president. Now, the president has 10 days to decide what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. If the president vetoes it, then it goes right back to the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Senate says, okay, well, you know what? We think this is a great idea. We yeah. need to, we need to uh, push this through. The Congress mm. has the right the power yeah. to make something a law that the president does not agree That's with. That's right. Right, right. But uh, you have to have two thirds of the vote two in Congress. That vote. is yeah, so yeah. difficult wow. to get. Two thirds. Yeah. Why is it so difficult to get? Yeah. Because in the Republican and Democratic Party, you have both left and right, right. wing. But yeah. then you have these extremists. Yeah. 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 You call yeah. them the far left, <laughs> and then you call them the far right. right. Exactly. Oh, so God. you could have yeah. two. You could have two <laughs> Republican states. Yeah. Right next to each other, yes. yep. but their ideals are totally different. Are different. Right. Totally different. And yeah, the yeah. Republicans in this state look at that one and they say, "Y'all are more democratic than anything else. Y'all yeah. don't represent what we represent." Yeah, yeah. But then you also yeah. have some democratic states, yeah. and they look at each other and they're yeah. like, "You more left wing. You, you know, you, you, uh, yeah. you a socialist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you far left, yeah, exactly. which is exactly what you hear right yeah, now exactly. in it's politics right now. The ads that you watch, yeah, the ads that you watch." They're Man. either saying that they're this commies. person, <laughs> right, there's, there's either this person yeah. is a socialist, which means you're all the way on the left far side, left left or right. you're extremist, which yeah. means you are on the far, far right. right. No in between. Right, there's no like in betweens between. now. Between. And so that, yeah. that's what they do. So the politicians, yeah, they get up, and this is what they say about each other. This yeah. guy is far left, mm. this guy is far right. But in Congress, that kind of talk doesn't exist. In Congress, these guys have to sit down and make sure that they iron out, you know, it's too... Uh, yeah. 500 and, and nearly 50 of them. So mm -hmm. they have to iron out exactly what they're going to do from party to party. So they don't play that kind of political game no. in Congress unless it's for a show. Yeah. And so right now, <laughs> you have a lot happening in Congress that oh, yeah. they, it's showtime at the Apollo right now. Election year. Yeah. Showtime yeah. at the Apollo. <laughs> exactly. Election year is showtime. Exactly. So that's the way it exactly. works. So if you have a great idea for a, for, for a law, mm -hmm. just know it starts as an idea, it gets passed on as a bill, and it could be circulating until 2040. Right. Yeah. Uh, just, just so you know. Absolutely. So, so that's the way. That's the way it works. Absolutely. And so here we got um, the Constitution, and I'll go back here and, and define that and get a little bit more into that in a minute, briefly on there how that works here um, in the Bill of Rights. The Constitution of the United States of America is the supreme law of the United, of the United States of America, which I stated earlier in the other um, notes. It is empowered 
with the sovereign authority of the people by the framers and the consent of the legislatures of the states and is in the source of all government powers and also provides important limitations on the government that protect the fundamental rights of the people of the United States. In May 1787, 55 men from 12 states gathered in Philadelphia to revise the Articles of Confederation Agreement among the 13 original states of the United States of America that served as its first constitution. That's what that is, Article of Federation. And, uh, in, a, um, in Virginia, Governor Edmund Ra Randolph represented a plan orchestrated by James Madison for the design of a new national government entirely. The plan proposal would lead to a process of four months of arguments, debates, compromise, and the establishment of the Constitution of the United States. On September 17, 1787, the final draft of the new Constitution was read to the 42 de delegates who were still at the, con at the convention. Of the 42 men there, 39 signed their signatures to the document and notified the Confederation Congress that their work was completed. Congress then submitted the document to the states for ratification and more argument, debate, and compromise happened. The state of Delaware was the first to imp implement the Constitution. On June 21, 1788, just nine months after the state ratification process started, New Hampshire became the ninth state to ratify the Constitution, and the Constitution went into effect. In both centuries since its implementation, Many updates have been made to the Constitution. Yeah. However, the basic premises which the Constitution was framed, the protection of individual rights and liberties, limited government with separation of powers and checks and balances, the federal system yeah. and judicial re review, continually remain at the heat or at the heart of what's been known as a living document. And then this brings on the Bill of Rights. On September 25th, 1789, Congress sent to the state legislatures 12 proposed amendments to the Constitution. Numbers 3 to 12 were adopted by the states to become the United States Bill of Rights to begin December 15, 1791. James Madison proposed the U.S. Bill of Rights. It widely acknowledged the Constitution's influential opponents, including well-known founding fathers who argued that the Constitution should not be approved because it failed to protect the basic principles of human, human liberty. The U.S. Bill of Rights was inspired by George Mason in 1776 Virginia Declaration of Rights. In the uh, 1689 English Bill of Rights, works of the age of en enlightenment pertaining to natural rights and earlier English political files such as the Magna Carta 1215 Magna Carta. Mm -hmm. established the uh, rights and that established the rights of English barons and the major landowners and limiting the absolute authority of the King of England. Two other articles were presented to the states. Only the final 10 articles were approved uh, quickly and corresponded to the first through 10 amendments of the Constitution. The first article dealing with the number and appointment apportionment of U.S. representatives never became joined with the Constitution. The second article, restricting the power of Congress to res increase the salaries of their congressional members, thanks, was ratified two centuries later as the 27th Amendment. Though they were included in the document known as the Bill of Rights, neither article sets up a right as that, that term is used presently. For the, that cause, and also big because the term had been used for the first 10 amendments long before the 27th Amendment was ratified. The term Bill of Rights in modern U.S. language use only means the 10 amendments ratified in 1791. The United States Bill of Rights plays a key role in American law and government and remains a central symbol of the freedoms and cultures of the nation. One of the original 14 copies of the U.S. Bill of Rights is on display for the public at the National Act uh, Archives in Washington, D.C. Now looking back here, the, looking at the second, second Amendment, it talks about here, uh, the Second Amendment, it says, uh, here, part here, it says, well, a well-regulated militia. There's a part of here that talks about a well-regulated militia being necessary for the, the security of a free state and the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. This is um, an example here where pastors led the charge with the American Revolution to cut ties with British governmental tyranny against religious freedoms. Uh, Jonas Clark formed the Minutemen Militia in Lexington with yeah. 70 mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. from his congregation 
helping to defeat 700 British in the uh, First Battle of Lexington in the Revolutionary War, April 19, 1775. The British then moved on to Concord and were met by Pastor William Emerson, the grandfather of Ralph Waldo Emerson. William assembled 300 of his men to fight the British. Now definitely um, here it talks about, let's see, the, um, now the right to bear arms was the real big heavy topic you know, NRA and things like that, and a lot of people yeah. want to keep their weapons and stuff like that. And there's some people that say, no, we don't want them, we don't want any guns, we don't need them, and things like that. And they've got some that say, no, we need our guns, our protection. So there's a tug-of-war battle between that, the Second Amendment rights, and there's a threat with the Second Amendment. You know, we can see um, all over the country the uh, Second right Amendment, to the right to bear arms, and so many have abused that right with extremism. Like yes. we talked about earlier, you know, mm -hmm. we've got extremists mm -hmm. You know, we got, you know, far right extremism. You got far left extremism. You mm -hmm. see all these coming together. And then um, so much out there and misinformation. It's unbelievable what we've, we've seen. You know, one blaming this party, one blaming that party. And then just the right to bear arms is, is a, a right, an amendment that's to be protected. Like we saw uh, one of the biggest hot topics about the, uh, what happened in Charlottesville, the, the outrage out there in Charlottesville. Yes. And then, you know, and, and um, uh, people being, you know, s just bamboozled and stumbled and, and, and deaths and things like that going out there and just, you know, the violence in Charlottesville. And then, you know, the heat that was talked about, you know, the very fine people statement and things like that that the president mentioned mm -hmm. and like that yeah. and stuff like that. And then, yeah, fine then the fine side. people like that and <laughs> both, <laughs> and both sides. Then you mm -hmm. see a, you see an article here, then you see a, then you see a video here, the entire speech where he says, not those extremists, not those, but I'm talking about the people over there and things like that. So you got all types of extremism on sides where the right to bear arms should be protected, but should be held according responsibly with responsible, responsible people there people that you know that have you know a mindset to protect but not abuse the second amendment forming a militia does not mean like the, the second amendment says forming a militia but it does it does not excuse or mean anybody to form these hate groups out there you I seeing agree. or these uh people out there looting and rioting and things like that yeah, with because militia when you're talking about the right to bear arms right yeah you're talking about uh protecting your family right Handgun, a few things is good. Yeah. But who carry an M16? Is that, yeah. So Where are you thing. going with an M16? <laughs> yeah. No. Where yeah. are you going with an AK-45? Yeah. Where are you going with yeah. this? That's I'm the thing. AK yeah. Where are you going? Where are you yep. going with it? Exactly. These are assault rifles. Are you going? Yeah. I mean, assault I mean, rifles you know, and yeah. people are you coming. Are you going to find yeah. somebody miles away? I mean, mm. ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, so ooh. yeah. So that that's the thing that has to be Only heavily guarded. Only crazy people do that. Right. Right. So exactly. yes, it needs to be monitored. They need yeah, to really make sure that these guys go past a psycho test. Yeah. Because yep. you and I are not going to buy no rifle arm. Uh, because no. Yeah. Even if you're going for hunting, you're not going to carry no bazooka. Because that's, guess yeah. what? Are you literally going to destroy your animal? Right, exactly. Because you got so many different weapons out there that are just military type of Crazy weapons. Right. That mm -hmm. are just, you know, do not need to be in, in the hand of citizens. This out agenda there like that, is so. really brought up, up a lot of concern. Yeah. When they started having these mass um, shootings in the school. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know, with, with these, yep. exactly the type of guns you're talking about. Right. Where did these young people get their hands on these Exactly. Guns? You know, you, you kind of wonder, like, you know, how they, you know, how they get their hands on these kind of right, weapons right. and, and why. That's what got Bill Clinton winning Georgia landslide mm -hmm. over Bob Dole. Because uh -huh. Bill Clinton came out with a, 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 um, with a, a, um, an ad with a big assault rifle, they say, and then he had a child with it. He said, I will go into every door yes. and yeah. I will knock on door to door, even if right. I had to take this gun myself. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and he passed that. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, he couldn't with Georgia then. Mm. <laughs> exactly. But then, but then when you appeal now to the family values mm. now, exactly. then the woman. it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. even it could mm -hmm. be both women and men too because mm -hmm. as a man, it's like, wait a minute, man. Literally, man, this is this is, this is not right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. This is not right. It's supposed to be to protect your family, but having a little child carrying an assault rifle, mm -hmm. that ain't right. Yeah, yeah, some of it, because, yeah, you got people out there. And, and the problem is you got some people that are responsible out there with certain weapons they have, but then there's overkill. There's different things out there that just don't even need to be in, in like, you know, citizens' homes, and mm -hmm. you see the abuse that we've seen for so many years, and you kind of wonder, like, are they really trying to do this, use these abusive weapons on purpose just to get rid of the guns yeah. altogether? You know, so it's, 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 a, it's, it's unbelievable. Yes. You know, so, so we see these pastors rightly using these weapons and their right to bear arms for a cause to protect freedom and religious freedom of their faith in, in, in a non-abusive manner. And so the separation of church and state appears nowhere in the founding documents. And it's <laughs> been a mis it's, it's cons misconstrued with so many different um, uh, uh, history because it's, it's an involvement. And we talk about it here. It means that the church should not have any overreach of government interference of the church. 
in the in the uh, in the conduct in their belief and, and and the government trying to overrule the church. So that's what that means. And, uh, and it's shown and stated here in a letter that uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote in uh, 1802 when Thomas Jefferson was president. He wrote a personal letter to the Danbury Baptist Association in Danbury, Connecticut, in response to a letter that they wrote to him yeah. requesting clarification of the First Amendment. And um, Jefferson was assuring that them that the First Amendment is already in place to protect you and from uh, any governmental intrusion or overreach right. of the church. Jefferson wrote, building a wall of separation of church and the state. About 150 years later, it was twisted to remove the church from the public square and remove the church from government. So that's, uh, I'll leave you here with um, John 15 and 5. Yes. It says, I am the vine. Yes. We are the branches. Yes. He that abides in me. Yes. And I in him, the same abideth, bringing forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. That's what Yeshua says there. So Amen. we have to be prayerful. I agree. We, we definitely, yeah. we, have to, we have to be definitely be prayerful because uh, we're fighting, in a, it's a spiritual warfare. Yes. Uh, we're fighting against uh, principalities. Yes. Darkness. We're fighting against, you know, principalities of feminism, principalities against racism, principalities against Molech, principalities against ba Balaam, and different types of just things that are going on there. Principalities that, you know, that try to suppress the truth of Yahweh yes. and the yes. truth, the truth all together. You know, because um, the separation of, you know, truth and falsehood out there, you know, you see a lot of suppression when people are coming forth with positive um, solutions for different things and different illnesses are being suppressed. You got to raise questions. That's a problem. And that's something we have to pray against and to pray that uh, we shall overcome the enemy with truth and um, with wisdom. Because Yahweh will get the last say yes. and truth shall reign and crush adversities and the lies that the enemy tries to bring forth to the people. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall, shall set, you, set free. you free. Amen. The truth shall set you free. Yeah. Well, my brother, that was that was boy. awesome, man. That was back, awesome. Back to back. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, boy, that was that was great. Amen. Yes, you deserve a hand clap. Yes. <laughs> so we got some. some yeah, we'll be praying. Yes, yeah, awesome, hand claps going Corey. up for you, Corey. Man, that was great. Back to back, Joe. He did it back to back. Uh -huh. back. That was a straight. <laughs> yeah, He's Nico, a clutch player, you know. That's right, clutch player. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, we'll be $10, Corey. Tell uh, you guys. Uh, 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 I said she owes you $10 uh, uh, for that. So, you know, now, so we talked about Congress, right? We talked about the, the president. And, you know, to be honest, we all know that this election is more, more about the vice president yes. than the president. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. We, we, we know that. We, 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 we know that, you know, Joe Biden, he about talk, the woman, huh? Yeah, he, t he talked about three months. It's all about the woman. It's all That's about right. the woman. Uh -huh. It took so long. He, he talked yeah. about three months. Three months to decide. To, say, to decide. He said, it's I got a pool of 10. I got a mm. pool of 10 candidates. Yeah. It's hard yeah. for me and my team to narrow this down. So yeah. I got to <laughs> sit down with Barack. I got to sit down with Michelle. We're going to come together around the table and He yes. wanted Michelle. He yeah, wanted yeah, well, Michelle. Yeah, he wanted Michelle. Michelle said, no, no. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, uh, give, me, give, me, give me a few years. <laughs> still trying to recover. She's still trying to recover from 2007 and 2008 when she actually was doing more campaigning than Barack. And they, they, they got at her, man, those ads. They were brutal to yes. Michelle. So, you well, know. you know, it's a, uh, that's what I say. I say. You know the Republican have a way to say they say, look, politics is a dirty game. Mm -hmm. It is a dirty game, yeah. And they, if they you're not ready to get dirty, get oh yeah. away right, from right. it. Really yeah. Cause yeah. at the end of the day, they're gonna come at you with everything they got. They, they oh yeah. Did. And they did. Just yeah. for yeah. Just, you just, see, just see, for power, you know. You, just you for see power. it, you see it on, on like just for power. On, on both just sides power. so much of different type wow. of thing. Right. This article coming out about this article, this article coming this about, you know, different you know, types of things. You're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my goodness. And Yahweh knows what's true. And Yahweh yes. knows what's false. Yes. yes. Yahweh they don't knows what's yeah, exactly. what you appeal to the media. Exactly. And how you twist the story around. They'll twist yes. the story, they'll cut it, they'll edit it, they'll stop it. As I've seen many times, they'll propagate it. <laughs> yeah. They'll stop it before somebody says something here. I've right. seen it so many times. I'm like, right. whoa, yes. this is serious. Yes. And this is very it's being looked into very seriously. And yes. um, I think, you know, a lot of these um, news forums, they will be held accountable, you know, with uh, yes. what they've been showing. Because I mean I, I watch different news to get to get a, uh, I don't watch a lot of TV anyway. I watch the news and you know yeah. getting different perspectives. Mm -hmm. You know, like Denzel Washington said, he said, "You watch the news, you're misinformed. You watch the, you don't watch, you Ill -inform, uninformed." Right. Other thing, you know. So I mean, you, I watch. I don't watch one particular station. If I do watch it, I watch different stations, getting both perspective mm -hmm. on either side, parties and stuff like that. And it's um, it's it's amazing what you're seeing out there. You know, a lot of a lot of inaccuracies, yeah. some truths. 
right. and some blatant lies too. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you have to really do your own research, and that's the um, the challenge that people are facing. A lot of people would rather be spoon-fed mm -hmm. information rather than look into information themselves. Why are they pushing this agenda? Mm -hmm. Why are they not pushing this? Why are they telling me this? Why are this one saying this? You know, why are they supporting this over here? Why, you know, why are they supporting that over there? I mean, you got so much out there, but the problem is so many don't really have or make time to do their own research. Yes. And brother, that's why you and that, that is was heavy. Th that was a closing uh, uh, argument that you made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. The truth, truth, truth shall set you free. free. Absolutely. Amen. So awesome. You have a few people. Uh, Nicolette said, well done, Corey. Yes. Uh, uh, Yahweh be praised. Shaka Yahweh be praised. Said, Amen. Yes, 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 yes. You did it, brother. Cheryl said, awesome, Corey. Yahweh be praised. We Crystal said, thank great you. job. So we thank you we guys. We thank Yahweh. Thanks, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. thanks for the support. Now, so let's talk about the vice president. Who is the vice president? Well, we just talked about Congress, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, what is the vice president's job anyway? Nobody really knows what the vice That's president it, does. Yeah. The vice president is actually in charge of Congress. That's right. So yeah. the vice president is actually president mm -hmm. of Congress. Of Congress. Mm -hmm. And he has, he has he to vote with Congress. He yeah. votes yeah. only when there's a tie. There is a tie mm -hmm. to break it. So uh -huh. they have, they have uh, major yeah. decisions to make yeah. on behalf of the office of the president. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the president cannot vote. No. Because they send the bills and the laws to the right. president. But the vice president, if Congress is 50-50, yeah. they come yeah. in right. and they <laughs> have the deciding in. vote <laughs> to decide what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the power of the office of the vice president. Now, they cannot address Congress officially unless invited by the senators. The senators yeah. say, vice president, we want you to come in and address us. So you will see when the Senate floor is really heated, oh, the yeah. vice president is sitting down because he, he or she... They're like, hey, listen, I might have to jump into this, so let me get ready, yeah. you know, for 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 what's going on. And of course, we know that if the president is incapacitated, he can no longer fulfill, or she can no longer fulfill the role, then the vice go. president is the one who steps in. That's yeah, right. like J um, yeah. Lyndon B. Johnson, right. in the case right. of JFK. Oh yeah. 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 Now, speaking of Congress, Congress oh. also has a position called the President Pro Tempore. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard about the president pro tempore, but after this, you're going to want to do your research to find out exactly yeah. what the, pro, the president pro tempore pro is. Of course, that is Latin. Right. So we're talking about temporary president. So in history, there have only been 91 pro tempores. Now, mm -hmm. that's important because we've had 46 or 45 presidents, mm -hmm. that's right. Right? Right, right? But the pro tempore, they've had 91, which means mm -hmm. they are twice as many, as many because they get elected every two years, whereas mm -hmm. the president you elect the president every four, four years. years yeah. So mm -hmm. who is this person? They are actually, they are, so you have the president, and then the president cannot fulfill the line of succession, then the vice president, and if the vice president cannot fulfill the position, then the speaker, speaker of, of the, the house, house right, steps right. in, and they fulfill mm -hmm. the office of the president. Mm -hmm. And next in line is the president pro tempore. Right. Yeah. So if you have the three heads of, of the state incapacitated, they can no longer function in the office, then pro tempore is fourth. So you got to know who the pro tempore is. Oh, that's Let true. us know. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now. His name that's is Charles true. Grassley. Okay. He's a Republican from Iowa. He's 87 years old. Wow. So this guy, wow. this guy, he's from the Silent Gen. Uh, wow. uh, and what they do, what this position is all about, they, they started it back in the 1700s as well. The position is usually relegated to the eldest serving member of the party oh. who is in control of the Senate. So okay. they look for the oldest cat, and they say, listen, you're going to yeah. be the one who... All the responsibility falls on. They get nice cushion positions you never, too. Because you're never gonna get it. You're right, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Never get it so this is as close as you come. Yeah, yeah that's as close as you get to be a president. Up. Right. Yeah. That's like an honorary position. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. this guy, he was head of the Senate Finance Committee. He was the chairman mm. for that three times. Mm. So you talk about somebody who investigates the money in the country. Oh, yes. Is this guy? Yes. Okay, yeah. Charles Grassley. Mm. Uh, in his voting. He voted in 1983, in October of 1983, he voted oh. against Martin Luther King's birthday becoming a national holiday. Mm. He said because, you know, that, that's kind of a waste of taxpayers' <laughs> dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually go to work on that day. That's not uh, a real holiday. So he voted against it, and then they asked him recently, why did he vote against it? And he said, well, at the time, you know, I, I thought it was more about you know, money. losing money. You know, it wasn't a personal thing. <laughs> uh, but then in, in uh, February 99, sorry, in... Uh, 2004, he actually voted for them to award 
uh, Dr. King posthumously with an award. Mm. So, so he's trying to correct, as most politicians do, correct, yes, yes, their, correct. Yeah. Their, 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 their uh, ill-advised policies. Mm. Uh, this guy is cutthroat too, because in '98, Clinton personally thanked Grassley. He said, "Without Grassley, we could not push this forward." Uh, and he was talking about the IRS Restructuring Act. Cause, you know, the IRS, they were just out of control in the 90s. Right. Mm -hmm. Digging oh, yeah. in everybody's pockets. That's so it. Clinton oh, yeah. said, we have to reform the IRS. And he what, went to... What, what did the era rooster say? Retroactive. Retroactive. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Everything's yeah. retroactive. He said, you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Retroactive. Yeah. Uh, and Air, just just no, so you know, dirty. right, that's dirty. That just so you know, right. Aaron yeah, Russo, he was talking yeah. about this particular thing where they got some finances. Mm, uh, they were able to use a tax loophole. Right. And for 10 years, they were able to profit and not pay the taxes mm -hmm. uh, based on the law. On the law. And then the IRS looked at that 10 years later and they said, no, 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 this law is a mistake. We have to, we have to fix this. But Whoa. they made the payments retroactive. That's it. So all of Whoa. the loopholes that he experienced over that 10 years, he had to go back and pay it. Pay. He said, mm. I said, okay, said, we're going we're to stop it now. Said, you're going to stop to Which pay. Which is the way it's supposed to be. Right. Pay it now because yeah. forget the past. But right. I said, no, we're going to stop it now. You're going to pay the right amount, but then we're going to make it retroactive. <laughs> exactly. Mm. <laughs> so Clinton thanked Whoa. him personally. You know, in a public speech, he said, Grassley yeah. was one of those guys yeah. who really allowed us to push this through. Yeah. A couple of months later, Grassley was one mm. of the senators that actually wanted Clinton to be impeached and fired. For, Mon <laughs> for Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> for Monica Lewinsky. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. So, so these guys, these guys are deep now. Yeah, oh, cut yeah, yeah. So yeah. now, in 2016, after Justice Scalia died, this is February of 2016. Yeah. The Congress is Republican. That's right. So the Republicans are in charge in the Congress. Barack Obama, as you know, he's a Democrat. That's mm. it. So he's looking now to appoint a justice. Mm. He said this is February of 2016. The presidential election is n in November of 2016. We need to appoint a justice now. Now. Grassley yeah. said, not a day like it. He mm. said, we have to wait until the people decide who the president is going to be before you appoint. Whoa. So, the, uh, so the, they didn't do it this so, time. No, so the seat Whoa. sat empty so is until Trump came in. Grassley, he's the, he's the mm. president what? pro tempore now. Yeah. And yeah. that was February. That was February of 2016. And mm -hmm. they just appointed a new. Whoa. No, so they, they appointed Supreme Brett Court. Kavanaugh, I believe, in 2017. Kavanaugh. But, uh -huh. but yeah. now, in, 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 in October. Yeah. Of 2020, an election year. Election year. Election year. Election year. Same thing. Trump, same thing. Same thing. Same thing. One month before the election. One, one month. One month. Mm. This was February. February. One month before that mean, the election. That means yeah. mean they had at least eight or eight, eight, uh, yeah. eight, 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 yeah. eight, eight months. That's eight right. months. Well, yeah. He is cut he, he, he said, I support President Trump. We need to fill the seat now. Mm. This is the same guy. Same, same guy. guy. Same guy. Wow. Same guy. So, so you know, the, these guys, like and, 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 <laughs> <laughs> November, yeah, I, I got to throw Mike in there. Hey, Mike, what's up, yeah. brother? I got to I gotta throw Mike in there. So, Mike has said that is hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. now, this guy, Grassley, you got to watch this guy, Joe. Yes, Grassley. November uh, 5th, 2007, mm -hmm. he initiated the probe into the tax-exempt statuses of mega church ministries led by Creflo Dollar, mm. Benny Hinn, Paula White, Eddie Long, Joyce Myers, and Kenneth Copeland. He said mm. the governor of the United States needs to know how these guys are spending their money, and he sent letters to them. So, so mm. that whole probe so is an issue. That whole program that was him because oh, wow. yeah. I mean they were after them. They were after so them. This guy was a, was was yeah, an it was initiator. Yeah. 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 This is your president pro tempore. Wow. <laughs> wow. Right? So, mm. so wow. he's doing a lot of things. Yeah, this guy wicked. He, in politics right now, they Man. call it going Grassley. So he is a pre he was the the representative for Iowa from the 1980s. Iowa has yeah. 99 districts. Every single year, this guy goes and he has in person meetings, town halls mm. in every district in wow. Iowa. So you you know mm. when the when the campaign ki trail kicks off, mm. they have what you call yeah. the Iowan caucus, right? Right, the Iowa caucus. Th that, yeah. That's the first one. That's the first so one. they use it as a prophetic test to see how the Democrat yeah. or Republican party is going to do mm -hmm. in the election for the next mm -hmm. two years and who's going to be president. So you in the Iowa caucus, they say you pretty much, you, yeah. you, you pretty much guaranteed to be president. So you, they use it as a litmus yeah. test. So this guy Grassley, he yeah. is controlling Iowa right now. So, so in 2020, mm. they went to the Iowa caucus, February. They said, okay, we need to figure out who is going to be in power. Is it going to be the Democrats or the Republicans? The, the caucus was, was a mess. 
Uh, they didn't declare any. I mean, it was so terrible. The guy who was running the the Democratic uh, chair for for Iowa, he retired. He, he said, "Forget wow. this. This is too crazy." <laughs> so they it's had no here. idea wow. what's going to happen in November wow. because they did not have the c- p- correct findings from Iowa, which we know is a sham because they know exactly yeah, what's going to happen. They, they, do. Do. they don't need anybody, no. dig, wow. dig, you know, digging into wow. their projections. Nothing. They, they know it. Right? Yeah, they, got, they know they, it. They got the ins. They, they got the ins. They got it. But 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 but. But that's yeah, what they so, have to do for the people. That's what they have yeah. to do for the people. And that's yeah. what the man had to, had, had to leave because once you come out with the truth now, yeah. right. the hidden agenda. Right. Yeah. Say, this is ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> so so now this election is critical. Why? Yeah. Because this election is setting precedence for how the Congress is going to turn up. That's right. Yeah. You have multiple elections going on. It's not just a presidential election. You have right, senators right. Yep. and you have mm. House of House. Representatives. Yes. Uh, mm. They are all in elections too. Mm-hmm. Right yes, now, yes. the Senate. Mm-hmm. Right now, the Senate is Republican. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Okay. The Republicans are in power everywhere. The They're, Senate they, is Republican. The Supreme the, the Court. Supreme Court is Republican. Are Republican. I mean, the the, mm. the the White House is Republican. Yes. Right. right now, they predict that if they can win just six seats then the House will flip to mm. Democrat if the Democrats can win six seats. So wow. you're going to have elections from now until January, and they'll determine who, who's mm. going to run Congress. Mm. Right. So they are Democrats are banking on Biden to get into the White House so that they can use that momentum to flip. To flip. Mm. And then Biden will walk in. He will have the White mm. House. He will have Congress, mm. and uh, they can get to work. Now, it's not mm. a, it's not a, it's not a full-blown flip where you have you know 70 percent of of, no. of congress but it's enough yeah. they'll have it's the enough. majority representative yeah. and, and enough that's enough with it. right and that's enough and yeah. that's enough to get the job done right now when of course if the democrats come into power in in november they're not uh legally authorized to 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 take the white house until no. january, january. january of 2021 yep. yeah. mm-hmm. january is also when they're going to Appoint the new president pro tempore. So who is it going to be? I know you want to know. Who is the president pro tempore going to be? Not Uh, anymore. No, no, no. It's not going to be him because if they flip. You said said the oldest. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be the oldest. So right now the oldest is. What are you going to say? No, I say, I say, and and he has. uh, Does it matter uh, which which party belongs to? Yes. Yes. So yeah, the so party's in so power, they, they can appoint power, the president okay. pro tempore. Well, that means we need to find the oldest one in Democrat. They're going to find the oldest. And it's Patrick Lehay. How old is he? I am not sure how old he is, but he's very interesting. Because probably a boomer. He, he's no, no, no. He's old. He's old. He's, he's old? He, yeah. He, he's uh, a yeah. silent? silent generation too. Yeah. Okay. He's he's up there. This guy though, Corey. Yeah. He was actually in the Batman films. Oh. Even the ones Is in the Batman. Right? Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, Patrick. Yeah, no. Patrick Lee. He was oh, in the wow, films yeah. uh, with, wow. with with he's Heath Ledger. Oh. Okay. Uh, he was the guy. Oh, oh. Right. He was the guy. Heath Ledger. I think he, he was squeezing his face and he had his oh, face on the camera. Uh, if you Google Batman, it, Patrick, uh, L-E-A-H-Y, the Dark Knight. Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay, okay, he, yeah, he was okay, actually yeah. in it. Gotcha. Uh, now, <laughs> he is from Vermont. Mm-hmm. He is from Vermont. So the pr- the president pro tempore is, they, is likely a shoe in for you to control the finances of, of the country. Now, he is from Vermont. Bernie Sanders is from Vermont. Oh. So when those two get together, <laughs> the socialist agenda that they say Bernie Sanders is going to run. <laughs> they, you know, Trump is saying. 80. Yeah? 80. And Micah makes a good point. Yes. What did Micah say? He said, plus it's a census year, so you can have more representatives. Yes. It's, yes. Wow. You know, more representatives. Wow. Yes, and that's true, Micah, because now the Senate is going to grow. So yes. we're probably looking right. at maybe 40. Four four fifty because we had four thirty five mm-hmm. now so you know it may it, it, it may definitely grow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Crystal also said he's eighty. Thank you, Crystal. Crystal, yeah. she went and she did her research right that's away. It. Amen. That's what you call a scholar. Yeah. So oh, yeah, so true. so you're gonna have him and Bernie Sanders controlling the gold <laughs> pot of America. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, and, right. Uh, and, and the 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 the. They're, they're what you call the far left. They're the extremists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> far left. Right, the, far, the socialists, right? They're going to be running the pot. And and Trump was saying in the in the debates that Biden's financial plan, his economic plan, isn't too far away from this far left <laughs> idea. And Biden came on. He actually said that by 2035, he wants to actually shut down the, the oil industry and actually wants to migrate to mm. solar energy, which Cleaner, was part yes. of uh-huh. AOC's agenda. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So we're talking about some very interesting Whoa. things. But... Who is the eldest female Democrat? Hmm. 
in uh, the statesman right now. Her name is Diane Feinstein. So oh, she's yeah. a, uh, she actually spells her name like Apostle Diane, two N's. She's from California. She's mm-hmm. also 87. California people. Yeah, so California is coming for the White House. You've they got are. Nancy Pelosi, mm-hmm. who's yes. the Speaker of the House yes. right now. Mm-hmm. And you've got Kamala Harris, who's on the ticket for VP. She's from California. And mm-hmm. you've got Diane Feinstein. And, you know, she is one of those legends in Congress right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. She's been a senator since 1992. She was the mm-hmm. first female mayor of San Francisco. Yeah. This was back in 1978, brother. So she was breaking yeah. barriers, you know, way wow. back then. But of course, you know, uh, California is a leftist country anyway. So they, far that's left. Far left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Far yeah. left. Yeah, so yeah, you'd expect these God. things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was also the first woman to be president of the Board of Supervisors in Fran- San Francisco. She is the first female senator in California. So she's yeah. making waves, brother, way back then. She's the first female member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. She is the first woman to chair the Senate Rules and Administration Committee. And she's the first woman to chair the Senate Intelligence Committee. Wow. She is also the first woman to serve as member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. So this woman is a powerful woman in Congress right now. And she could very well be on the short list to be president pro tempore if they want to do something new in 2021 which mm-hmm. I believe they do want to do something new in 2021. So you want to look out for, yeah. for Patrick oh, yeah. Lee. <clears throat> you want to look out for Diane Feinstein. Uh, in California, she's not getting a good rap right now because California says she is a Democrat who's too far right. <laughs> 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 I told you. I told you that, oh, you know, your polarization. Right. They said she's right, a Democrat. Right, she's right. on the left <laughs> side. <laughs> but she's on the far yeah, right yeah, of the yeah, left yeah. side. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> she's as close as you can come to being a Demo-Republican. <laughs> which is a part Democrat, part yeah. Republican. Oh, God. So, wow. so yeah. So you, you. This is the things that you want to look for if oh. the oh, Democrats is, is, take is, the is, house. Is that what we learned during uh, the Obama uh, 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 presidential, uh, the blue, the blue dog Democrats? Yes, blue <laughs> dog Democrat, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and Obama had a tough time too because while he was president, Congress that's, flipped on him. That's right. Because mm. remember, <laughs> he was trying to pass the the, uh, the health care. Oh, yes. yes. But that, I mean, they are the majority. They could have passed this thing with with flying cars. Right. Mm. But they drag it, drag they it, did. drag it. They became frustration. Yes. Obama later had to come to the to the to, the, to TV and say, "But why are we dragging this issue? Pass it. Mm-hmm. Let's go on. Wow. You don't need to talk to anybody. Let's go." It's true. But then mm-hmm. that's why some of us we had no clue about politics. Got to find yeah. about blue dog oh, yeah. Democrat. I asked myself, yeah. "What's a blue dog Democrat?" Right. Yeah. yeah. Find out that uh, yeah. I guess uh, they're on the left, but they're on a close. They're close to the right. Or they're <laughs> <far> right. <laughs> blue dog Democrat. I call them uh, yeah. uh, uh, Demo uh, Republican. Demo yeah. Republican. Yes. Demo Republican. <laughs> yeah. That's what we call like, them. You know? <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Now, mm. here's the thing about Congress and the Iroquois. We still haven't talked about the Iroquois yet, but we will. We, we will. We're going to wrap up with the Iroquois. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're going to wrap up with the Iroquois. We're coming. Hold on tight. Oh, yeah. We're getting yeah. here. So, yeah. so I'm going to save that bit. I'm going to do it after, after at the end of my wrap up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump right into our next section. So we are going to be talking about political powers can't even see my own titles. <laughs> Political <laughs> power <laughs> trips and cycles. Uh, let me just give you a quick preamble of this section. So we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We know that That's we right. wrestle about, uh, against you know, powers and principalities in high places. Well, political powers, they sit in high places. They understand the spiritual realm more than we could ever understand. Uh, so let's talk about the US for a second before we really jump into this. The United States is the strongest political power on the earth right now. Yes. United States, uh, you know, and, and I, 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 I do not apologize for saying it because history supports yeah, the history fact. Yeah, history supports that. That's true. Yeah. It's a fact. It, it's, 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 living. Yeah, it's the most powerful. Yeah. In China and in Russia. Absolutely. It has retained its position as being the world's largest economy since 1871. That's right. Mm-hmm. In 2020, they expect the GDP of the United States to reach 22 Point three two trillion dollars. Wow. Wow. Now, of course, we know that oh China, my. their economy is twenty-seven trillion. So that's <laughs> more from a economic standpoint. But economists spread your economic power over your population. Yeah. So for per capita gains, China is actually seventh mm. in the economy because they have so many people. So they have $27 trillion, but they have a lot of people 
who who which now causes the finances of the Chinese economy to have to be diluted to spread across that many people. Mm-hmm. Now, the U.S. has the highest concentration of billionaires. There are 705 billionaires in the United States. Yes. The next one is China, 285. I believe that mm-hmm. Yahweh wants one of these deep scholars to be a billionaire. That's right. In this decade. That's right. That's right. I That's believe right. that he also wants we'll one of you virtual scholars to be a That's billionaire. Right. We'll That's right. That. I mean, listen, it, it's yeah. 705 of them. They could welcome one of us to the yes. club, right? That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. You welcome one, you welcome all. Right, That's yeah. Right. We'll so, yeah, people. so that's the kingdom, right? You have 705 here. Yeah. China is the next, which has 285, mm-hmm. and then Germany mm-hmm. has 146. The U.S. has the largest defense budget. Joe talked about that. Right now, it's $720 billion. Mm-hmm. That's almost three times as much as the very next country. <laughs> that's right. The U.S. spends $3.8 trillion on health care. So Joe talked about Obama trying to pass the Affordable Health Care Act. The U.S. spends $3.8 trillion. So you think about it, they're, they're, they're projected to make $22 trillion, yeah. but they're spending about $4 trillion on health care. So you're talking about like 20%. That's almost right. 20% yeah. of, of your budget goes to white health care. That being said, the U.S. has the lowest life expectancy uh, of all the developed nations. So you're spending that much money on health care. You're spending the most of the a- most every country. But your people, they, they're not expected to live as long they're as people from other countries. They're, they're still yeah. dying. Oh, yeah. They're still dying. Yeah. yeah. This is terrible. The U.S. has the highest rate of obesity. Mm. Eat too much. Eat too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your life is too good, they I guess. They love food, you know? Yeah, love oh, yeah. food. What? Not a buffet, you know? But they <laughs> also <laughs> But it's a type of food. It's a type of food. That's true. Yeah, because yeah, oh, yeah. people love food, food but yeah. it's a type of food you eat. Oh, yeah. They're producing yeah, a lot of uh, food the, that... The mass, mass production. Yeah. They put mass a lot production. of things in Kill the people. Here. Yeah. Right. And the people don't care. No. Yeah. They don't care. They don't mass production. They want everything quick. You got all you can eat. Mm-hmm. And that food ain't got nothing about garbage in it, but the money just eat, eat, mm-hmm. eat, yes. eat, 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 And what eat, they put eat, in eat. food is a lot different here than they do in other countries, yes. too. Yes. A lot yes. of processing yeah, goes processing into food. My things. goodness. Yeah, so that's, um, that's a whole other deal there, too, because right. you know, it's, it's a lot goes into that because it's ingredients. Right. Per population, the U.S. Yeah. also has the least amount of doctors. Yeah. Ah, that's true. So you spend all the money in healthcare, but yeah. y- you're limited in the, the doctor supply, the physician supply. Mm. U.S. is in the top ten list of countries leaving vacation days on the table. So mm-hmm. if you give a U.S. citizen 14 vacation days, they're only taking 10. That's right. Yeah. Goes bills, 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 bills. Where, whereas, bills. whereas Brazil and France, yeah, they take them. They oh, average they, 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 their vacation days uh, after you've been working for two years. For two years, mm-hmm. they start you with 30 vacation days yes. Yes. plus 11. European, holidays Europe, paid. European wow. on the whole, yes. and they have long oh, yeah. lunch hours. Oh, yeah. That's Brazil and France. Yeah, two money. hours. Oh yeah, I like I like their system way better. I love that system. Yeah. Forty-one days, I can mm-hmm. use that. Yeah, but they're on a different system. This is a capitalist society. Yeah, mm-hmm. capitalist. That, you know, if you gotta make it, yeah. you gotta work hard and make your money. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Down there, they, they work to relax. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. They only got two shifts. We got three shifts down here. Three yeah. shifts. My yeah. goodness. Wow. All day long. All day. As soon as yeah. you come in, somebody's going in. Mm-hmm. Right. So let's talk about the the political cycle. Yes. Now, Solomon also said that there is nothing new under the sun. He said, but it, what has been before, it will be it again. Will be. We need to find out when the cycle begins and when it ends so that we can actually chart a particular mm-hmm. course for what Solomon is talking about. Yeah. Now, on the graphics, we're going to walk through the cycle right now because there's a particular calendar that I want to introduce you to. Mm-hmm. Some of you may have seen this before on our Deep Call Facebook page. This post was made... November of 2019. Yeah. That's right. We made a post on the Deep yeah. Facebook page. It's not the Deep Ecclesia, but the Deep Call. Mm, it's our Facebook right. page that has all of our studies on it. And in this Facebook post, November of 2019, I will remember it like it was yesterday. Yahweh said, I want to show you something. We were actually watching a film. Yes. We were watching, it was Frozen Part 2. Hmm. And in okay. the movie, after the great... Uh, climax of the film, the yeah, guy yeah. looked around and he said, this has been 35 years in the making. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. In the movie. Wow. So I said, you know what? That's important. I said, we need to go back. We watched the movie on the day it came out. So I said, we need to go back and see what they're talking about in this film. Because this is Disney, one of the largest corporations in the world that also owns broadcasting media. That's mm-hmm. right. So I said, mm-hmm. we need to find out oh, what it is good. that happened. 35 years ago, because mm-hmm. the fog is now lifting. Yeah. Yeah. So we went back 
And as we went back, we realized that the calendar of 2020, this is now 2019, we're right. we coming into this information. Yeah. The calendar of 2020 is identical to the calendar of 1992. Wow. The year, the days line up exactly as 92. they do in 2020. So you can take wow. a calendar from 1992, put it on your desk, and you can match the same days, yes. day for day, day for and it'll day. be the same calendar. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So I said, that's yeah, amazing because if you look at a calendar and you yeah. saw what you did in 1992, yeah. you'd be like, wow, on Thursday, you know, uh, October 12th, this is what I did in 1992. Let me go and redo that now in 2020 and see what the difference is. You know, if you were in a certain place, let me go back there, you know, 28 years yeah. later yeah. and see what it's about. Yeah. So then we went back to the calendar and we said, okay, well, in the year 1964, it was just like 1992 and 2020. Then we went back to 1936, and we said, okay, these days on the calendar line up the same way. And so we said, yeah. okay, well, then what were elections like hmm. in 1992? That, that was Alos Paraclitos. Yeah. Le leading. Yeah. leading. That's only right. Could yeah. do it. Right, because only you could do it. Yes, wow. yes. That, that's deep. Yeah. 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 You said, what were elections like? In 1964, yes. what were elections like in 1936? Because if we can see mm -hmm. on the calendar what these elections were like, we're like, then we'll have an understanding of what election 2020 Indeed. would be. Because the calendar is repeating itself. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So let's start in 1936. So in 1936, who is in power? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Mm. In 1932, FDR. FDR. <laughs> FDR. FDR. In fact, after Delano Roosevelt, this is when the U.S. decided we can only have two terms. Uh, two terms. Yes. Is that because because Delano FDR? He did three he's terms. been in, he, he's well, been in power. He, he ran. He, he, he won four <laughs> terms <laughs> in a row. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. So they said, you know Man. what? We can't. We yeah, can't have this. Like, this is too biased. So you working too much. But too <laughs> but but here's here's what happened in 1936. Thank you, Quentin. We appreciate that comment. Quentin oh, yeah. said he loves. Uh, we have the political leaders lined up on the screen. Yes, we're telling a story on the calendar yeah. to kind of help the viewers understand exactly what Yahweh has been saying. Mm -hmm. So in 1936, you had FDR. He defeated President Hoover, but this was actually in 1932. So he defeats Hoover in 1932. And who is Hoover? Hoover. Well, FDR, he is a politician. He's a Democrat. Yes. Hoover is a Republican. He's also a businessman. He's mm. also a single-term president. Mm. So you yeah. have these two, poli two politicians coming up against each other. One is a career politician. Mm. He's been in the business, been in Congress, been in the House of Representatives. And yeah. then that's FDR, Democrat. Then you have the Republican, Hoover. Right. He is a businessman. He's from the business world, and he's a Republican. Right. He only lasts for one, one term, term, and then Roosevelt, FDR, Knock him out. knocks him out. Right. Now come 1936, another wealthy Republican businessman challenges FDR. Mm. His name is Landon. So Landon goes up against FDR, and no matter how much money he throws at the campaign, he loses. So that's what the election landscape was like in 1936. You had a career politician mm. versus a wealthy businessman. The Democratic career politician won in 1936. Now, move to 1964. What's going on? 1963, terrible year for America. Mm. November 22nd, 1963 is when John F. Kennedy, yes. the Democratic president, yes. he was actually assassinated. He, is actually, he was actually the first Catholic president. Was it Joe? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Practicing o Catholic. Officially. Practicing Catholic. Yeah. So... So he, he was assassinated, and LBJ, Lyndon Johnson, he ascended to the presidency as vice president. As vice yeah. president. So he moved right. in. Now, this is 1963, 1964, election year. 1964 comes around, and a lot of people are thinking that LBJ doesn't have the stuff. Mm. So, you know, he, he only got it because of Kennedy's yes. assassination. Yeah. yeah. So it's a succession thing. He's not going to run. The guy won by a landslide. They said they did not see an election <laughs> that vast wow. with the winning yeah. since 1820. Mm. Wow. wow. Yeah. He Thank went by a landslide. And so who was he challenged by? Big names, brother. 
challenged by Goldwater. Goldwater. He's a Republican. Goldwater. Wow. Yeah. Big money. Yeah, Goldwater. Yeah. Goldwater. Yeah. Not only Goldwater, yeah. he was also running up against Rockefeller. Oh, no. So he's brother, up brother. Uh, yeah, uh, at 64, brother. <laughs> this guy is bro. up against some big bro. money. Rockefeller. Yeah, mm. so, so you're up against Coach Rockefeller. They're, they're running the bank yeah. and they want to run right. the politics. Exactly. Yeah. The world is going under. Right. Mm. Now, here's what happened. Two weeks before the election, guess who died? Mm. Tying these two years together. Oh, Hoover. Oh, yeah. So President Hoover, the same one that, that lost to Roosevelt in 1932, he dies two weeks before Lyndon Johnson's election in 1964. Mm. So you see well, these two elections yeah. tied together through that. Two weeks later, LBJ wins the nomination for the Democratic Party. So this guy, he challenges not one, but two extremely wealthy, wealthy yes. Republican, mm. Republican nominees. Tycoons. Mm -hmm. Tycoons. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, what happens in 1992? You've got... Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Young Bill Clinton. Mm. Young Bill. Uh, He's so coming up from Arkansas. Uh, uh, call him the Irish. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Irish. Because uh, his parents yes. from Irish. Yeah, well, they, he, didn't, they didn't like him at all. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. He was the first. He was the first black president of America. That's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say. I don't know that's about what, that one. That's what they say. <laughs> his policy uh, was not listen, black at all. I tell you, but he sure <laughs> no, he sure yeah. wore those glasses yeah, and played that saxophone. The man loved the blues, man. He sure wore those glasses and played that saxophone. His politics were not were not black, so I don't know where they get it from. Matter of fact. He's yeah. the one that came out with the two strike out. Yes, oh, he did. Yeah. He got two strike by the third one. Yes, lock yeah. him throw away the key. He did. Then mm -hmm. he came against uh, uh, this thing here for some of the the, 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 the Caribbean brothers that come up here and sell weed and stuff like mm. that. Oh yeah, He yeah. said, look, if you catch them, uh, 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 them brother from Jamaica from the Caribbean selling weed, he said, take the green card and send them back a yard. Yes, mm -hmm. he came up with all this he here. Did. So how they he call did. him the black president? Yeah, because yeah. he played the saxophone. It was a saxophone. Which is true. Dangerous, but right, that's how they do it, right, Corey? The blue. They put something black on it. Everybody joins in. Yeah, they, they, they celebrate it. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's yeah, a he's right. a democratic he's a democratic yeah. presidential nominee. He's going up against George Bush Senior. Senior, oh, that's yeah. right. George Bush Senior oh, was a vice president yes. mm -hmm. who moved into president mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now he's going to attempt for second term. For second term. Mm -hmm. And he's a Republican. Mm -hmm. And then he also has to battle Ross Perot. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yes. yeah. And he's a that. he's a wealthy yes. independent. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Clinton is up against all odds. He's got a yes. career politician. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the the Bush family. They're no slouches. They they are very yeah. wealthy. Yes. So he's coming against a wealthy a wealthy president, and mm -hmm. Clinton takes mm -hmm. the takes the 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 nomination. That's right. Knocks yeah, him yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. just made a statement. Yes. Yes. Let's let's see what, what Burchard is saying. He said, 1964 is the year the parties changed philosophy. The black citizenship changed parties because of the Civil Rights Act. That's exactly right. The blacks mm -hmm. uh, predominantly were Republicans. That's right. After yeah. the Civil Rights Act, they jumped ship, as you said, BJ, and they moved the to the Democratic yeah. Party, mm -hmm. led by Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. The oh Reverend yeah. Jesse oh Jackson. Yeah, the, Reverend. <laughs> uh -huh. the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Oh, that old mm. Reverend. Who mm. had planned to make the White House black. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. yeah. He actually, he yeah, actually yeah. wanted to a run black for. House. That, that's yes. true. He's he going to make the run. White House a black house. Yes, he was. A, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, he ran for he president. Run. He, did. Yeah. he did run. He did run. But he said, if I win the White House, <laughs> I'm going to turn the White House into a black house. Yes. And everybody dropped. No. Who's that? Oh, yeah. No, Jesse Jackson. That was just too much. That was too much. That was too much. He's like, let me make this happen. Right. So. like, I know you're going to run we're going to make it a black house. Right. The trend has yeah. to say it. <laughs> so, so black far, house. if you're following the trend, <laughs> 1936, you've got a career Democrat going up against a wealthy wealthy Republican politician, businessman and politician. And then in 1964, mm. you've got a career Democrat going up against wealthy Republican yep. politicians. Yes. 1992, you've got a career Democrat going up against wealthy Republican, Republican. politicians. Mm. Yep. What's happening in 2020? All right. Yep. What's happening Here in 2020? Go. Take us home. In 1932, yes. we're going to jump back to 1932 for a second. Yes. Let's talk about the vice president. Yes, the vice president. The vice president in 1932 is the guy that you mentioned, Corey. Mm -hmm. I hope you remember who you mentioned. Vice president 1932. You mentioned Charles Curtis. Charles Curtis. This is Curtis right here on the end. Who is Charles Curtis? Curtis. Curtis. Charles Curtis, let me get my notes so that oh, yeah. I, I'm actually telling you. Curtis. He's a remarkable oh, yeah. figure in U.S. politics. 
He uh, is a member of the Kaw Nation. Through his mother, Curtis was oh, the yeah, first yeah. Native American and first person oh, of wow. documented non-European heritage mm. to serve mm. as the Vice President of the United States. So to date, he is the only Native American who, who has moved into the executive office of the United States oh, wow. government wow. Mm. back in 1932. 1932. Now, he was he the vice that. president yeah. to Hoover. Mm. Mm, that's right. Curtis, that's right. he was the vice president to Hoover. That's right. He's a mm. career politician, but this guy, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's something was going on with him. Mm. So as a young man, they took his property, his, his family, the Car Nation, they took their property, and they actually relocated them to Oklahoma. Mm. So now we're moving mm. close to Tulsa. Tulsa, right, right. <laughs> right. They relocated yes. them to Oklahoma. When this guy gets into power, the first thing he does is he introduces the Curtis Act, which expanded the Dawes Act to the five citizen civilized tribes of Indian Territory. What is the Curtis Act? The Curtis Act gave the U.S. government power to go in and seize Indian Territory. Wow. So you had an oh, Indian. Yeah. So he was doing their bidding. Whoa. He was a Native American. So he was like an Uncle Tom. Yes. For the Native Whoa. American. He actually oh, wow. said. Remember, we talk about the Boule Society. <laughs> the Boule, yes, yes. yes. So, so I don't, so I don't, I, I don't yeah. know about, I don't know about this, this Indian, but they're all the same thing. Yes. We're talking about the gatekeepers. That's true. So wow. what happens is that you have these people here. Colors. There is no, color doesn't yeah. matter. Right. We're talking wow. about even this segregation. Yeah. You are a, a prominent black man yes. who were elevated yes. into, into, into the Freemason in, in, yes. in, in this high society. Mm -hmm. yes. Where everybody else were cool and go for, say, for white only. Right. But they yeah. were with the whites. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these things, we talk about evil. Evil has yeah. no color. No color. So here yeah. is the man that's supposed to be for his people, yeah. but yet mm -hmm. he's making a policy against his people. Against wow, people. sold out. Because he said, this is not so loud. No, yeah. Man. It's evil. Yeah. yeah. But he said, Man. this is what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I came out all right. Yeah. So he said, you have to appreciate what this new country is doing for That's you. That's right. Wow. You have to get rid of your old policies yes. and submit. Submit. Mm. So he said, you know, the Curtis Act, this, this is going to be foundational. Wow. But guess what? He was also president pro tempore. <laughs> pro tempore. My. <laughs> well, well, yeah, while he was in Congress. Wow. Yeah, so, is. so yeah. So this, wow. this, it, everything just comes back to one. one. So in 1932, you had a Native American. And what is Native? We learned from Corey. Mm. Corey said that the Indians yeah, the actually Indians. came across the Bering Land Bridge. Right. Right. Yes. And they, they populated right. America. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. They started the Iroquois tribe. That's it. He, and Curtis. They're, and they're East Indian. They're mm. East Indian. He is from the Iroquois. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, here's what people don't know about the Constitution. 1988, in 1988, the U.S. Senate paid tribute with a resolution that said, the confederation of the original 13 colonies into one republic was influenced by the political system developed by the Iroquois Confederacy. That's, That's right. right. So they're telling you the constitution that you see right now in America, <laughs> it did not come really from Greece. It came from the Iroquois. Iroquois. Mm. Mm. So no. this is back, this is back, the yeah. Iroquois, they founded this legislation back in the 1500s. And the U.S., 250 years later, they said, you know what, when we build our constitution and design it, we're going to design it after the patterns of the Iroquois. Mm -hmm. So this here, you, you have to know what the Iroquois, what the Iroquois, what they believe. So here, here's where we are in 2020. You have a, a Democrat who was a vice president. Vice so he's president. a former vice president. That's right. So in, in, in 1964, you had LBJ, who was vice president turned president in that election. In 1992... You had George H.W. Bush, who was vice, vice president, 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 turned president. president. In 2020, you have Joe Biden, who was a vice president, turn. attempting to become president. He should repeat himself. You also have Kamala Harris, who is part Indian, Indian. wanting to be the vice president. East mm -hmm. Indian. So everything mm -hmm. is connecting mm -hmm. yep. for well. the Democratic Party. Right from the timeline that we see built on this calendar. Now, will it happen in that way? I will say, as Solomon says, time will tell. Time will That's tell. That's one thing. 
time, yeah. time does not hold secrets. That's no. right. Time, time lays time. everything no, open. Control. That's it. That's so true. this is where we are. So if you can study the calendar, you can sit back and predict. You, you don't need 10 prophets to prophesy to you who they think is going to win. That's right. You can sit back and you look at the calendar and you say, you know what Solomon says, cycles repeat. That's it. Then here's the, here's the thing, though, about 2020. <laughs> the next cycle from 2020, because the, these cycles happen, if you can calculate, every 28, 28 years. years. The mm. next cycle is going to be 2048. Hmm. Whoa. 2048. We'll not be here to see that cycle. So this one, this, this one, this one is the this one is the grand cycle. This is it. Yeah, they have to wrap it up, Whoa. and if they want to change things, Whoa. it has to be changed right Whoa. now in 2020. So uh, that's the information. I mean, take a snapshot of this, or you know, come back to the broadcast. You do your own research. Look for the content on our deep dive. Uh, sorry, the deep call, and we're gonna also share this now, Joe. In November of 2019, I shared this with the entire team. Yes. We were sitting down in this very room. We sat down, and I, I shared them. I said, listen, Yahweh showed us this information. We're going to post this on Facebook. At the time, we looked at, at, at the Democrats. In fact, he told me, he said, when you do the infographic, he said, put, put a female half on one side and put a male half on the other side and put them together behind the podium. And I said, why would I do that? Because we never talk about females as a vice president. That's and right. this whole thing is looking at vice president. And he, he said, uh, you need to listen better. That's what he said to me this year. But, but I said, no, I'm just going to put you know, a nice flag and the Democratic you know, symbol in the front, the logo in the front. So that's what we did in the infographic. But November 2019, Joe Biden was like fifth. In the race of That's potential a, candidates, if he was a loser, no, no, no. In December, oh. after after we posted it, oh. December he went to like eighth. That's right. And my brother Joe said, he said, "Boy, I don't know. This looks like Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> look, <laughs> look like yeah, look like Yahweh was kind of wrong on this one." He said, "Joe Biden went from went from fifth to eighth Man. after you post this information. He's, he's, he's on the losing side. He's on the losing side. He's like, brother, I don't know. Yahweh, Yahweh set you up on that one, but then." <laughs> In February, in February, the guy came from eighth to number one. To number one. By March, b now it doesn't happen. You, you don't dwindle, you don't dwindle the presidential mm. nomination until about August. That's right. July, August, when you have the Democratic convention. Well, between June and July, you have the Democratic convention, and they decide who's going to be the front runner for mm -hmm. the Democratic Party. They knew that Joe Biden was on the ticket by himself since March. This has never happened in history. That's yeah, right. Totally so they have, they have already decided yeah. that he was going to be the front man for this. That's it. Mm -hmm. So when that came around, then I said, well, Joe, now I can breathe a sigh of relief because yes. yeah, yeah, Yahweh yeah. showed forth. Yahweh, yeah, that was a confirmation. Yeah, that was a confirmation. True, true prophecy True, true Yahweh. prophecy. Oh, yes. So, yes, so, now, so now we await to see what Yahweh is going to allow. And, you know, whatever he allows, we are on Yahweh's side. So That's it doesn't Yahweh's matter, right. doesn't matter, matter if you're a Democrat yeah. or Republican. Yep. Yahweh's work will be done. Yes. Yeah, his work will be and done. he's the greatest. And, and it all greatest. ends with him. And it all ends with him. So, Absolutely. yes. So that's what I wanted to talk about, the political power trips and cycles. That's the cycle, guys. So study this cycle because... We're going to come back and talk some more. About, we're not done yet. We're not no, done yet. No, we're just yeah. getting warmed up. We're getting warm up. We're, we're just getting warm up. This, so do, this is warm up. Yeah, so do yeah. your research. <laughs> do your research on the cycles so that you can understand exactly what's happening. Absolutely. All right? Uh, we got some comments here. So Dr. Burchard, he says, prophets have already predicted that Trump will win. Well, praise Yahweh for those prophets. <laughs> We thank them for we, we thank them we thank them for their prophetic for their prophetic. Yeah, we Mike, Micah said I don't want to join those prophets at all. Yes, Micah said I saw ten prophets that said Trump is going to win. We'll praise Yahweh for those prophecies so, as well. I don't want to be among that school of prophets. Yes, I tell you. Uh, Shanika says time will tell, and that's, that's exactly what Solomon says. That's it. Time, 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 will, time tell. will tell. This is the wisest right. man. Yeah, it's, uh, yes. Yahweh is in control. Yeah, Yahweh is always in control. Always. Yeah, yeah. Yahweh time is will always tell. in control. Time will tell. So we give Yahweh yeah, yeah, praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now we're gonna turn it over to our brother Joe. He is gonna be talking about the political powers of brutality. Yes. Oh, so we talked uh, earlier. We were talking <laughs> about. We were talking about the wars and the rumors of wars and, yes. you know, all these nations uh, that have been fighting. And now Joe is going to be talking about the political powers of brutality, brother. Mm. So come, come on in. 
Uh, yes, and one more comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheryl Williams, my mother. Hey, mama, what's up? She says, yes, he is. He has the final say. Absolutely. And we agree. What did Ty Trippett say? Who has the final yes. say? Yes. Jehovah has, has the final say. say. So that's yeah. that. That's what we believe in. Yes, oh, my, my American flag is upside down. Is that a sign? <laughs> no. What are What are they doing, Corey? Uh, is that a sign? Is it right side up now? He's turning it hey. all around. Right no, yes, he's turning it all around. Up. I think, I think yeah. we, we, we have to blame Mother. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's the one that dressed us up. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true, right? Uh, yes. She, she, she pinned mine, too, and yeah. mine was upside down. Yeah, yeah, she I blamed me. Like, she pinned yours tell. upside down. I love Let, you, Mother. Yeah, I tell you, Mama G. Mama G, yes. She, she got it straight. Let me tell you. Let me tell you now. Right. We've got some beautiful oh people goodness. in the deep. Yes, you know, yes. Ma- Mama G said to us, she said, you guys have a big show coming up. She said, yes, uh, what, what can I do? What do you guys need? And I said, you know, it would be very nice if we can do some decorations in, yes. in the deep room. She said, no problem. She said, whatever you need. Just use my card. You know, you love yeah. when they say that, right? Just use my card. Yes. So Sarah and I were able to go out and get it's some nice, nice some right? nice things. Wow. So Mama G helped us decorate wow. this room and we wow. thank wow. we thank Yahweh for man. for that. You know, the heavy hitters in the awesome. deep. Yes. The, these awesome guys, moment. these guys, they pull yes. resources that's together right. That's right. to bring these broadcasts to you. Amen. That's the that's the point. So we thank all, you know, they make heavy contributions to make these things possible. But so remember, we that's, just that, that, that was the ecclesia. That was the ecclesia. That, that, that was the ecclesia with, uh, with the Apostle Peters. Mm-hmm. And we are the ecclesia. Yeah. So we are, we, are con- we are continuing the same work. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Yes. More yeah. coming. More coming. Yes. Yes. More coming. Yes. Yes, right. All right, yeah, my brother. Absolutely. Political powers of brutality. Oh, yes. Political my power of brutality. Yes. Well, <laughs> I thought that uh, after what Corey finished, uh, I was just going to kick back. Before you say, I got to say, uh, Crystal said that's a mama's love. And Crystal, uh, I yes. agree. Uh, 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 yes, I uh, agree, boy. It's good, it's good when you have a good mama. That's true. Yeah. That's true that's I have true. a good mama, too. My mama, oh, yeah. she raised me right. She yes. raised me right. Yes, boy. Right. Joe, there was one, yeah. when, one time I was on the fence trying to decide <laughs> which woman I was going to date. Oh. My mother said, how dare you? You don't do this in my house. Oh, yo! <laughs> oh, yo, how dare you? Uh, she said, how dare you? She said, you don't, you don't do this you. in my house. Uh, you, you better get your act that's, together. That's the baby uh, boomers now. Right, she uh. said, She said, and, and to prove, to prove my, <laughs> my devotion to your character, she said, I'm going to call this beautiful young lady and, and tell her what's going on. And mm. tell her that you got a decision to make. She said, I'm going to force her to make you make a decision. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. so we went to church, man, and the message was good. You know, Sarah's yeah. on the praise team. I'm on the keyboard. So I'm thinking now I'm in the clear because we had a good worship. So yeah. mom, forget about it. We got yeah. home for dinner, and she took Sarah in the room. <laughs> when they came out, like 10 minutes later, I said, Sarah, what did she say? She said, she told me everything. Uh, I said, what? Uh, I said, so well, <laughs> so what are you going to do? She said, the ball is in your court, young man. And wow. from, that, from that day forward, I said, well, you know what? If I'm going to operate on the side of truth, yes. I, I have no vindication on my side. It's yeah. only true. Amen. So, right. so she made an honest man out of me so I can make an honest right. man out of her. Amen. Yes, Amen. I, I, Amen. I, I, I thank you. I thank you for the hard lessons. Hey. Yes, that, yes. That, 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 that is powerful. Powerful, brother. Yes. I got yes. an ultimatum, too. Uh, hey. you, you got an ultimatum? Uh, yeah. Corey got an ultimatum, too. Yeah. Who gave me the ultimatum, Corey? Yeah. Nigga gave me the ultimatum. Ah! <laughs> 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 yes, she gave you all to beta. Oh boy! She's like, well, what? Been, we've been visiting. I've been visiting all this time. Yeah. So what, you, what you gonna do? Either you gonna make this official, or I have to go back on. <laughs> yeah. You know, going back my way. So yes. I like. Well, we can't let you go your separate ways. So we gotta make this thing happen right. Oh boy! <laughs> look at that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that right. No, no. Good women yeah. don't play games. No, no. Yeah. Man, listen, listen. <laughs> the, the women, the women yeah. are in control yeah. in 2020, boy. I tell you, boy. <laughs> it's, tell me about it's, it. a, it's a good year to be a woman. You know. Good year to be a woman. Good. Yeah, 2020. Yeah. God bless you, all you faithful women yes. who are abiding by the call. This is yeah, this, man. This, yeah, yeah. This a great year for you. I applaud you. I'm gonna yeah. be right next to y'all and ride the wave. Yeah. Whatever, whatever your blessings y'all get, you yeah. pass it on to your fellow yeah. brothers in and believers in yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, that's so true. Yeah. Uh, well, so I will go ahead and I'll begin. The warrior. Mm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. of course, uh. We know that uh, how this all happened. We know that uh, Christopher Columbus uh, didn't discover America was not empty. And we j- uh, our brother just went to the story <laughs> yes. about yep. the Iroquois. Mm. So as the United States began, of course, she found all these indigenous people. And she literally slaughtered every last one of them just for her own expansion. My goodness. And, 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 and that is exactly what it is. We talk about land grab. 
So when you talk about land grab, there is no mercy on it. Right. But let me first begin about some key points first. First of all, as the 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 the, the, the thirteen colony began to form, there you had some good, the bad, and the ugly. Because mm -hmm. for one, these guys were run away from uh, uh, oppression, and after they were run away from oppression from religious. We know who followed them. Mm. And if you never understand, you got to understand what happened also in, in Egypt. Because when the children of Israel left Egypt, you are some vagabond from Egypt to say, you know what? Uh -huh. I don't want to be under, because now we ain't got no more slaves. Right. Right. Pharaoh going to use the poor and the weak to work. I'm not working. That's right. Right. I'm so going to follow them. But they left with their religion and they were thrown to the flesh with Moses yes. as they were in the wilderness and to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you always have those things. But as they said, how this country became bloody? Well, the first thing I want to mention is their revolution war, because the revolution war is actually what set this country to a pace. But we, I cannot talk about uh, uh, the, uh, what actually caused the revolution war. There were quite a few things that the British put in places for the colonies, because the, as the 13 colonies formed, they were still tied to the crown, and they were still paying tribute to the British because they were only doing business with the British. Mm -hmm. But there were a few things that caused that revolution to happen. So what caused the revolution? I got quite a few things, so I'm going to run through this a little uh, uh, quick. The first thing, we have the British Navigation Act. What does it? The British Activation Act was passed by Parliament. Mm -hmm. To do what? Well, it says that uh, the ship that, the, the, the ship that bring goods in England uh, could only export uh, good uh, that comes uh, from America to England. So in another word, let me make it simple what the, what the, what that, what the act was. The act, act means that only... The, uh, the colonies could do business with the mother. In other words, the children could only do business with the mother. Right. Wow. So, of it's course, we, we know that that's a problem because the yeah. colonies want to do business also elsewhere. But right. with that alone, they see it as a threat mm -hmm. that only the children can do business with the mother. So that was one act that was put in. But that didn't cause that. So they moved a little bit further. The British also came out in uh, October 7, 1973. And then they also put uh, a closing to the Western Land Act. That was an act. Mm -hmm. Meaning there should be no expansion to the western. Well, at the time, the colonies were all the way on the east side. And you know, if you pay attention to the 13 colonies, they were always on the side of the Atlantic yes. coast. That's right. Right. Now we talk about the, the, uh, um, the Great Lake. Mm -hmm. If you are oh in yeah. Pennsylvania, right after you Pennsylvania, you look on the back side of Pennsylvania from the Atlantic coast. Right yeah. on the left, you will see that the Great Lake start to come in. You are the Ohio River. Now guess who pitched the tent out there? French. Mm -hmm. So the French pitched the tent out there, and they begin now to occupy the Great Lake. But while they were there, the British now passed this act that there should not be any expansion. But what happened in that? So that automatically caused a war between the French and the Indian called the French-Indian War, which I don't understand why they call it French-Indian War, because we French and British War, but they call it French and British, or uh, French and Indian War. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, on that act, we cannot understand this act until we fully understand what happened in that in the, in the war. Well, we know that war was uh, from 1754 to 1763. Mm -hmm. And that war took seven years. But if we pay attention to the key players, then we'll see exactly what is taking place. So France was on one side. Let's look at the allies of France. Yeah. France had some volunteers, military from Canada, who supported uh, 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 the army. But also they have uh, some American Indian indigenous people mm -hmm. uh, who also supported them? Who are those people? Well, we are also the Ot uh, Ottawa tribe who live along the Ottawa River in eastern mm -hmm. Ontario. Mm -hmm. They were part of it, or part of Western Quebec. So they supported the, the French also. And we also see that uh, by uh, while the war was still going mm -hmm. on, by 1740, we also see there was another tribe called the Ojaba tribe who were, doing, who were trading with the French, uh, but they also joined the French uh, during that revolution. Mm -hmm. The yeah. French also allied themselves uh, with the Huron tribe. And mm -hmm. those were doing trading with the French, with the French since uh, uh, 1614. But watch what the, uh, the Huron tribe, why did they join the French? Mm -hmm. Well, they were rivalry to the Iroquois. Oh. <laughs> why? <laughs> because we talk, we, talk, we talk about, uh, the, we talk about uh, the, the Ohio River. Well, according to the Huron tribe, they say that the Iroquois forced them to leave their land from Lake Huron to right. Canada. So they moved right. to Canada. Right. So when the war began, they say, well, we're going to join the French anyway. So they joined the French alongside. So we are the Wabaki, uh, Wabanki Confederacy. That consists of four tribes. The uh, Penobscot, 
the Passamakori, the Mali Seta, and the Mi'kmaq tribe. Mm -hmm. They live on the main and the Canadian tribe, okay. uh, uh, side of the town. So they joined uh -huh. the French. But one thing also was powerful. The Wabaki Confederacy, they were neutral as the war began. Mm -hmm. But guess who is a rival again? The Iroquois was a, was, was, wow. was a rivalry. Yeah. So as the Iroquois was, as the Iroquois was, 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 was a rivalry, but this is what happened. They joined the, 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 the French because the Iroquois sided with the British. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, if you join, we're going to join the French on the other side. <laughs> so I'm still on the, on, on the side of the French. But I'm mentioning these people because you understand why they joined this, this, this war. Right. And uh, <laughs> so they continue to ally themselves with friends because the Iroquois. Why I keep mentioning these uh, Iroquois? So if you pay attention, almost you got about four different tribes that I got a problem with the Iroquois. Yeah. Yeah. That's to tell you that the Iroquois were not just a regular no. Uh, uh, no. Uh, tribe. Oh, yeah. No. Matter of fact, they were called Confederacy. Yes. So yeah. that means they were so powerful that they actually were occupying this land but also established peace in that area. Mm -hmm. The next one that we had that joined also the French was the Shawnee tribe. They live on Ohio River Valley. The allies with the French, are tr because they were trading partners since uh, 1758. Uh. So, watch now how this thing here comes to an end. The British, through the strategic, as they realize that this thing is getting too much for us, these indigenous people are joining the French yeah. in this war, and there's too many of them. So the British now came with a strategy. They came out, matter of fact, with a treaty, and a treaty of Eastern. So they begin and they told the Shawnee and all the other Ohio Indians mm -hmm. tribe to stop fighting on the side of the French. They say if you stop fighting alongside with the French, this is what we're going to do. We're not only going to restore you back your land, but we're going to make sure there is no expansion. Wow. Cool. There is no expansion. So watch this. This is, this is crucial. We talk about the French and Indian yeah. War. Mm -hmm. And we talk about one wow. of the main reasons that caused the revolution. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now, with the British saying that, that was a treaty that was put in place. Mm -hmm. So they want the land. So they abandoned fighting with the, uh, with the French. Well, after they did that, the French automatically abandoned Fort Duquesne from the Ohio country. That last month, the British took over. Yeah. We see what happened. The French lost the war. The Indian, well. uh, the French lost the war. The British took over. Yeah. So, with that in mind, who was on the side of the British? Tell well, us. the first people who were on the side was the Iroquois. <laughs> when the war began... On the side of the British. On the side of the British. Mm -hmm. The Iroquois. The Iroquois says that we are neutral. This is not our war. Yeah. We are doing this. We are taking all... Uh, control. You guys fight this thing. But one thing they understood, they said, first of all, the French came up here, and we realized that they're getting too much. They come up here, they install a fort, and they're taking over our land. Mm -hmm. So they said, this is our land they're taking. Yes, yes. Right. The oh, yeah. British now, they're coming, they say, look... We understand what you're saying, but you are subject to us. So therefore, we claim a deed of the land. Mm. So the Iroquois well. say, look here, man. So well. we have two superpowers that yeah. come in here. And we talk about uh, fighting powers. Right. So they're taking these people land. So when the war began, the Iroquois say, we are neutral. But then by 1754, as the war began to intense, the Iroquois paid uh, close attention. They attended to, to, to join it. But guess what happened? It says that the Iroquois come alongside with the British. Matter of fact, they said that the Albany Congress, which is the 13 colonies, yeah. they tried to bribe the Iroquois. Uh. They said they tried to bribe them uh. with gift yes, yes. and provision, even make them promises so they can join the British. The Iroquois said, no yeah. deal. Yeah. We're not wow. buying that. Yeah. That tells you what? That tells you that these Iroquois were not just a simple government. Right. It means that these Iroquois were a strategic and an established government uh, that knew what is good and what is bad, they smell right, right from a far distance. <laughs> so they said, no, we're good. not going to join it. But at the same well, time, good. they understood the superpower. We talk about th these guys. These are from the Ten Toes, the French and the English. These guys are be fighting all their life. Right. These guys mm -hmm. are, are, are master mercenaries that the, the, the Iroquois cannot handle. By okay. 1758, the Iroquois realized that something is about to change, yeah. uh, that the British look like they're about to win the war. So if they're about to win the war, we might as well side with them. Right. And if we side with them, perhaps uh, uh -huh. once they become the winner, they will restore our land that the French have taken. Right. So yeah. they side with the, with, the, with the British uh -huh. and they fought alongside uh, the British just for the benefit. 
Now, here's what's interesting. So the Iroquois, they formed the Iroquois uh. League of Nations, right? Yes. This happened around the 1500-year mark. Mm-hmm. 1758 is when they joined the war. That's right. You're at the 250-year mark. Now, wow. what, we learned, the, what we learned about the Festival of Jeroboam yes. and yeah. Ahab yes. is that the 250. S- the 250. Uh-huh. Yes. 250 is the time frame that you get to make a decision to either line up with Yahweh hmm. or you experience destruction and depletion wow. of your nation. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, yep. America is about to turn 250. Yes. Woo! 250 yep. in 20. 26. Well, decision so to make. Decision yep. to make right yep. now. Yeah, this election, this election yeah. is decision time. Yep. You know, you can have one more exactly. election after this, but this one here is, is pivotal to how we Absolutely. move forward. Go ahead, brother. So, yes, you're right. As you mentioned, that. so, yes, there were a strategic government. So, who has sided with, uh, with, with the British? We are the Mohawk tribe. They also did trading. Uh, uh, they actually converted to Christianity. And when they converted to Christianity, they moved into Canada and they began to live in mission villages. But then when the war broke out, uh, some of them joined, uh, those who were in Canada joined side with the French. And then now you have the other Mohawk who also were uh, uh, living alongside uh, the Mohawk River, fought alongside with the British. Well, something happened. You got two tribes that come to fight, uh, uh, like the Galatian, yeah. coming to fight. With two uh, uh, two different tribe, uh, same tribe, yeah. two different countries. Yeah. Right. So the Mohawk yeah. said, no, 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 we're going to have to stop this. So when they realized that, one of the brothers were coming, they said, no, we're going to abandon ships. So they said, look, we're smarter than that. Yeah. So they said, look, they actually decided not to fight in right. their war. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So they did not want to go into that. Yeah. So you are those, but they, they joined it, but they pulled back out. Mm-hmm. You also have uh, the, Kata- the Katoba. They were living on the long side of the Carolina. They were neutral. But then when they realized that the Cherokee <laughs> were attacking the British as they were coming in, they said, well, we're going to go and help out. So they went out uh, and helped uh, the, the British by defeating some of the Cherokee. But I didn't stop there. While they were still going in, eventually uh, the, the war got intense. But one thing that uh, they were granted to this, uh, uh, Kato, uh, the Kato, Katoab, they fought alongside from beginning to the end mm-hmm. with the British. Uh. But of course, uh, it didn't end so well with them. Because at the end, they lost many of their warriors. But guess what happened? At the end of the war, the British gave them almost uh, 144,000 acres. I felt like I don't want to mention oh, it. Oh. Wow, 144,000. Wow. Wow. So you're talking about 144. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I have to mention it. Wow. You had to mention that. Yes. So King yeah. George... The third uh-huh. yeah. gave them 144,000 acres alongside the South Carolina, a track lane that goes around 15 mile ra- squ- uh, 50 miles square radius. Yeah. Mm. So I but feel like I just want to mention yeah, that. Yeah, brother, oh, we yeah. need to hear that. Uh, yeah, that's, good. that's good Definitely. information. Yes. But before oh, yeah. I, I, I dive into the rest of the thing, these Cherokee, they were mercenaries too, mm-hmm. but they were loose cannon. Yeah. Uh-huh. So what happened? Yeah. The, the British came and made a treaty with them, said, okay, come and fight with us. So they used them, and they went into the Virginia, and they, they had about uh, 250 uh, uh, warriors. They went out there and performed their duty. And, but on their way back, they stopped alongside of Virginia, and still some of the people, these people, uh, 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 horses and cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the farmers Take end up care. killing about uh, 3,000 of them. Yeah. Yeah. So with that now, they're upset. They want revenge. Right. So when they come back, by 1758 now, when they come back in the South Carolina, they want to take revenge for what happened. Yeah. And that begins to attack some of the people in the Carolinas. Now, watch this thing now. Whoa. Whoa. But by the time it happened, British is still fighting the French and Indian War. Right. Guess what happened? You have an Anglo-Cherokee War. Wow. Oh, that broke out boy. in 1759. <laughs> now, what? the British declare war on the Cherokee. Yeah. Because they say, so now they have broke their country, uh, their country they broke their agreement with them, mm-hmm. and they are fighting. That war didn't last for long. He yeah. ended by 1761. Yeah, wow. Of uh, course, we know who's the winner. Yeah. <laughs> but my thing is, yeah. watch how strategic this is. They are fighting with the French on the upper side, but in the Carolina, as they come, because you have to see that's how they're coming. They're coming to the Charleston uh, from the, the Atlantic side of the R- ocean. Right. Mm. And then go up. So they're fighting and they defeat them. These Cherokee are loose cannon, but of course, there is a treaty that comes in. And while they pass their treaty, the, the, the Cherokee 
ceded, it's to call the Cherokee of Lenape Delaware tribe. Mm -hmm. So they make that treaty, and of course, we know what happened. But the Iroquois, the Iroquois were strategic with the British. Mm -hmm. And if you see everybody that long lie side with the, the with the British was because of the Iroquois. So when this uh, 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 French and Indian War ended, as soon as it ended, King George III honor because that is one thing about war and treaty. When you make that treaty, you have to honor it. True. Right. right so right. he passed their closing yeah. of the Western land. He said, "Look, new world or colonies, you guys cannot move forward west mm -hmm. because it's an act. That is a treaty. Right. You have to abide by it. Yes." Did the colonies abide by it? Of course we know yeah. not. <laughs> because they look yeah. at it as a threat. Mm -hmm. So they put a question mark in there and they're still yeah. puzzled on it. Yeah, okay. Right. For, yeah. for yeah. right now, we're just going to wait out this go. Right. Yeah. So what are the cause? Uh, what are the. Uh, 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 what are the. Uh, cause the revolution? There was a restricted of the colonial currency in 1751. You know, when you talk about, talk about money, it becomes a problem. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, oh, what yeah. does this act mean? This act means that. Uh, what the, 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 the colonies did, they create their own bank. And as they create their own bank, they say, look, for economy and to facilitate the economy activities purpose, we're going to have to pay the, the vendors or the merchant from England with paper money. Mm -hmm. Well, the vendors say, look, that money is devaluated because it's cheap money. Yeah. In other words, picture, 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 picture this money, for instance. Let's say uh, uh, you got somebody from uh, 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 US. I give you a dollar. And the last one we talk about Zimbabwe. Yeah. You got the Zimbabwe <laughs> currency, which is almost yeah. like a 500 Zimbabwe money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you go do a business and they pay you with that money. So that's less. Uh, so right. the British said, look, we have a problem. So the Crown said, we're going to pass the law. We don't want paper money. You're going to have to pay us with gold. Yeah. Right. So they, they said, no, this becomes a problem mm -hmm. because we cannot do that. So they said, by doing so, it devaluates the, the British money. Right. So that also was another uh, uh, cause of the revolution. Yes. But that was not the biggest one. There was another Coloring Act that was passed by the British in 1765. What is that Coloring Act? Oh, Coloring Act said that uh, these British soldiers are being put into barrack. What's the barrack? It's like a small uh, building. Mm -hmm. The parliament has the nerve to tell this colony to put them into houses. Uh, so the colony said, wait a minute, you guys are crazy? Yeah. So they said, no, we're not doing this. So this is another cause of the of the revolution but there's another finger on it there is a step act that comes in on march 27th uh, 1765 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the step act means that now that we have come from the world with the british and indian well we have lost a lot of money so the parliament said that we're gonna have to put taxes just in the form of a stamp mm -hmm. to postcard mm -hmm. through a uh, uh, paper documentation anyway for taxes purpose so we can recover our loss mm -hmm. the colony say we have a problem with that one because this now become an abuse of power. Yeah. Right. Why? Right, yeah. Because you said this is taxation without representation. Right. True. So right now, you know this becoming a problem. Once you say it's abuse of power, you know something is brewing. Yeah. yeah. But 1773, uh, <laughs> this, 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 this <laughs> now is escalating. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Way back the way. East Indian Company, yeah. Yeah. the British uh, East, East Indian Company, to sell the tea See. to Boston. Yeah. Boston but what, what's, what's, what's the purpose of that? To their Boston tax. Yeah. So it is more taxation more without representation. Right. Yeah. That mm. is now becoming the end of it. Yeah. Of course, yeah. we know what happened to the Boston Tea Party. <laughs> they sabotage yeah. everything out yeah. here. Yeah. So the British is not yeah. done they yet. They dressed up the like the Indians too. They dressed up like the Indians. Wow. Yes. The Indians yes. did it. And yes. Yes. Yeah. And they did it. Wow. And the British say, we're not yeah. going to have it. Parliament passed <laughs> the final act, which is called the Intoler uh, Intolerable Act, mm -hmm. which means yeah. that, look, we are now denying Massachusetts mm. to be self-governing. Now, in that moment, my friends, now you are declaring war. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. if you don't understand oh, yeah. what happened, what actually happened says that um, in September of 1774, the first Continental Congress was held in Philadelphia. Yes. The 13th colony said, enough is enough. enough. We got enough. We're going to have to move this thing. Yeah. So Man. with that in mind, with our first con uh, 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 Continental Congress <laughs> being a uh, 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 meeting is actually preparing to declare war. So by the beginning of 1775, war broke out mm -hmm. because they say it's a revolution. Right. We can't take this no more. Yeah. Wow. And of course, we know what happened. <laughs> the revolution continued. By May of 1775, 
there is a second Continental Congress that was held in Philadelphia because now they start to intensify this war because now it's about the freedom. Mm -hmm. So they'll go, and then, of course, we know what happened in July 4, 1776. So the Continental Congress declared independence of the 13 colonies from Great Britain. Yes. Now we know what happened. That was the end. But Great Britain didn't realize it until there is a treaty. Sure. Because there must be a treaty for you right. to recognize it. Yeah. So the treaty was not recognized until 1783. That treaty was made. It was a treaty of Paris, yes. which mm -hmm. actually officially made the independence of the 13 yes. American oh, yeah. colonies. Yeah. Right. And that was recognized wow. by Great Britain. Yeah. And the well. war officially ended. Because yeah. for the war to end, it must be a treaty. Yes. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, we see exactly what, is, what that revolution war was about. Mm -hmm. So that was pivotal. Why? Yeah. Because it allowed them uh, to actually uh, uh, begin to establish themselves and be free from Great Britain. Mm -hmm. Did they do it? They did. But by 1812, the American, the 13 colonies, are going to fight against Great Britain. Yeah. <laughs> Over who? Over Canada. Mm -hmm. They yeah. said, look, if we declare yeah. independence, uh, right. perhaps we think that we win, maybe we can go for you. Yeah. Now, yeah. this time it's not going to work. No. Right. Because Great Britain said, look, we let you have your land. Yeah. Yeah. But for Canada, yeah. we're going to see who's yeah, the superpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 and right. they say that the Great Britain yeah. have to show the superpower. Yeah. History yeah. said no that moment. they locked down every coast stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the American have to see defeat. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> almost got Canada. <laughs> yeah. Almost yeah, got it. yeah, they got Canada. Uh, yeah. Whole Canada. Wow. Yes, the whole Canada. Yeah. Talk about land grab. Wow. Land grab. Yeah. That's yeah. A yeah. Land we're talking grab. about 1812. They That's just got the independence. So they go yeah. after the superpower. Let yeah. grab. Yeah. They just purchased Louisiana. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 1803. Right. 1803. So they're so like, you got to expand this territory fast. Yes, you're yeah. right. Try to get so that. They're, they're, I mean, they're wow. doing the expansion. Yeah. So they were moving fast as fast as they, uh, as yeah. they can go. Mm -hmm. So, Not of course, we talk about the expansion uh. and how this country was always about this uh, uh, the, 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 this war. But we talk about the land grab. That didn't stop. No. They had to expand because now they purchased Louisiana, as you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh -huh. now yep. they got Louisiana. Where do we go from here? Yeah. Well, we have to expand far west now. Yeah. Right. So now after they finished their work, they broke all the treaty because That's now true. we are independent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. British, you can't tell us nothing. Yeah. We yeah. control this <laughs> land. And uh, we know what happened. Yes. In 1846, they go against the Mexican, Mexican war. Yeah. But this time it's the Mexican declaring war. <laughs> On, 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 on the Americans. Yeah. The Mexicans declare war because they say that we're not going to accept you taking over Texas. That's right. right. So, yeah. Yes. yes. So they say it's impossible. So when they do that, Congress declare war on Mexico, <laughs> and the war ended in 1848. Yep. What happened? There was a treaty that was formed. The treaty yeah. was formed, the Treaty of uh, Guadalupe, Guadalupe, Hidalgo in 1848. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of that war, not only Mexico lost uh, uh, Texas, they lost California. Mm -hmm. They lost Utah. They lost Nevada. They lost yeah. Colorado. They lost Arizona. Yeah. Wyoming. I mean, from that moment, the whole West. Oh, that yeah. was the expansion right there. Yeah. Yeah. The West was won. Right. Hey, the West I like won. that. Yeah, yeah. That's how the West was yeah. won. Yeah. So yeah. the annexation of the West was complete yeah. through that war yeah. because they acquired all of that. So mm -hmm. you see, that is why I don't blame this Mexican, you know. You know, mm -hmm. they said they were, they were showing one time the Mexican are coming, uh, walking across the border. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they yeah, come yeah. with no visa. Right. They don't even need no visa. Yeah. Well, they said, why yeah. you guys don't get a visa? They said, well, we don't need no visa. Right. This is uh, our land. This is our land. Yeah. <laughs> this is our land. You were taken away from us. So they just <laughs> walk across the border and they're coming. I don't blame Man. them. Yeah. <laughs> that was their land. That was their land. <laughs> well. So <laughs> that was the war of the Mexican war. So we talk about the expansion. Mm -hmm. That complete that. Mm -hmm. And as that completed, now we see the expansion that is taking place now with this new government. But that does, why that carry on? Now you have the government that is formed. You have still have uh, uh, two parties that are taking place because you have the Union in the North and then you have the, the Confederate in the South. Right. Uh -huh. Why they call themselves Confederate? I couldn't use any better name. Of course, because the Iroquois Confederacy. So exactly. I don't, I don't, so it's already there on the it's land. It's already it's in the already land. It's already steam. And, and, yeah. and, and, and when you look at the the the, the we go, they're gonna talk about the Iroquois. I'm just I'm just just sprinkling sprinkle a little water <laughs> here. <laughs> when they talk about the yeah. Iroquois conf Confederacy, they say it was almost like a, a six state coming together. Right. Mm. Yes. So that means it's a powerhouse. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like so when you talk about the 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 the, the thirteen colonies emulating the Iroquois. So you see the thirteen colonies coming together, mm -hmm. emula emulating what was put in play by the Iroquois. Right. So of course we see what happened with the Confederate 
So in, in, um, in 1861, now the, the Southern say, you know what? There is a problem. The Union say, look, we're going to have to stop this slavery business. Mm -hmm. And we talked about slavery earlier. The slavery came to the, to, the, to, the, to the desk. We have to talk about this thing to stop mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to find a way for you guys to make better money. They say, no, we can't stop. This is part of us. Right. So you could see that uh, the Union say, okay, we're going to put something in play. We talk about how we set the, 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 um, the, the Congress and the, and the House of represent the Representation, as the brother mentioned, mm -hmm. it goes with the population. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, we say it goes according to the population. You guys have more slaves out here, so if it goes according to the population, you guys will get more, but they are slaves, and you guys call them your properties. Right. Yeah. So if you call them your property, they say, no, yeah. we're going to have to count every slave so we can get more representation right. in, in, in Congress. They say, no, yeah. it cannot go so, because well, you yeah. call them property. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You don't call them a, 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 a human, you call them property. True. True. So if you call this slave property, like then that's animal. fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to let it go. You call them property, and we too in the North, we're going to begin to learn and uh, name all of our properties. Yes. yes. Because we got plenty of them. Matter of fact, one guy <laughs> said, look, in my house, I got enough property to count. Chairs, <laughs> table. They yes. said, no, you guys can't do that because we don't have enough chairs in our home. <laughs> we are just <laughs> farmers. <laughs> so right. we got slaves. So you guys, no, you can't do that. Yeah. So they brought that on the table. <laughs> Why? It was the, the a game plan to end slavery. Mm -hmm. And of course, we talked. Uh, the brother mentioned the original Republican. So the original Republican was under Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love the term original because uh, they were against slavery. Mm -hmm. So... After that, that came to the table, they say, look, we have to stop this thing here. Mm -hmm. So the, so the Southern Confederacy said, if that's the case, we're going to separate ourselves from the Union. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, once, that, once that went to the forefront, the Union says, we're not going to have it. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln says, yeah. if that's the case, we're going to go for war. Yep. And that right. became the Civil War. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. out of the entire mm -hmm. American history war. The Civil War was the most deadliest Deadly. of yes. them all. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. That's right. Deadliest Bloodiest. of them all. Yes. It was Bloodiest. the first one where you had citizen against citizen. Yes. yes. All the other ones, you're fighting yes. you against another population. Yes. Right? Yes. But this one, it yes. was American versus American. American. Yes. Yeah. You just founded the country a couple of years ago. Yes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I mean, right? exactly. Yeah. Your country's still young. Still young. Go talk about 1760. Blood six, country, six. blood land. Boy, yes. I tell you. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. yes, they're going to talk about the blood. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they went at each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. It was the deadliest of them all. Mm. Yep. So, we know what happened. At the end, of the Southern, which is the Confederate, they lost. Yeah. Mm. But what was a peace treaty? Because at the end of every war, there must be a peace treaty. Right. Yeah. Well, what is a peace treaty? You say, well, it's against uh, uh, it's a uh, 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 citizen against citizen. Well, there is a peace treaty. The peace the peace treaty was uh, no more slavery. Yeah. Yeah. That was the yeah. peace treaty. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and the coming together of all right. the states. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So by 1865, uh, the war ended. No more slavery right. under mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln. That's right. And that was the end wow. of slavery. Mm. It, is. it was powerful, but it, those were bloodiest. But it was powerful. Mm -hmm. oh, so okay. we. have the brother mentioned about some of the territory that were expanded, and uh, we see that all along, as uh, they extended. Now we mentioned about all these indigenous people that were here. After the French and Indian War, as the the thirteen colonies began to expand, what did they do? They had to constantly kill these indigenous people and right. expand. I mean, right. when I say, I mean, it's like a, they ash their bloody. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, kill mm -hmm. these indigenous right. yeah. people. Yeah. I mean, faithfully to wow. occupy yeah. because it is about a land grab. Yeah. It is said that these are the same guys yeah. who came up here for freedom of religion. Exactly. Yeah. These yeah. are the same guys who want a piece of land, mm -hmm. but yet they have a different right. agenda. Right. They literally kill these indigenous people and they have expanded all the way to the west. Mm -hmm. But that didn't stop there. Of course, we see what happened after all the expansion, and uh, the, the 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 we mentioned about uh, uh, William Seward. William Seward was one guy that loved expansion, <laughs> but yeah, Congress oh yeah, said, yeah. "No, we're not gonna go for it." <laughs> I believe that what Congress was doing, they were speaking in one mouth, mm -hmm. but they had a different agenda. Yeah, because by the time they get Alaska. Yeah, it oh looked yeah, like yeah. that was it. Yes. Yeah. We had to really move this ball forward right. because that didn't stop there until 1898. Mm -hmm. William McKinley went to war That's right. against 
the Spanish over Cuba. Yes. And that yeah. was another powerful oh, yeah. war. Yes, oh, yeah. it was. Because while after they went into their war, that set them as supremacy because they defeated the Spanish. Now right. we defeated the British. Uh, we couldn't defeat them to get Canada. Let's see if we can go down south and see what we can acquire. Mm -hmm. And they defeated the Spanish. But that with that war, they end up being the win the, the winner. But as they become the winner, guess what happened? There has to be a treaty. The Treaty of Paris was made in August of 1898. While they make this peace treaty, not only they acquire Cuba, but they also acquire all the islands that belong to the Spanish. Puerto Rico, wow. mm -hmm. they acquire right. Philippines, That's and right. the Guam Island That's that right. same yeah. year. Wow. Same year. Wow. A year mm -hmm. after Backed that, out. they move forward and they capture the yeah. Panama Canal. Yes. They say it belongs That's to right. us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they gain control over it. Wow. Yeah. And they move forward after that, they acquire o Hawaii, mm -hmm. the American Samoas. So in other words, they have expanded the influence mm. and now they're sitting on top yes. because yeah. now this expansion, it is done. Mm. So they finish all this expansion. Are they done through war? No, they are not done through war <laughs> because now this is a home. They have expanded. The, 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 we see something that happened in the late 19, uh, uh, late um, 1800 going to the early uh, 1900, the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. With this oh, yeah. booming economy, now yeah. <laughs> US now see that uh, we have to protect our interests. Mm -hmm. And I love what President Bush always says, say, look, we are fighting to protect our interests. Right. <laughs> they always mm -hmm. protect their interests. Yes. So mm -hmm. now they have to protect their interests. So while they're protecting the interests, uh, here comes 1914. World War I comes creeping up on them. She barely joined, uh, the US barely joined the war because they're just entered the war and the war was over yeah. but something strategic happened after that and we talk about my good friend wilson oh yeah, yeah because yeah. he was the president then because he was the architect right. yeah. matter of fact because u.s yeah. was the sole power that entered the war and the war ended president wilson was actually the architect of what is called the League of the Nation. Yeah. League of Nations. League there comes the League of the Nation, which is also uh, uh, called uh, Société des Nations yeah. in French. Yeah. So they create this League of Nations. What is the purpose of this League of Nations? This League of Nations is that all the country will have to come together. And the purpose of it is that to prevent future war, that in other words, from future, we're right. going to make sure that uh, great countries, instead of... Uh, go to war, we go to diplomacy and resolve the differences. Yeah. So in other words, set peace upon that. But unfortunately, that didn't work so well. The League of Nations was powerful. But the problem is, Congress blocked uh, or Wilson from entering the League of Nations. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that weakened the League of Nations. Yeah. Matter of fact, it weakened the League of Nations. That's what actually caused uh, uh, the problem in World War II. Because mm -hmm. the League of Nations was so weak. Right. Yes. You have a Mussolini who was part of the League of Nations attacking Ethiopia. <laughs> and when they asked Mussolini, the League of Nations said, you cannot do that. He said, look, the League of Nations is too weak. Mm. Yeah. So the League of Nations was so weak, but it didn't stop there. You had many instances that was carrying on. But why? Because the League of Nations did not have a central, not only a central government, but a, 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 a committee of military that can stand up against uh, the rising power who refused to listen. Mm -hmm. So the League of Nations was, was in operation, and by 1946, it died out. Mm. But it was in existence, but it was very weak. That yeah. reminds me of, of, of the central government in, in, in the year when it first started. Mm -hmm. They said the government was, didn't have enough power mm. because the power was resting in the hands of the state. So the state was too right. powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that, it, did, it, 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 it makes the, 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 uh, the government, the Congress, too weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they had to switch that around and put all the strength in the central government. Federal, and yeah. now, when the federal now became strong, yeah. look, we can still, the state could still uh, manage its, its affair. Right. But if there is anything, mm -hmm. just like the, 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 the southern decide to decide, uh, uh, separate, it cannot because we are now strong. So yeah. in a sense, that's yep. what was lacking. So oh the yeah. League of Nations, though it was a great idea, but what didn't last because he has many, many, many flaws. But all the flaws they attributed to Wilson and the United States because they never entered it. He was an architect. Mm -hmm. And had he entered, they believed that that would have 
save World War Three. But uh, World War Two. So is it yeah. safe to say that the League cool. of Nations was resembling of the UN, what what is now the UN? Of they course. Yes. Okay. But of course. The Iroquois were the first ones to do it. Yes. Okay. They call it the Iroquois. Confederacy, Confederacy, which was Confederacy. all of the different Indian tribes, Indian tribes. coming together, uh -huh. and instead of going to war with various tribes, mm -hmm. you would come to the council, mm -hmm. and the council would decide what to do. And mm -hmm. so Woodrow Wilson patterned well, the League of Nations yeah. after, after the, the Iroquois, Iroquois. Mm -hmm. and that and that's why it's called the Iroquois Confederacy, right? Mm -hmm. Because as you can see, there was actually six different tribes that were Correct. coming together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the whole purpose was for them to set peace treaty among the tribes, yes. and mm -hmm. they were strategic with that. Until these, uh, 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 these uh, I call them uh, 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 invaders, mm -hmm. yes. French and British, as they're coming, because these guys are invaders. Colonizers. Colonizers. <laughs> so <laughs> as they're coming, they're disturbed. They're disturbed that, that, that because they came in with firepower that the Iroquois didn't have, and uh, uh, unfortunately mm. they didn't last. But yes, they were the first to do that. And that is the reason why, as I mentioned earlier, if you see the Iroquois that joined the British, most of them say, look, we join it because the Iroquois are joining with the British, so we're going to side with them because yes. we have that peace treaty with them. Yes. So we're going to join. But unfortunately, you always got some rebel. Mm. Right. Yeah, the other yeah. guy said, look, you forced us over our land, <laughs> even though yeah. you are still uh, 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 playing uh, a peace treaty among us, but you forced this over my land, so mm -hmm. I am a rival with you. Yes. So when the opportunity came in for grab, they say, look, let me join the French. Maybe I can get my land back because yes. the end result is all about land grab. Land War grab, has yeah. never been about anything. It's about land grab. Land mm -hmm. back, yep. All the interest they're talking about is all about land. And all the power comes to war. We talk about 1914. How did this war come into, into effect? It come into effect because of the Ottoman Empire. We talk about that. Mm -hmm. The Ottoman Empire, of course, we talk about the, 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 the Turkish, the Muslim from yes. the Turkish area. Yeah. They occupied, they, mm -hmm. matter of fact, they harassed Rome, but unfortunately, they went back and built the empire Mecca, which mm -hmm. is the Arab Emirates. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they went and do that, they begin to lose that. And even if you look in that same, um, in that same uh, uh, World War I, when the Ottoman Empire came in and sided with, uh, with, uh, with German, they were weak. They were weak. Matter of fact, when that war ended, they break down the, the Ottoman Empire yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they said, this is the end of you. Right. We're going to break yeah. you in pieces. Mm -hmm. yes. And they finally broke that down. So yes, that was one strategic thing that you mm -hmm. mentioned because the Iroquois, uh, the, the Wilson pattern that after the Iroquois, yes, the yeah. League of Nations. Mm -hmm. And you're right. That is where the United Nations is coming. Correct. But then it gets strengthened mm -hmm. also. Yes. So in other words, they learn from that, 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 that past as they come in, into that. Mm -hmm. okay. So yes, but the League of Nations was strategy was set because what happens? You are the council. You have the assembly, which is all the nation. Mm -hmm. And then now, out of it, you form now a permanent court, which is a court of international, which would decide the case. But it was weak. But they still continue that with the United Nations. So with that now, we continue, and then we get to 19... We get to World War II. World War II was... Crazy. How that come in place? It come in place because the League of Nations was weak. Mm -hmm. And you have all these rising in power that were taking place. But America is a problem on its own. Because she began to suffer from 1929, go into the Great Depression. So she had no time for the world. Mm -hmm. right. So she was, after the Great Depression, she was forced, uh, forced to think about her own survival. But while she was doing it, in World War I, you have uh, uh, the Japanese... Who, uh, alongside, well, alongside uh, the U.S., France, and Great Britain, now they became now to be a threat right. to the U.S. Right. Because right. now you have a rising, so they began to be a threat. And with that now, that tension went as far as causing the Japanese to bomb on Pearl Harbor. And as yeah. she, as yeah. the Japanese did it, mm. you mm. know, well, U.S. Mm -hmm. entered yeah. that war. Mm -hmm. But when she entered that war, it was not a fun thing because mm -hmm. we know what happened. What the decision, because you are two superpowers now because now the Japanese Empire now became a powerful mm -hmm. threat. Germany was making a lot of noise, but by the time she was already surrendered, she was surrendered already because you had the British on one side, you had the, uh, um, the French on one side, so right. they already closed down the gap on yeah. her already. So she was already, already weakened. The only one that was continuing the fight was the Japanese Empire. Mm -hmm. And America was a sole country to have the atomic bomb. 
and mm-hmm. she dropped that bomb on Nawazaki mm-hmm. and Hiroshima, mm-hmm. and, oh, Hiroshima. Yeah. and that was the end. Oh, wow. yeah. When she dropped that, mm-hmm. that so was the end of oh, that yeah. nuclear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they still feeling the effect. Still yeah. They're, they're still yeah. feeling the yeah. effect. Yeah, they're That's still amazing. feeling the effect. Mm. And that yeah. bomb, yeah. because what was that bomb done? And we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna mention that briefly. Matter of fact, let me mention that now because I'm gonna talk about biological warfare mm-hmm. later yes. on. But we talk about biological warfare. This is what you call biological warfare because yeah. what is atomic bomb made of? It's made out of uranium. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is the pro- the number one, the number uranium. one uh, 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 ingredient, right. uranium. Right. And these are some powerful guests. Yeah. We mentioned oh, yeah. about a sister while you were talking, uh, the, the, the lady, when you were talking about the 5G, mm-hmm. the lady that was playing with the uranium and yes, ended up dying. Madam Curie. Madam, Madam Curie. Curie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She played with uranium. These yeah. are some deadly things. So radioactive. In, exactly, yeah. radioactive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is a radioactive. So even though wow. after he passed away, you're still feeling the effect. Oh, yeah. and, and we mm-hmm. talk about that, that biological warfare. It is deadly because... I'm still going to talk about my, my World War II. I'm not done yet. But I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about biological wa- warfare mm-hmm. because you need to understand what it, this biological is doing. It is powerful because the effect remains in the air. These mm-hmm. are particles. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. It's not meant for us to breathe. Right. That's why we don't have this, those compounds in oxygen. That's right. Right. So it remains there. So you cannot clean it up. Mm-hmm. So it remains. So the effect will be there for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the favorite things that I always say, we talk about our biological wep- uh, uh, wa- uh, warfare. At one time, there was an anthrax that was coming in. And everybody was afraid of anthrax. They say if you touch it, it's up, it will, uh, it will, uh, 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 if you touch that, uh, uh, the anthrax, it will just affect yes. your skin. Mm-hmm. It will do this here, it will do that. Mm-hmm. But one of my favorite movies, I'm gonna bring that out because I, I'm gonna touch on all the area with that. 24, Jack Bauer in 24. Okay. When Jack Bauer first, before President Palmer, Frank Palmer was a, a, a senator from California in the movie. And in case I don't, uh, you don't know his name, but. Is the guy from Allstate? He said, "You know the black guy that said Allstate is yeah. in your hand." Dennis Aver- there Herbert. you go. Mm-hmm. He was the one that was running for. Uh, uh, he was a senator from California, going to become president. Mm-hmm. Now he was running for president. Was while he was going in, the first thing Jack Bauer says, he says, "Look, everybody says, oh, they're gonna kill this man." Jack Bauer says that uh, if anything happened to the first black man who has a chance to the White House, he said that will rip this country apart. Mm-hmm. Now we talk about the Civil War. Right. Yes. Yeah. They don't want a civil war. No. So, why is it? But they use civil war to destabilize every other country. Correct. But they will not do it. So, CTU, which is the counterterrorism unit, protect uh, uh, President Palmer and he mm-hmm. became president. But after he became president, there was uh, uh, one Muslim lady, of course, because they're talking about uh, 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 warfare and war on terror. Mm-hmm. She oh, yeah. greeted the president, and as she greeted the president, automatically the man dropped. Why? Because it was a biological weapon. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. those things here, not only that, but. The man dropped and he had to get a cure rapidly. But it didn't stop there. Whoa. There is a, uh, in that moment, there is a, uh, the terrorist in that, uh, in, 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 that, in that same uh, episode was the guy that played the mummy. Uh, the oh, yeah. Uh, the guy that played the mummy. Yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in, 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 in Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was the terrorist. Mm-hmm. He now yeah. has a strategic game plan. Yeah. Somehow, he was able to hijack what is called the United States playbook. Mm-hmm. Why that man do that? I have no clue. Wow. <laughs> How did he get that? <laughs> so he yeah. hijacked it. Uh, so the yes. purpose is that they will be able to release the that that uh, uh, that biological weapon, mm-hmm. and according to Jack Bauer, it will destroy from California all the way coming down. Wow. And that they couldn't let it happen. You know, Jack Bauer had to stop it. Yeah. But I'm gonna get to that one. Let me continue <laughs> about World War Two. Mm-hmm. So okay. after World War Two, what happened? There was a peace treaty. The peace treaty was formed. The United after the peace treaty, the United Nation was formed. The United Nation was strategic in that area. Why? Because now they say whatsoever the League of Nations fail, we're gonna make sure this does not fail. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. with that now, oh, yeah. they also went and uh, went into a conference called the Brentwood Conference in 1944. Mm-hmm. In that Brentwood Conference, it was not just a regular conference. It was an agreement that resulted in two strategic things. They result in one, the World Bank and the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund. What is, what is the purpose of that Brentwood and then forming these two powerful banks? It's to say that now that we have gone to this war, we are now broke mm-hmm. and we cannot support That's ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So right. therefore, yeah. we're going to have this uh, uh, a bank to remain there in case there is war mm-hmm. to be supported mm-hmm. by this system. Right. But that Brentwood system didn't, was not only 
uh, the result of it. The result yeah. of that brain pool system was also to make sure that no nations could go to war this time around mm -hmm. without yeah. the United States interfering. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was so powerful that even today, when we talk about the United States nation, the United Nations has a military of its own. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So even if you have yeah. all the all the countries that will bring in their own soldier and mm -hmm. it but he has a military of his yes. own. Yes. He has a military because they say, look, this time around, we will make sure that it does not fail. And with that brain tool system and with the monetary uh, uh, fund, we that go deep now and we see exactly what this bank were doing. The purpose of this bank now mm -hmm. is now to fund the government. Yes. And as they fund the government, uh, the government uh, in turn uh, uh, pay back those bank uh, by applying tax on the people. Yes. You can never understand that until you understand uh, um, Rafa's child. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Amisha Bauer, yes. who was a, 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 a merchant, a trading silver and money lender in Frankfurt, Germany. And he had a, 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 a red sign hexagram that we talk about the Star of David, which is actually the, the Star of Molech. Mm -hmm. That red sign, and matter of fact, when he changed his name from Amsha Bauer, that's what Rafa Charles mean in Germany, red sign. Red sign, red so shield. Red shield. Yes. Mm -hmm. So with that now, this is what he says. Mm -hmm. He says, look, it is better to lend money to the government mm -hmm. because not only the loan is bigger, but at least it's guaranteed because the government going to pay you back. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you make sure that the government uh, uh, impose taxes on the people. Yes. And then you can get your money. Yeah. It's Correct. better than lending money on individual yeah. where you will have to go pull their teeth uh, exactly. and be able to get your money back. Get your yeah. money back. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all you're going to get for on that, on that one. Mm -hmm. So he now had all his children and he said this. He said, look, he has five children. He said, look, I want you guys to set a banking industry. Mm -hmm. But... Set in a, in, 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 in the major city in Vienna, in Frankfurt, Germany, in Paris, in London. And he said, now, when you do this loan, what you're going to have to do, you don't have to risk gold. You don't have to risk lives. All you can do is make a phone call to one of your brother in London and he mm -hmm. said, pay so and so. Mm -hmm. And that will offset the loan. When he also want to make a payment uh, or, or, or give uh, money to somebody in Frankfurt, you call him and say, brother, Make a loan, and you could offset it without facing, uh, 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 without facing uh, lives, uh, and also risking the gold mm -hmm. because uh, it is backed by the gold. Correct. Now, if you don't understand what this guy was saying, that if you look back in the old Western movie about the cowboys and after they were going after the West Fargo chariot, mm -hmm. West Fargo is an old yeah. bank, you know. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, an oh old yeah, bank. yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every time when <laughs> you look at the West Fargo, I, I see <laughs> the West Fargo's uh, uh, logo. Yeah. I yeah. see that chariot yes. with the. Yeah. They were always attacking the West Fargo, the wagon train, wagon train. Wagon train. Wagon because uh, they were carrying yes. the money. That's so right. they had to have the sheriff and yeah. the, the banditos yes, and yes, exactly. the banditos and all these guys, the Mexican, and were yes. always after the West Fargo. Mm -hmm. So he said, you don't have to risk lives. Yes. You don't have to risk the gold. So he understood it. So now when this bank was formed, it was strategic so they could be able to offset the loan and be able to pay. So these are still the backbone. Mm -hmm. of every nation mm -hmm. now the third thing is they are not only like the the the, the galatian or like the greeks they will <laughs> still fund both sides of the war right if right. you have Jer uh, 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 britain fighting against france they will fund both sides yes and they're gonna get the money back anyway how are you gonna <laughs> do that start their problem exactly exactly so that was the brentwood that was done and it was about 700 countries that came together mm -hmm. into that and we know that after that the United Nations is still strong, and that was not as weak as before. But after that, the USSR, which is the Russian, they were still strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They now also began to spread themselves. So as they were going a little further, the United States now as allies had to go out there and make sure that the allies do not get compromised. So she formed NATO. And what is NATO? Oh, NATO yeah, is yeah. the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And the purpose of it was to make sure that to stop Russia from spreading. Yes. So in other words, it was, it's, 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 it was a, a, what they call containment. Yes. Contain Russia. Yes. But of course you know, that also created a cold war. Yes, because did, Russia yeah. said, look, <laughs> you're trying to contain me. And that created cold war. In that cold war, Russia now had missile. She was coming down on the side of Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And of course we know that was diplomatic. Yes. But somehow they were able to resolve that now, 
I I want to do something, Joe. Yes. Because you keep referring to the country as she, 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 she. 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 So here, here's what I, I here's what I, right. So here's what I want to do. Yes. I want to jump into Sarah's segment. Yes. But I want you to put a pin in that World War Three okay. because I want to come back to that because. Actually, that's going to be a perfect segue into our, our closing. All right. Because everybody wants to know what's going to happen in 2020 election-wise. That's wise. right. That's but right. 2020 isn't only about the election. No. Yeah. You know that we're heading into World War Three. It's that's unavoidable. Right. No. It's inescapable. No. Every country is going to have to choose sides yes. in World War Three, And it. it's not going to be as clear-cut as you think. So right. hold on to that information, brother. I definitely want to close with that World War Three. All right. But be, but because you kept saying woman, she, woman, woman, she, 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 she that's we right. We need to talk about the political power of yes. the woman. Yes, the woman. The political power the of the woman, because all countries are referred to as female. Female. She. female. Corey, you talked about yeah. the the Statue of Liberty, Statue right? Of Liberty, that's yes. right. So yeah. so so now yeah. we're gonna move into the political power of the woman. And then we're going to jump right back into World War Three because it right. all ties up and wraps yes. up into the same thing. Brother, that was some heat, man. That's powerful. That was some good yeah. stuff. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get wow. back into that, yeah. brother. Yes, yes. I yes. can't <laughs> wait to get back into that. So, Absolutely. so tell us about this she yes. that Joe kept referring yes, to. Yes, the she. So my motion is the yes. power of the woman. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We will start by using the law of first mention to shed some light on the origin of the woman. Yes. Where did she begin? Yes, where did she begin? On day six of creation, <laughs> Genesis 2, 7 through 9 says, Then Yahweh took dust from the ground and formed a man from it. Oh, yeah. He mm. breathed the breath of life into the man's nose, and the man became a living person. Then Yahweh planted a garden in the east in a place called Eden and put the man he had formed into it. Yes. Yahweh caused every beautiful tree and every tree that was good for food to grow out of the ground. In the middle of the garden, Yahweh put the tree that gives life and also the tree that gives the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2, 15 through 17 continues. Yahweh put the man in the garden of Eden to care for it and work it. Yahweh commanded him, you may eat the fruit from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat the fruit from the tree which gives the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you ever eat fruit from that tree, you will die. Yes. Mm. Be it resolved. Point one, Yahweh has created the first human being called a man. Yes. Please note that Yahweh never named the first human being Adam. Mm. Mm. Adam is a play on words that came from the Hebrew word for ground, which is Adama. Yes. Mm. That's A-D-A-M-A. -A -A, Adama. Which wow. is the male okay. connotation wow. of the human being. Huh. Again, that's A-D-A-M-A, -A, which means ground in Hebrew. Yes. Mm. Point two. Yahweh created Adam outside the garden. Yahweh plants the garden after Adam is created and puts him in thereafter. Point three, every word I just read sets the preamble to answer the question, where did she, the woman, yes. begin? Yes, where mm. did she begin? To answer this question, let's take a look at Genesis 2, 18 through 25. Then Yahweh said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Mm. I will make a helper or partner who is right or suitable for him. From the ground, Yahweh formed every wild animal and every bird in the sky. And he brought them to the man so the man could name them. Whatever the man called each living thing, that became its name. The man gave names to all the tame animals, to the birds in the sky, and to all the wild animals. But Adam did not find a helper that was right for him. Mm. So Yahweh caused the man to sleep very deeply. And while he was asleep, Yahweh removed one of the man's ribs. Then Yahweh closed up the man's skin at the place where he took the rib. Yahweh used the rib from the man to, take a wom to make a woman. And then he brought the woman to the man. And the yes. man said, now this is someone whose bones came from my bones whose body came from my body. I will call her Isha, which is n Hebrew for woman. Oh, Because yes. she was yes. taken out of Ish, Isha. which is Hebrew for man. So a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one body. Yes. The man and his wife were naked, but they were not ashamed. Be it resolved. Point one, the woman was not created in the same place as the man. Mm. 
point two. The origin of the woman denotes three key players. Yes. These three key players are Yahweh, the man, and the garden. Point three. The woman was created by the hands of Yahweh, the rib of Adam, and quite possibly the dust of the most lavish place on earth, the Garden of Eden. Oh, yes. Point four. Yahweh did not name the woman. She was named by the one in charge of naming, mm. who was Adam. Point five. Remember the Hebrew word for ground is Adama, for which Adam was named after. Yep. The female connotation of human being is Adama as well. Mm -hmm. However, it is spelled with an H at the end. Yeah. Spelled A-D-A-M-A-H. The woman is also Adama, but with an H. The only difference is that she was officially named by Adama without an H, who was called Adam. Point six, Adam originally named this new human being woman. The name Eve isn't mentioned until Genesis 3.20, after Yahweh curses Adam for his disobedience to his law. Adam naming the woman is an act that seals his approval of Yahweh's creation. In other words, this is his way of saying, and it was good. Just like Yahweh said during the seven days of creation. In naming her woman, Adam also binds her to him. Mm. He further prophesies a lasting covenant between the both of them and husbands and wives all throughout the history of time. Wow. Point seven, Adam is fascinated by the beauty of the woman. I can't blame him. <laughs> ah, yeah. 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 Me neither. Yeah. Exactly. All right, I'm, 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 yeah. yes. Speaking for uh, all the gentlemen yeah. in the uh, American flag ties, That's I right. think <laughs> we've not done too bad in choosing <laughs> our eaves, right? right? Yes, right. yes, right. yes, right. yes. Yeah. absolutely yeah. not, yes. absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Right, great. <laughs> So Adam is fascinated by the woman. Yes. She immediately becomes his worthy counterpart. Mm -hmm. After all, she was the only human human being that I believe was created. Now that the origin of the woman has been established, let's move on. After her creation, we hear of the story of the woman operating in innocent ignorance. How she caused the man to eat the fruit, and death came a knocking. Satan took the keys, Yahweh threw them out the garden, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. But let's rewind for one second. What exactly constitutes as innocent ignorance? Hmm. The definition of innocent is to be free from sin, guilt, or immorality. The definition of ignorance is the state of lacking knowledge, learning, and information. So to bear innocent ignorance, as some say was the case of the woman in the garden, means to be free from sin and guilt, from lacking knowledge, learning, and information. Is this the case of the woman in the garden? The answer is no. She was neither innocent nor ignorant to the facts of her surroundings and the law of Yahweh pertaining to the tree in the midst of the garden. Yes. This brings us to the mystery of the woman. Yes. Let's mm. look at Genesis 3, 1. It says, Now the snake was the most clever of all the wild animals which, which Yahweh had made. Mm. Simply put, the snake was the most clever wild animal Yahweh made. Yes. Let's back up a bit. Back in Genesis 2, 20, when it talks about Adam giving names to the animals, it states that he named animals that were divided into three categories. Mm -hmm. It says, the man gave names to all the tame animals, to the birds in the sky, mm -hmm. and to all the wild animals. Adam named all the tame animals, all the birds, and all the wild animals. Mm -hmm. The tame animals were simply the animals that we would find on a farm, like the cows and the sheep and the karma animals by nature. The birds are all avian creatures, and the wild animals would be like the wild beasts of the field, okay. like the horse and the lion. Mm -hmm. Well, Genesis 3.1 directly tells us which category the snake falls in. The snake falls in the category of the wild animals of the field. Not only was he of the wild animals of the field, it says he was the most clever, cunning, and crafty of all the wild animals Yahweh had made. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Genesis 3.1-3 3, 3 says, Now the, sna the snake or the serpent 
was the most clever of all the wild animals Yahweh had made. One day, the snake said to the woman, did Yahweh really say that you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered the snake, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, mm -hmm. but Yahweh told us you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not even touch it or you will die. Mm. Be well, it resolved. Point resolve one. <laughs> Darkness in the form of Satan is hiding in the shadows of the garden. Mm. Mm -mm. Point wow. two. The snake is being manipulated by Satan because he is the most clever of all the wild animals yes. mm -hmm. Yahweh had made. I assume the wild animals wandered in areas outside the scope of the other animals, and because the snake is the cleverest, Satan finds a perfect candidate to do his bidding. Mm. Point three. Wow. Satan sense. finds an entry point in the garden by possessing the snake. Mm -hmm. Once this possession takes place, he imprints the snake and every species of snake ever to be created and marks them with irrevocable judgment and punishment. Satan also becomes synonymous with the snake or serpent. Yes. Point four. Note that the woman is the first human being to encounter Satan. Satan, who is now the serpent, begins a spiritual chess game with the woman. Mm -hmm. In Satan initiating this game, the woman becomes his worthy opponent. Wow. Point five. By this time, the woman bears two mantles. She is first the worthy counterpart to Adam and now the worthy opponent of Satan. Point six, did Yahweh really say that you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? This question Satan proposes to the woman makes no sense. He knows that the human beings have to eat. He's luring her into a conversation through what we call small talk. He wants to know what she knows, to know what's in her heart, and test her mind. <laughs> Point seven, the woman's response to Satan tells us that Yahweh had educated both Adam and the woman about the law of the two trees. She proves this when she says, but Yahweh told us, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. However, she adds details that only a woman can conjure in her mind <laughs> when she says, you must not even touch it or you will die. Yes. <laughs> Some may look at this addition as the woman being foolish and not mm. understanding the ramifications of the fruit that brings death through knowing good and evil. However, this ability displayed through the woman adding this one detail to the command given to her and Adam is a power trait that the woman was simply created with. The problem was that she didn't understand yet how to use it to yes. discern her mm -hmm. adversary and win against her opponent. That's right. Wow. Powerful. My wow. brother here, yeah. <laughs> Talked about the uh, power of the gatekeeper a few weeks ago. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The gatekeeper oh, yeah. is the keeper of the secrets of Yahweh uh, yes. or men. Yes. Uh -huh. He equated the woman as the gatekeeper. Yes. She holds the secrets of her counterpart, yeah. who mm -hmm. is her husband. Mm -hmm. The woman possesses the power and ability to see all the details behind the mandate given to her and her counterpart. She is the seer of the two. Yes. Therefore, mm. the woman adding this little detail of not even touching the fruit was her natural mechanism for saving them from even going near the tree mm -hmm. to even inquire of any of the fruits it brought forth. Yes. It was simply her warning sign in her mind written in red that said, keep away from the tree in the midst of the garden, mm -hmm. a way to save her and her husband from this death spoken by their creator. Yes. Well, we know what happened after this. Genesis 3, 4 through 7 continues. But the snake said to the woman, you will not die. Mm -hmm. God knows that if you eat the fruit from the tree, That's you it. will learn about good and evil. Yes. And you will be like God. Uh -huh. <laughs> the woman <laughs> saw that the tree was beautiful. That's it. That its fruit was good to eat and that it would make her wise. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some of the fruit to her husband, who was with her, mm -hmm. and he ate wow. it. <laughs> then, <laughs> poor fellow. Poor fellow. I tell you. Uh, then wow. it was as if Tragic. their eyes were opened. Yes. Be it resolved. Point yes. one. Resolve it. 
Satan saw his opening for checkmate and the weakness of the woman's response to his question. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he casted a vision of lies before her. Yes. He showed her she could touch it. Once she saw that she could touch it, she decided that she could taste it and offer it to her counterpart. Mm -hmm. In her decision to let her guard down and succumb to an unknowable defeat, what she saw with her eyes from the serpent convinced her more than what she heard with her ears from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For her, seeing was believing. The vision that was casted took root in her mind and settled in her heart. Point two. The woman understands her oneness with the man. If they aren't going to eat or touch the fruit, they aren't going to eat or touch the fruit together. If they are going to eat or touch the fruit, they will eat and touch the fruit together. Mm -hmm. Point three. After eating the fruit and realizing that nothing relating to death happened to her or Adam, she encouraged her husband to eat as well. <laughs> Point four. Ooh. Satan understands that the key <laughs> to the secrets is the gatekeeper, or the key to the husband is the wife. Yes. He used wow. the woman to get to the man who held the secrets of the seed. In so doing, Satan gained access to the man, Adam, and once he ate the fruit, snatched the keys and gained access to the secrets of Yahweh on earth. Mm -hmm. Point five. Yahweh dually curses the serpent and Satan. He curses the woman and curses Adam, then casts them out of the garden. Yes. Yep. Here lies the mystery of the woman. Yes. The curse of Satan is directly tied to the woman. Mm -hmm. Genesis 3.15 says, I will make you and the woman enemies to each other. All right now. Oh, yes. Yeah. Your descendants and her descendants Ooh. will be enemies. Yes. One of her descendants will crush your head and you will bite his heel. Yahweh says and seals it himself. The woman and Satan are direct enemies. Satan isn't as smart as he thinks. Yahweh saw the play from the start of the conversation between yep. Satan and the woman. He saw how Satan picked her out as his worthy opponent. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh says, I'll do you one better, Satan. Yes. You yep. made her your worthy opponent, and I will seal it. You targeted her because her beauty surpasses yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used her weakness and the immaturity of her abilities to trap her into submission of disobedience. Yes. But I made her most clever, even more clever than the serpent you deceived. Mm. I made her strong and resilient. So strong that she will bring forth the seed of seeds, yes. and he yep. will crush you like the dust-eating vermin you are. Yeah, I like that. The <laughs> game of chess <laughs> doesn't end here. It ends when she wins. That's yes. right. Be it resolved. Resolve it. The yeah. woman now bears three mantles. Three she mantles. is the worthy counterpart yep. to the man. Yes. The worthy opponent of Satan. Yes. And the worthy mother of the seed of victory. That is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Praise Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Three Amen. mantles. That's right. Mm. We now move to the point of the serpent and the two women. Yes. All right. The garden is taken away, but the one thing left as a resemblance and representation of the garden is the woman, mm -hmm. as I believe her to have been formed from the dust of the garden. I can Since get on that Adam was too. already placed <laughs> in the garden before she was created. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Right? I, I, yes, I can, I can join in with that. Wow. Yes. From out of dust. Yes. Not any better. And, and you've got, <laughs> you've got <laughs> Madam Cheryl Williams. She's saying, be it resolved. <laughs> so, yeah. so she's in on that. She's going to preach right. a message named be it resolved next. <laughs> now cursed and driven out the garden with her husband, this woman is marked by the error of her judgment. Yes. yes. And openly accused by her husband. <laughs> now she bears a burden of being well, called the weaker of the two. Mm. And her struggles for acceptance and validation ensues. Yes. Here begins the climb of the woman from her fall from grace. Mm. She's trying to reach the stature she once had in Eden, the place of her birth. Yahweh knows this, and in his infinite plans, he has a seat of prestige for this woman. Satan, on the other hand, knows his fate is sealed at the hands of this woman. Mm-hmm. So he conjures up his own set of plans to find a woman to contend with his opponents. Yes. Mm. He wants his own woman. He wants his own uh, woman. In the form of many women. In the Whoa. form of many women. He <laughs> isn't loyal. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't loyal. Uh, his choice of women are prostitutes whose one <laughs> goal, like Satan in the garden, 
is to destroy the righteous woman and her prophesied seed. Wow. Mm. Eventually, mm. the woman, the one woman from the e from Eden, became a strong woman in the form of a nation of righteous blood, mm -hmm. yeah. the nation of Israel. Within this nation rose up strong women who rallied on for the sake of righteousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. To help bring forth the seed of promise. Women like Sarah, Rebecca, yeah. Leah, and Rachel, Rahab, Deborah, Hannah, yes. Esther, oh, yeah. Ruth, Naomi, Anna, Elizabeth, and Mary, yep. who brought forth <laughs> Yeshua, the seed of promise. Yes. Yes. Oh. Meanwhile, Satan wrangled his prostitutes to go after her every chance he got. Yes. <laughs> Satan's most prized women of choice were Egypt, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Within these women rose up powers like Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, yes. Herod, and mm. Caesar, who brought forth the Pharisees, who were the seed of Satan, mm. yeah. and the worthy opponent of Yeshua. Wow. Yes. Uh -huh. And the story uh -huh. goes just as Yahweh uh -huh. spoke it in Genesis 3.15. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The seed of Satan bit Yeshua's heel, yes. but Yeshua crushed his head. Amen. Yes. Yes. Satan yes. is That's defeated. Right. That's right. Defeated. When Defeated. Yeshua died and Done resurrected sure. with all power <laughs> in yes. his hands, yeah. the Genesis 3.15 prophecy from the garden That's was fulfilled. It. Yes. So, <laughs> according to the word, the righteous woman has won. The great yes. war, brother. We got to talk it. about World War III. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's about like, no, we got to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we got to um, talk about like it. That video game, like, um, that mm -hmm. video game, like Mortal Kombat, which is a yes. game yes. I wouldn't advise anybody playing. It's a violent game, but I know the famous phrase, uh, finish, finish him. him. Finish, finish him. Finish yes. him. That's finish right. him. So Satan is at that mark now, but then when Yeshua comes back to put him away once and for all, yes. he will see right. the fate teller. Corey, Corey, you got rid of your glasses. <laughs> I think I need to put my glasses down, too. <laughs> oh, Corey yeah, got rid of glasses. Oh, you put yeah. the, where are your I glasses, Corey? Put them in, in, in the pocket. In the, yeah. This is what people do with glasses. They yeah. put them in their pocket. So I'm going to put it in my pocket. I may pull them back out later. Go ahead. Be it resolved. Oh, yes. The righteous woman has won. But she has to tell a little longer to receive her mm -hmm. final reward. Mm. Yes. 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 As yes. she is being prepared as a bride for her groom upon Yeshua's return. Yes. yes. This yes. means yes. the victory is won, but the war still wages. The yes. war still wages. Right. Revelation yeah. 12, 12 supports this. It yes. reads, So rejoice, you heavens, and all who live there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But woe to the earth and the sea, because Whoa. the devil has come down to you. Yes. Yep. He down is filled with anger and wrath. Yeah, because right. he knows he does <laughs> not have much time. He knows it. <laughs> Be it resolved. Yep. Resolve Point it. Point one. Mm -hmm. Satan is angry and is in his final push to destroy the woman being prepared by Ruach HaKodesh, Holy yes. Spirit, yep. as a bride oh, yeah. for Yeshua. Mm -hmm. The woman yep. is now Yeshua's righteous ecclesia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Point two. Satan's game of chess has intensified and his devices are more deceptive than they have ever been in history. Yes. He will not stop until he is thrown into the lake of fire. Correct. Yep. Point three. We know Satan is a copycat. Mm -hmm. His tactics are repetitive. <laughs> we know Yeshua has his bride. That means Satan wants one and has a bride as well. Mm. She is called by her name in Revelation 17. Yes, what's her oh. name? This brings us to the battle of the bride. The battle hey! of the bride. The battle of the bride. <laughs> wow. <laughs> As yeah. I stated Incredible. before, Yeshua's bride uh. is the Ecclesia, who is the evolution of the first woman after the fall, mm -hmm. the righteous woman from the garden. She is being prepared for white garments, the marriage feast, and to be made one with her bridegroom for all eternity. Yes. There she will finally gain her status of perfection once again. Mm. If Yeshua's bride has evolved, it goes without saying that Satan's bride has done the same. Yes. Yes. She is a culmination of all his prostitutes that he used throughout history to try and destroy the woman and her seed. All right. Mm. Before, the women Satan used could be spotted from a mile away. But now, he has strategically fixed her to look like the bride of righteousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. This time, Whoa. Satan is masking his bride to look like Yeshua's. But underneath it all, he cannot hide her true colors. Mm -hmm. Her unveiling gives her away. You'd have to be spiritually blind not to recognize her. She's vain. She's bold. She's detestable. Oh, boy. Okay. Who she truly is, is written big and bold for all the world to see. Mm -hmm. Revelation 17, 1 through 6 reveals. 
Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke to me. Yes. He mm -hmm. said, come, and I will show you the judgment that will be given to the great prostitute, the one ruling over many waters. Mm. The kings of the, the earth sinned sexually with her, and the people of the earth became drunk from the wine of her prostitution. Yes. Then the angel carried me away by the spirit to the desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a red beast. It was covered with the names against Yahweh written on it, and it had seven heads and ten horns. Mm. Seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was shining with gold, precious jewels, and pearls she was wearing. Mm -hmm. She had a golden cup in her hand, a cup filled with evil and detestable things and the uncleanness of her sexual sin. Mm. On her forehead, a name was written that was a mystery. This is what was written. The great Babylon, the mother of prostitutes and of the evil and de detestable things of the earth. Mm -hmm. Then I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of Yahweh's holy people and with the blood of those who were killed because of their faith in Yeshua. Hmm. Be it resolved. Yes. Satan's bride is the feet of iron mixed with clay that Daniel saw in his vision. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Right. She is the embodiment right. of what started <laughs> as the order of Yahweh. Yeah. Yes. Mixed with the order of the doctrines of men. Mm. Mixed with yeah. idol worship. <laughs> she is who we revealed on our broadcast title, Revelation, to be the institution of the Roman Catholics. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Satan's right. scarlet harlot yeah, bride yeah. is that of <laughs> the Scarlet's Roman Harlet. Catholic Church system. Yeah. who is Mystery Babylon, Mystery the Babylon. mother of prostitutes. Mm, wow. In the next verse of Revelation Man. 17, John is so awestruck that his eyes can't believe what he is seeing. <laughs> he recognizes the bride of Satan and marvels in disbelief at the sight of how well she resembles the bride of mm. Yeshua, of yeah. how she is dressed in royal garments and jewels hmm. and shrouded in a deception so strong that could cause even the very elect to be deceived yes. if Yeshua delayed his coming. Yes. Be not dismayed. Praise Yahweh that Yeshua will come at a time when his bride is completely ready. He has covered her with his blood cord and wrapped her in the firewall of Ruach HaKodesh, breath of life and Holy Spirit. Yes. She is girded in the glory cloud of heaven and fortified in the iron fist of Sabios, Amen. Yahweh's yes. undefeated yes. yes. commander. Well, this has power. Yes. Man. Yes. For the bride of Yeshua, all is well. All yes. is well. But this final push will require the face of the woman to move us into the final days of time. Herein lies the age of the woman. Mm -hmm. I began by yeah. pointing out that from the woman's origin in the garden, she was created as helper and counterpart to the man. Yes. But after the fall, she yes. carried the burden of blame to the point of her being stripped of all her original rights as help me. Yes. And was dealt a punishment of less mm. than to the man, mm. by wow. the man, and the Whoa. curse of Yahweh found in Genesis 3.16. The woman became that of a subservient creature mm -hmm. whose one sole purpose was to cater to the superior gender of the man and whose uses were limited to carrying and bringing forth the seed of the man and nurturing all in her household. <laughs> Cooking, cleaning, nursing, pampering. Her dreams and goals were limited to these few attainabilities. Wow. As reflected in many cultures and countries across the globe, this was the staple of being a woman. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, to bring us to the age we have come to as a world, History has marked many cases where the woman has defied her dictated limits and dominated the time for which she was placed in this world, in the society that her presence graced. To highlight the strength of the woman, I've picked out a few whose beauty, bravery, wisdom, and resilience turned the tides of change in nations over the course of history, the history of this world. Yeah. All right. Well, this sounds well. like a good lineup. Uh, I, I will warn heavy, you, though, know. yes. that my choices are unbiased. Okay. Yes. Some yes. of these women may not fall on the side of righteousness and truth, yeah. yes. but the point is to showcase the power the woman single-handedly possesses 
and the scope of her reach. So all you want to broadcast, get ready, get yeah. ready. Yeah. Get ready for showtime. Get ready for it. Right. Let's hear yeah. what you got. Rahab. 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 Yes. Oh, yeah. Born Good one. Good in one. Jericho, she lived under the reign of Joshua between 1399 and 1300 B.C. Yes. Yay for in Rahab. Joshua 2, she hid and housed two Israeli spies sent to Jericho to scope out the land to conquer it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of her bravery, mm -hmm. she was grafted in the family of Israel, yes. and Yahweh brought forth the line of David and kings through her. Through her. All right. Yep. Deborah the woman judge. Yes. Oh, yes. First Deborah. woman judge recorded in the history of mankind. Yes. Deborah made her moves between 1250 and 1150 BC. Yes. She sat under a palm tree named for her mm. and yes, settled cases brought to her <laughs> by <laughs> the people of Israel. Yes. yes. Not only was she a judge, but mm. she was a prophetess. Oh, yes. Recorded right. <laughs> in Judges Major. 4. Yeah. She is prominent <laughs> for her confident warrior trait that mm. led Israel to defeat the army of Sisera. Yes. So Sisera and his army fell at the hands of the woman. Mm. At the yeah. hands of the woman, Deborah. That's it. That's it. Uh. Also, a special mention in Judges 9 goes out to the unnamed woman who killed the wicked king Abimelech. Yes. yes. I mention her for her wisdom and bravery, where from the roof of the tower, she dropped a grinding stone yes. on his head. Yes. Right. Crushing his War skull. time. Yes. <laughs> Abimelech's skull is crushed and his pride is hurt. Man. In humiliation, his final words to his armor bearer are, Yes. Draw your sword oh, and yes. kill me. Kill me. I don't <laughs> want, want people to die <laughs> in the hands of a woman. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. <laughs> That, that, that would yeah. be a, the story <laughs> that a woman kill a, 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 a warrior. Mm -hmm. That would not be in, 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 in the yeah, book of the like legend. This is, Pull what, up right, right, yes, yes. <laughs> this is what many politicians <laughs> are saying right now. <laughs> I don't want my political career to come to a halt at the hands of a woman. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he said. He said, I don't want people to say a woman killed a villain. Yes. Oh, boy. Delilah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. That <laughs> works. She's on this list. Age of the woman. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Lived during the time of the judges, mm -hmm. yes. she was from the valley of Sorek. Sorek. Yes. And yeah. the famous prostitute and lover of Samson. Mm. Delilah was no average prostitute. No. She was a courtesan who Master Samson Hooker. fell deeply in love with. Yes. yes. Her powerful wiles of seduction and deception subdued even the strongest man into vulnerability. My. Revealing mm -hmm. the secret of his strength. Yes. Which brought yeah. Samson's demise. Yes. And Boy. brought Israel to its knees at the hands of a pagan nation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Esther. Born to the nation of Israel, Esther became the queen of Persia between 605 and 536 BC. Yes. Mm -hmm. Using her beauty, brains, and her position of power, uh -huh. she was able to reverse the king's decision and save the nation of Israel from mass genocide. Yes, mass Ooh. genocide. Mary, the mother of Yeshua. Yay. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, yeah. Mother Mary. Born right. in Nazareth <laughs> around 18 B.C. Mm -hmm. and of the house of Levi, yes. Mary was the woman of grace chosen to bring forth the son of Yahweh. Yes. Like Esther, her decision to accept Yahweh's purpose to bring his son into the world gave her a position of power and prominence mm -hmm. that not only saved a nation, but the entire world. Wow. Yes. The Iroquois League. Yay! The, the, entire, the entire league. Oh, yeah. The Iroquois the entire league. league. All right, now, not the league. One. Uh -huh. Formed in 16th century United States, yes. they yes. were a complex Native American government. Yes. Perhaps the most advanced government body of the Native American culture in the 1500s. Yes. The League was comprised of five to six nations who managed their affairs through a highly organized parliament or senate. The council members were peace chiefs who were nominated by the women and powerful matrons of the tribes. Yes. yes. The Iroquois family groups were linked through the female line and their women decided the laws of the land. You hear That's that, it. brothers? Uh, That's so, it. So, the men were in power. Yes. But the women made the decisions Decision. on who would rule. That's it. Oh, yeah. Tell us more. All right. Uh, Iroquois. Uh, 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> Jonah so Truth. Yes. Yes. Born Isabella oh, yeah. Bomfrey. Uh -huh. She was one of the first American abolitionists and women's rights activists. Mm -hmm. So Jonah Truth was born into slavery in Swatak Hill, New York mm. in 1797. Mm -hmm. Strong and resilient, 
She escaped to freedom with her infant daughter in 1826. Mm -hmm. After going to court to recover her son in 1828, she became the first black woman to win such a case against a white man. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of her famous quotes says, truth is powerful and it prevails. Yes. Which is what we believe. Truth is powerful and it prevails. We're talking about Yahweh's truth, which is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. No falsities with Yahweh. No falsities. Amen. Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Oh, Mm -hmm. boy. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Cady Stanton was an abolitionist, human rights activist, and one of the first leaders of the women's rights movement. Mm -hmm. Born November 12, 1815, she came from a privileged background and decided early in life to fight for equal rights for women. All right. Elizabeth's father was a slave owner, popular attorney, congressman, and judge who introduced his daughter to the study of law and other so-called male domains early in her life. Mm -hmm. This exposure ignited a fire within Elizabeth to remedy laws that were unjust to women. Mm. She showed courage in her pursuits, and was the main force behind the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention, which is the first convention to be called for the sole purpose of discussing women's rights. Yes. Elizabeth Cady Stanton quoted, The best protection any woman has is courage. Uh Mm -hmm. She worked closely with Susan B. Anthony and was considered the brains behind the operation. Mm -hmm. Mm. Susan B. Anthony. If Elizabeth Cady Stanton was the brains, then Susan B. Anthony was the brawn ah. of the <laughs> women's <laughs> rights movement of that time. Yes. yes. Born <laughs> February 15, 1820, in Adams, Massachusetts, Susan B. Anthony was an American social reformer mm-hmm. and women's rights activist who played a pivotal role in the women's suffrage movement. Yes. Yep. Unlike mm. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan was raised in a Quaker family committed to social equality. As a result, she collected anti-slavery petitions from a young age for the cause of ending slavery. Mm, Wow. The hard work of women like Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Sojourner Truth brought forth the passing of the 19th Amendment, which simply granted the woman the right to vote in the United States of America in 1919. Yeah. You see that? 1919. It says the same year. That the war ended and they formed the League of Nations. That's right. So oh you yeah. see what happens, right? When they want to change and transform the country, they usually enter into war, and then post war, they, they enter into a term called modernism. Yeah. Okay, so war always introduces a shift in society shifting. and a shift in culture. So this is exactly what happened after World War One. Mm-hmm. Everything shifted. Right. Shifting. Yeah, mm-hmm. shifting. 1919. 1919. Well, and now yeah. we, here we are. 2020. Here we are, 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 1920. 2020. Wow. Calendars always, <laughs> they always line up. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it just happens. Elizabeth Blackwell. Born in Bristol, England in 1821, Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell was the first woman to receive a medical degree from an American medical school. Boy, this is a lot of Elizabeths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, okay. Her father, <laughs> I married well. Her father, who wanted <laughs> to help abolish slavery in America, moved the family to America when Elizabeth was 11. Wow. Years later, she turned to medicine after a close friend who was dying suggested she mm-hmm. would have been spared her worst suffering if her physician had been a woman. Wow. Mm. <laughs> her achievements mm. are a symbol of the fearlessness, fortitude, and backbone of a woman driven to break through the walls built up around her by an all-male student body who voted her into medical school as a joke. <laughs> and who taunted her at every opportunity. <laughs> wow. Because of her courage and resilience in the face of bigotry, Elizabeth Blackwell founded the New York Infirmary for Women and Children. Blackwell once said, it's not easy to be a pioneer, but oh, is it fascinating. We feel the same right here in yeah. the deep ecclesia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be a pioneer in this exactly. thing called the ecclesia, yeah. bringing right. it online for you guys. And, you know, it's not easy, but it's rewarding. Right. Yeah. We appreciate Yahweh right. for that. So thank you for being indeed. a part of this. It is fascinating. Absolutely. Harriet Tubman. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We know this name yeah. very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Born Araminta Ross in Maryland in March 1822 as a slave, Harriet Tubman was an American abolitionist and political activist 
who is best known for her groundbreaking work as a conductor for the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. During the Civil War, she served as an armed scout and spy for the Union Army. In her later years, she was an activist in the movement for women's suffrage. Traveling by night and with extreme secrecy, Harriet was given the nickname Moses for her fearless and heroic acts in getting all runaway slaves and fugitives in her care farther north into Canada. She also helped many newly freed enslaved people find work. Mm -hmm. Harriet once said, Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Wow. Mm. Mother Teresa. This woman who once said, peace begins with a smile, was born on August 26, 1910, in Macedonia. Wow. Mother Macedonia. Teresa, <laughs> Macedonia. <laughs> Mother Teresa experienced her call within a call in 1946. Her order established a hospice, centers for the blind, aged, and disabled, and a leper colony. She was the founder of the Order of the Missionaries of Charity, a Roman Catholic congregation of women dedicated to helping the poor. Yes. In 1979, Mother Teresa received the Nobel Peace Prize for her humanitarian work. Mm -hmm. Because she is considered one of the 20th century's greatest humanitarians, in December 2015, Pope Francis, after recognizing a second miracle attributed to Mother Teresa, mm -hmm. canonized her. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You, know, you know this guy. <laughs> Oh, man, he'll get it done, Joe. Whoa. Get it deep. Yeah, he'll get right. it done. <laughs> she is now referred to as St. Teresa of ay, ay, ay. Calcutta. <laughs> Calcutta. <Whoa. laughs> St. Teresa. St. Teresa. Trotting the path forged by the great women I just highlighted and carrying the torch to change times and laws in this age of the woman are women with names like Jacinda Arden, mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi. Big yes. Oh, it's some big names. Jeez. Eva Cayley, mm. Greta Thunberg. Beyonce, mm. Oprah, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II, mm. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, yeah. Christine Lagarde, Angela Merkel, Melinda Gates, Michelle Obama, Cynthia Marshall, Ursula von der Leyen, Ginny Romney, Marilyn Hewson, Susan Wachkiki, Katrin J Jacobs' daughter, Kelly Loeffler, Amy Globachar, Elizabeth Warren, and Kamala Harris. Oh, boy. Ooh. These women are listed as business insider most powerful women of the world in 2020. Oh, wow. Now, hold on now. Hold, wow. you, call, you call some big names there. Yo, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. We got to talk about some of them. Now, uh, uh, her name, Kat Katrin Jacobs' daughter, of mm -hmm. course, you know, it's old country names, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> she is from, she's from Iceland. She is the prime minister of Iceland right now. Yeah. Mm. She's 44 years old. 44, Whoa. brother. She's a millennium. She, she, no, 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 no. She's, no. she's X. She's so X. she's right. She's right on the tip. The she's X born X. in 76. Oh. And you know, uh, an the what? millennium's come in 1981. So mm. she is right there on the edge. And then we talked about Eva, Eva Cayley. Eva Cayley. Yeah. And, you know, she's powerful too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jacinda <laughs> Arden. She <laughs> is the, the prime minister of New Zealand. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. She's also 40. So she is born in 1980, so she is right on the edge. Brother, when she ran in the last election, uh. she was uncontested. Wow. wow. Landslide uh, victory. Landslide. landslide. So From you're talking Zealand. about man, young nobody, women <laughs> moving into power globally. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you got Angela Markell and, Markel, and, and yeah. Queen, Queen Elizabeth uh, and the rest uh, of them. Uh. But there's a shift in the political sphere. Geopolitics has, has changed, and women are <laughs> rising up, man. Yeah. This is the time. Women, this is the time. We'll you see, know, we'll it's see. a great year to be a woman. <laughs> yes, I tell you. Wow. Heavy names. Mm -hmm. Heavy names. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Three wow. women to watch on this list are Eva Kelly, Nancy mm -hmm. Pelosi, and Kamala Harris. All yes. right. Tell us why. Eva Kelly is a Greek politician of the Panhellenic Socialist Movement and former television news presenter who has been serving as a member of the European Parliament since 2014. Wow. wow. Founder of the Future Forum in Brussels and chair of the Future of Science and Technology panel of the <laughs> European Parliament, K 
Kaylee leads exponential technologies. Mm. Yeah. Like Elon Musk, <laughs> she <laughs> believes artificial intelligence will solve the future crisis of humanity and bring a world of harmony and longevity. Yeah. So put Eva Kaylee on your list of women to watch in this decade. Watch watch yes. She, you know, she is from, that we talked about in the broadcast two weeks mm. ago, she is from Thessalonica, mm -hmm. you know, like Book of Thessalonians. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so sh that's exactly where she's from. She went to the Aristotle University, you know, so I didn't even know that was a thing. He's got a university. He's and got a university. Yeah, so she went there, brother, so oh, she oh, is she's ready. Philosophy. She's in the position right now to take this. <laughs> <laughs> she's in a position to take us to the next level. Nancy Pelosi served <laughs> as a U.S. Pre representative from California since 1987. Mm. She became the first female Speaker of the House of representatives in mm. the United States in 2007 and served until 2011. Wow. In 2019, she became Speaker of the House once more. Pelosi is the only woman to get this close to presidency in the history of the United States. Wow. After the vice president, she is the second in line via the presidential order of succession. Right. When she took office, she said, it is a historic moment for the Congress and a historic moment for the women of this country. Yeah. It is a moment for which we have waited over 200 years. Wow. Oh, wow. 200 wow. years. 200 years. Wow. So she's putting the time stamp on it. That's right. She's putting the time stamp on it. Mm -hmm. 200 years. Okay. Wow. Ka Kamala Harris is an American politician, an attorney who has served as the junior United States Senator from California since 2017. She is the first woman, the first African American, and the first South Asian American to hold the office of Attorney General in the history of California. She is now the Democratic Vice Presidential nominee for the 2020 election with running mate Joe Biden. Wow. Kamala's husband, Douglas Emhoff, was born to Jewish parents. Mm. Therefore, he has direct ties to Israel. Yes. Mm. He studied <laughs> law and at one point in his career represented Walmart as one of his clients. Emhoff is now a highly experienced entertainment litigator and is well on his way to being the first second gentleman in the history of the United States of America. <laughs> what a title, second gentleman. That's what they call him, Joe. <laughs> second gentleman. <laughs> so when Nicolette yeah. runs for politics, you, she is going to be the senator or the congresswoman or the president, whatever it is, and you're going to be the first gentleman or the second gentleman of the home. Yeah. <laughs> first gentleman. <laughs> I have the money. Oh, uh, you the man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They better change this name here. They better change it up. I don't like the gentleman. Which one you want to be? The man. The man. The, the man. first man. You got to be the man. You got to be uh, <laughs> the man. I's a yeah. man. Yeah, man. Yeah, big man. The man is right at the end of gentle. Right, yeah. <laughs> gentle Don't say no, no, no. Forget about the gentle part. Oh, wow. <laughs> first yeah. man. First man. Good word. Good word. Good word. Kamala and her sister, who was a political analyst for MSNBC, yes. also campaigned for Hillary Clinton during the 2016 presidential uh -huh. season. Mm -hmm. After the polls are revealed and the ballots tallied, Kamala Harris could become the first female vice president and vice president of color in the history of the United States. Yes. Then she would be the woman in the second highest seat of power Ooh. in the United States. Right above Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. You see that chain, brother? Wow. You got the president, and then you have these two women. <laughs> and if they move Diane Feinstein into the president uh, pro tempore, now you got three, three women. in the line of succession. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. The line of succession. I'll tell you, that's it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> in summation, the script has been written, and the age has been set for the woman to sit in the seat of power and rule according to the signs of the times. Yes. Mm. The Economist and Time magazine have been powerful periodical prophets for the world system. Yes. And for the last three years, they have been heralding this time called the Year of the Woman. Yes. Well, yo! Uh. Additionally, <laughs> on the November 2017 Year Friday of the cover of, Year of the Politico magazine, their headline reads, this is, this is November 2017 now. November 2017. The headline reads, Why 2020 Will Be the Year of the Woman. Yeah. Wow. Two of the, the four prophesied. women. Prophesy. Mm -hmm. Two of the four women whose face graced the cover of this edition were none other than Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. Yep. 
Woo! That was from 2017, <laughs> 2017. November. It's right on the screen. Now you see, you can see it yeah. for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we give you this this prophecy yes. lined up. You lined up. History repeating itself. Yes. No doubt. No doubt. You cannot. You cannot. My goodness. Go and vote. My history repeating itself. <laughs> 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 Only time we tell history repeating itself. History, history yeah. repeating itself. Encrypted in so much foreshadowing, I believe based on all this evidence, all the evidence presented here, yes. that mm -hmm. we'll see the first female vice president of the United States sworn in office come January 2021. Wow. What do you see? Wow. And that concludes my portion of the segment on the woman. My goodness. Listen. That, that, I mean, you know, Woo! You, that's heavy hitters. Yeah, the only thing you can say is awesome. Awesome. You that's want to know? Say. I mean, that, there, there it is. That, that's it. There it is. That's it. We are in unprecedented times. Absolutely. Now, let, <laughs> you know, I, I have, I have to add something. I have to add something to this because this is, this is amazing. Yes. Now, you, you, you dropped some big names. I didn't want to get off course, you yeah. know, but you talked about Kelly Loeffler. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, she's up for re-election. She, she's campaigning right now. Mm. Her situation Kay. was she got the seat because uh, her predecessor passed away. Hmm. So she was like LBJ. Now she's campaigning for the seat for real. Okay. Mm. She is the Whoa. richest uh, senator right now. Wow. She's the yeah. richest congresswoman. She's worth $500 million, brother. She's right Who here from you? Georgia. Yeah, so you got some yeah. big money. In this political race wow. this year, yes, and wow. there's some, you got some powerful women in the political race right now. Mm -mm -mm. So, so listen to this: the Equal Rights Amendment that we yes. were talking about, mm -hmm. right? Senator Charles Curtis. Now, who's Charles Curtis? You see, I heard that name before. This was the VP for Hoover. Yes. So we're talking about the VP, the vice president, the Indian vice president, right? The one, the one uh, back uh, in uh, 1932. Uh, that's right. Him and Representative Daniel Anthony Jr. Now, you know, Daniel, that's a prophetic name. Yes. Who is right, Daniel right. Anthony Jr.? That's Susan B. Anthony's nephew. See? Mm. Mm. Him and Curtis together, mm. they introduced the Equal Rights Amendment for the first time as the Senate Joint Resolution Number 21 on December 10th, 1923. So what does that mean? You got to look for something critical to happen yeah. in 2021. Why? Because the resolution was 21. 21. So this amendment was for the women's vote. So you have to look for something critical to happen vote. in 2021, and you also have to look for it to be solidified in December That's of 2023, because right. it was introduced in 1923, December 1923. So we're talking right. about time. You're talking about time. You're mastering the timeline. Look for something critical to happen for women in 2021, and then for it to be solidified in, in 2023, 2023, December 2023. Set that. Right I mean, up. get into your calendar right now and put in your calendar right now, December 2023, something critical is going to happen to solidify for women. Put in your candle calendar right now that something critical is going to happen in 2021 to to start this whole process boss lady. for for the women. Hmm? The boss lady. The boss lady. <laughs> yeah, you know because well, this this, the, this the is the what we do. Boss. Yeah, the real boss. <laughs> yeah, we we'll definitely see y'all in the store for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so, Nicolette, let's go to let's go to the comments. Joe, you had a lot of comments. Everybody said in your, sec your segment, you did an awesome job. Yeah. So uh, the Nicolette glory. says, yeah, whether you vote or not, history is repeating. Mm -hmm. That's and, it. And that is so true. That is so true. Uh, Cheryl Williams said, wonderful job, Sarah. Yes, yes, yes. She's diving to this. I mean, from Genesis. And then diving to the present with these heavy ladies. Oh, I tell you. Yes. Mm -hmm. She says, yes, is ordained to be so. Yes. And Nicolette said, well done, my sophisticated songbird, <laughs> Sister Sarah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat well, I, I, I need I needed to, 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 and I know Joe can handle that, I needed to jump into uh, that segment. Oh, yes. Oh Joe, yes. here's what we're going to do, brother. We're going we're gonna to push World War III to next week. Let's do it. We're going to do an entire episode around World War III. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. An entire, oh. why? Because this is going to be after the election. That's it. We're going to yeah. keep all, all the, all, everything up there. Let's do it. And Let's we're going to talk, talk about World War III. 
Here's the thing about yeah. World War One and World War Two. Joe told you. Right. In World War One. Uh, so Joe said, "What if BJ? it doesn't go?" I mean, sorry, BJ said, "What if it doesn't go according to the plan?" Here's what we know about plans: whatever Yahweh ordains, it must happen. So are we saying that Yahweh is ordaining this election to go for the Democrats? No, I would not be so presumptuous to say that. I'm just saying, based on the timeline, something is going to happen between 2021 and 2023 mm -hmm. to set the stakes for the Iroquois, the Iroquois system of government to be implemented on this land. Because you might say this is the mm -hmm. United States of America, right? but 500 years ago, this was the United States of the Iroquois. Iroquois. Yep. So you have to go, because Solomon says history repeats itself. Repeat so you have to go right. back to the beginning. So whether that happens in 2020 or 2024 or 2028, this is going to happen. Yes. We just believe that it may happen sooner than later. That is my personal view. That is not the view of the deep ecclesia. The deep ecclesia does not get involved in politics. No, no, never liked it. <laughs> we are about the kingdom. Never liked it. But... <laughs> But from a personal standpoint mm. of reading timelines, uh, this is the information that has been presented. And right. you have a lot of prophetic voices that are declaring things, as Sarah said, way back in November of 2017. You That's had right. this cover saying, why 2020 would woman. be the year of the woman. Now, mm. it didn't say that it would be the year of the woman in America. It's talking about the year of the woman Globally, globally. Yeah. and this is exactly what you see. Yeah. You see more women in politics po yeah. power, and in power, power, powerful power than any other time Absolutely. in history. Yes. yes, this is what's happening. So there has been a shift economically. There's been a shift politically. There's been a shift dynamically in every single country, in every single business, in every single reform. So what do we expect in the election of 2020? We expect that whatever is done is going to work toward the good of those that are called according to his purpose. That's yeah. what we expect. Yeah. Yeah. So whether the, exactly. the Republicans stay in power or whether, or whether Democrats, the Democrats come into the power, it matters not. We know that our calling our election is sure, and we're looking forward to the yeah. manifest destiny of yes. us going to the promised land. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So, 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 so this, yeah. is, this is what we believe. Now, there, there, we have to prepare for for the World War III, which is coming. It has to come. The it Bible said come. it has to come. It has to come. And we're going to be here. There's no rapture that's going to take no, you away no, from World War III. We it believers are going to be here. It has to so come. So we have to We have to dedicate an entire episode after the election. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about hey, World, World War III. III. Let's do it. But Let's here, do it. here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. After we finish praying, we're going to end the broadcast. And then we're going to come right back for a broadcast. It's going to be a standalone video. And we're going to talk for a few minutes prophetically about what uh, we anticipate happening in this election. Because this election is more than, is, is, is not just centered around U.S. No. politics. No. Right, right. This election is going to change the landscape of countries the world. Mm -hmm. worldwide. The world. yes. the world. So we're going to come back and we're going to spend 10 minutes just talking about different things that we expect to happen that's going to affect countries mm -hmm. around the world oh, yeah. uh, after this election. And that's going to be a standalone video that's just centered around mm -hmm. that. So look for that right after the prayer. As I said, we're going to end the broadcast as we normally do, and then we're going to go live again, and we're going to talk specifically about that so that it can be a condensed video that you can hold on to, that you can marinate on, and, and you can ponder on it as we await the election results yeah. of oh, yeah. oh, next yeah. week. So Joe... Brother, we're going to ask you to please man of war. Yes, enter, uh, en enter into <laughs> prayer sessions for yes. us. Enter into prayer sessions for these powerful women who are uh, taking their spot. Yes. You know, there's nothing wrong with a woman being in no. power. There's, no. No, there's mm. nothing wrong with mm -hmm. it. You nothing. know, Yahweh right, right. said he made the woman as a help, help meet. meet. Yes. And guess what? It simply meant that she was to help Adam and he That's was right. to help her. That's it's right. not all the work on Adam's shoulder and no. then she comes in every now and then to assist. Right. No, so he, he took the rib from the side, as, as most pastors would tell you. He took the rib from the side to show that she was equal to him. That's right. Okay, he didn't take it from the, the foot to say that she's beneath mm -hmm. him. He didn't take it from the head to say that she's above him. Side by side, they're supposed to work together to take on this heavy mantle that's called the mandate of productivity 
and navigating and managing this world in great stewardship. Yeah. And so we, we applaud the women who are moving into, yes. into leadership. We need the men to stand up and also operate at their sev- same level of authority in leadership. Yeah. So this is what we want. We yeah. want cooperation. Uh, yes. We want a cohesive unit. We want women to be involved in politics so that they can help frame because, you know, in the, in the garden, that's what it was. That's yeah, it. Absolutely. Adam and Eve came together, and they worked together that's to right. make sure that they were great stewards over the work. Yeah. So they had business meetings where they mm-hmm. <laughs> sat to the table and <laughs> said, okay, <laughs> Eve, this is what <laughs> we're going to do today. And yeah. she agreed, or that's she said, right. well, you know what, I, 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 let, let's true. try it this way. Mm-hmm. And it Yahweh wasn't, never excluded her. Yahweh never she excluded right. her. Right. 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 And when it exactly. came time for discipline, mm-hmm. she was right there, too. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Right. So, so we, we expect <laughs> these things to happen in business and in politics. We expect women to be around the table. We also expect men to be present in the home. We don't that's expect right. the man to just mm-hmm. go and you work, Mm-mm. you know, nine to nine, and then he comes home for ten minutes and plays with the children for 10 minutes, and then he goes off and does what he wants to do. Mm -mm. You have to be present in your home as well. You have to help navigate the vision of the home. So we we expect a cohesiveness to come together, and it's taken us 6,000 years to get back to this. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate what Yahweh is doing right now in this season because he is calling both men and women. The the whole, the Joel said, he said, I saw this great vision in the last days. I saw the Spirit of God being poured out on all flesh, man and woman. That's right. And he said that women and men will be prophesying. They will be leading they would be they would be encouraging each other. So we, we, we anticipate this. So all of you strong women out there, we, we love you, we appreciate you. All of you strong men out there, we love you and appreciate you too. But we need oh, to yeah. work cohesively. Cohesive, That's what yes. we do. Yeah, it's about cohesiveness. It's about working together as one. So Joe, we need you to pray for the women on this broadcast. We need you to pray for the women who are in politics. We need you to pray for the women who are in leadership to make sure that we are all making the proper decisions that need to be made to move Yahweh's kingdom agenda forward, for Goshen to be built, for us to be protected. And and then uh, we're going to come back and wrap it up and jump right into that secondary broadcast. Amen. 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 Yahweh, we thank you. Thank you, Yahweh. We give you glory. We honor you because you are good and your mercy endure forever. Yes. yes. We thank you for this broadcasting. We thank you for the spirit of truth. Uh, we thank you, Alos Paraklitos, uh, for downloading the truth uh, into our brother. And we thank you for the gift of prophecy. We thank you for insight, uh, the gift of wisdom. Uh, we thank you thank because uh, your servant uh, Solomon said that there is nothing yeah. new under the sun. And we thank you for what is taking place. Uh, Yes, we thank yeah, you because uh, in your plan that you have never excluded a woman. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We thank yes, you sure. because uh, Eve was the first uh, to name her son. And, can, and she says that I've acquired of thank him you, yeah. from Yahweh. We thank you yeah, for that yeah, gift uh, of prophecy. We thank you we today thank you. for the woman who are on the broadcasting. And we thank you for this powerful yes, woman yeah. that you have given us. Uh, we thank, thank you for you. our help meet. Uh, Yahweh, we give you all the glory, and I pray even Thank right now, Jesus. hallelujah, that you will continue to strengthen them. I pray, Thank Yahweh, Yahweh, that even right now, hallelujah, hallelujah. that they will be established. I pray yes, today Lord. that you will strengthen them in a mighty way. I pray, hallelujah. Yahweh, hallelujah. But even as the man is a pillar, so also Thank they are you, called Yahweh. to be pillars. Yes. We thank you because when Solomon oh, yes, sure. built the temple, he had a Boaz and Yashim. And you, Boaz said in him, uh, there was strength. And Yashim said that uh, he is established. So we pray today, hallelujah, for this Thank woman you, on the broadcast. Hallelujah. Yes, sure. Our Thank beloved you. sister, hallelujah. Yes, there will be strength in you, yes, Yahweh, in the Yahweh mighty in name Yeshua. of Yeshua Hamashiach. But in no other way, there will be established in you. So I pray Uh, that there will be established and you will establish them. uh, That you will, hallelujah, hallelujah, enlarge the territory. I pray, hallelujah, that everywhere the soul of the feet shall touch, they will possess in the mighty way. Why? Because it is your will them to be a powerful woman, not to be lesser than a man, but to be powerful. The first time Thank Yahweh, Yahweh. That, uh, the word, the prophetess was declared, hallelujah. That's... It was declared over your servant Miriam. Uh, the word declared it, uh, has they come yes, out Yahweh. of uh, the Egypt, uh, yeah, as they crossed uh, the Red Sea. She grabbed a tamarind, uh, and this Yahweh. is where your word says, uh, 
Miriam the prophetess, uh, she gathered the women around yes, and they begin yes. to worship you in a mighty yeah, way. Yeah, she lead worship in a mighty Touch way. Just as your servant David lead worship, just as your servant David created 24 hours of worship. But it was Miriam, oh God, it was not Moses, sure. but it was Miriam the prophetess who gathered the women. Now. And they began uh, to worship you because worship you belong to you. you. She understood uh, the power in sure, worship. Uh, so today, hallelujah. I pray, hallelujah, over this woman. Hallelujah. I pray That's over the, the homes. Uh, the be mighty woman, a mighty warrior like Deborah the prophetess, uh, who patterned uh, after Miriam the prophetess. Uh, not only will there be prophetess in the home, but prophetess in the community. Prophetess, hallelujah, in the surrounding, hallelujah. I pray, Yahweh, that there will be mighty, not just mighty women. But every word that come out of the mouth will be to build, to edify, hallelujah. I pray, Yahweh, that you will continue to strengthen, hallelujah. We give you glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I pray today, hallelujah, that you will do a new thing, hallelujah. Because the devil, hallelujah, sure has desired to tarnish the image of the woman, yes, hallelujah. Yes. Oh, as our beloved sister Sarah say, hallelujah. Yes, the devil is trying to tear down her good image. So today hallelujah. I pray, Yahweh, for restoration hallelujah. of the woman, hallelujah. I pray, Yahweh, that you will hallelujah. do something, hallelujah, in a mighty way, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, her image has been tarnished, yes, God, but you hallelujah. are the restorer. You are the redeemer, Yahweh. Hallelujah. So to the redeemer, the woman, restore her image. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Restore her image yes, God, in public. Hallelujah. Restore her image uh, in Thank the you, home. Yes, restore her image. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Restore her image. Uh, because we know, hallelujah, that you have called her for greatness. Uh, that you have called the woman, hallelujah, to do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. So we give you thanks and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, sure, hallelujah. Sure. We bless your name. Woman has always been pivot. Pivot. Hallelujah. hallelujah. To the movement. Sure. Hallelujah. Sure. We thank you. Hallelujah. Remember Lydia. Hallelujah. She was a seller of purple. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, when Paul God. said hallelujah foot in Macedonia. Oh, she was. Hallelujah. She available her home. Hallelujah. hallelujah for ministry. Hallelujah. Oh, she began the first uh, house church, hallelujah. So today, hallelujah, we thank you, hallelujah, for that ecclesia was shut under her roof. So today yes, I pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, that many of the women, hallelujah, have been, hallelujah, such, instrument, oh, yeah. hallelujah, to ministry. So yeah. today I pray, Yahweh, that you will, hallelujah, bless, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sure, bless, sure. hallelujah, enlarge the territory, hallelujah. hallelujah. I pray there will not be less, hallelujah. I pray, hallelujah, many of them, hallelujah, hallelujah. have been shaken, but not only shaken, many of them have been a shadow behind hallelujah. the great man. So I pray today, yeah. hallelujah, that you will bring them, hallelujah, from shadow bring into light, hallelujah. hallelujah. You hallelujah. have called them to be the salt of the earth. You have called them to be hallelujah. the light, so. Yes, we yeah. pray, hallelujah, for restoration, hallelujah. You. Whatsoever the devil, hallelujah, stolen and astonished today, hallelujah. I pray yes, for Lord, restoration, man. hallelujah. Yes, I pray yeah. for restoration, hallelujah. Yes, oh, hallelujah, as the prophet Joel declared, hallelujah, yes, that in the last days, hallelujah, we yes, are in the last days, hallelujah. Oh, the last days that begun and the last days continue, hallelujah. Oh, the women we prophesy, hallelujah. You say your maiden servant, they will prophesy. Oh, they have been prophesying then before the prophet Joel spoke. And they will prophesy even now. So I pray, Yahweh, that you will use Wake them up. for greatness. Yeah. Yahweh, we bring, hallelujah, the women of power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Your word declared to pray for those who lead, yeah. for those who have said lordship yeah. over us. Yeah. You say pray for the king. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, I pray, hallelujah, yes. for this powerful woman that Sister Sarah mentioned, hallelujah. They are powerful women, hallelujah. Powerful women, hallelujah, in government. Powerful women in position, hallelujah. But oh, I pray, Yahweh, El Chakma, that you will give them wisdom. Wisdom, hallelujah. Oh, not to make a decision according oh, to emotion, but to make decision according to the wisdom that comes from you, El Chakma. Oh, hallelujah, for every decision that we we'll make. Oh, we affect not only the nation, the community, but we'll affect the country and the world. So I pray, Yahweh, that you will grant them wisdom. Hallelujah. I pray, Yahweh, that you will use them as higher hand. 
for your glory. Use them as higher hand for your glory. Hallelujah. That whatsoever the enemy has meant for evil, Yahweh, you will turn around for good. Hallelujah yes, to the Lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it around for good. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Reverse the curse. Reverse the curse. Hallelujah. Reverse, hallelujah, what the enemy has meant for evil, for good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you are a Yahweh El Ori. Hallelujah. You are the light. Hallelujah. Oh, let your light so shine among those women. Let your light so shine. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine. Hallelujah. I pray Yahweh hallelujah. today, hallelujah, that self be crucified in the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach. I know that the devil has an agenda, hallelujah. But I pray, hallelujah, that the agenda of the devil, hallelujah, be canceled, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, that this woman will propel your agenda forth, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, propel your agenda forth, hallelujah. Oh, Father, in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Oh, let it come to pass even right now, hallelujah. That your will be done, hallelujah, in the life of these women, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Use them as higher hand for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. I pray for wisdom. I pray for guidance. I pray, Yahweh, that you will order the step, hallelujah. Order the step, hallelujah. I know the devil will be in the ears, hallelujah, talking, hallelujah. Because you came and you asked, hallelujah, who you have been talking to. Hallelujah, that was a question you asked, Adam and Eve. And I know the devil will be in the ears, hallelujah, prophesied in darkness. But I pray, hallelujah, that those dark words will fall, hallelujah, on deaf ground. Hallelujah, I pray that those words, hallelujah, will be canceled, hallelujah. I pray that those words, those satanic words, hallelujah, oh, will not amount to nothing, hallelujah. That shall will be done, hallelujah. Wind of life, saturate this woman. Saturate them, hallelujah. Oh, breath of life. Speak, speak life. Speak life. In the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Speak life, speak life, hallelujah. As these women are moving up to per prominent position. As, hallelujah, they are moving, as they are rising. As they are moving on to the ladder to prominent, hallelujah, position. So I pray, hallelujah, Yahweh, that you will put a spirit on them, hallelujah. It says, hallelujah, that your spirit will be upon them. Your spirit, hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh, you say that you, hallelujah, change the heart of kings. You say the heart of the kings is in my hand. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So today we know that these women are no different. As they rise to this prominent position, their heart is in your hand. Mold it like yours. Confirm it to yours. Hallelujah. That they will shed, hallelujah. They will shed everything, hallelujah, for Goshem. So Yahweh, we give you glory, hallelujah. We give you glory, we give you glory, we give you glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, while the man of lawlessness, hallelujah. Hallelujah, is moving his agenda, hallelujah. Yahweh, you also moving your agenda. So we are you, thank you, we give you glory, hallelujah. Bless, hallelujah, bless this woman, bless them, hallelujah, in the mighty way, hallelujah. I pray, Yahweh, hallelujah, that you will send a wise counselor. Wise counselor, because this prominent position, hallelujah, of a counselor. Hallelujah. So I pray that you will send, oh, Rabba Kashan, hallelujah. Yahweh, I pray in the mighty name of Yeshua, Amashiach, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I rebuke, hallelujah, the counsel of Ahithophel. I cancel it in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach. That evil counsel, hallelujah. In one way it shall come. Let the fire of Allah's Paracletus consume the counsel. The evil counsel, hallelujah. Diffuse the plan. Diffuse it, hallelujah. Break it by fire, by fire. Let the fire of Allah's Paracletus. Let the fire of Allah's Paracletus confuse that evil counsel. So Yahweh, when the evil counsel shall come into the ear of this prominent woman, hallelujah, that will cause them to make a, a decision that will affect your people. Yahweh, I pray in the name of Yeshua Mashiach, let the whirlwind of Yahweh scatter, scatter, scatter that plan by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, oh fire, hallelujah. Let the fire leave your throne, Yahweh, and consume that evil plan. In the name of Yeshua Mashiach. The council, the council, the evil council, hallelujah, cancel it by fire, hallelujah. Yahweh, I pray, hallelujah, that it will not even reach, hallelujah. It will not even reach the ears. 
So Yahweh, I pray that you do it for your glory. We thank you today, hallelujah. We know, hallelujah, that you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Yahweh, declare that you set up kings. You promote yes, kings. You promote yes, position. Yes, and you demote position. Yeah, we'll be praised. We thank you. Nothing catches you by surprise. Thank we know that you have the last say. You know who will rise to power and you know who will fall. But in all things we give you glory. Because we know that nothing will catch you by surprise. So we thank you. Set prominent women to advance Goshen. Hallelujah. And prepare the return. Hallelujah. Of the King of Glory, Yeshua Amashiach. Oh, glory to the Lamb. We thank you today. We thank you today. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. We pray. We pray. We pray for a higher hand. Hallelujah. That will listen to your voice. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua Amashiach. For we know everything. Hallelujah. The devil is working over time. But we know, Yahweh, nothing will catch you by surprise. Nothing will catch you by surprise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While this prophet, hallelujah. Would prophesy demons uh, and false miracle. Uh, Yahweh, you have a greater plan. You have a greater plan. So we give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. My father, my father. Worthy as a lamb. Hallelujah. You are the only wise Yahweh El Chakma. Hallelujah. We give you glory today. And we honor you. Not our will, but that your will be done. For we know, hallelujah. As history repeats itself. So nothing is new under the sun. But in all things we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We thank you for this information. We thank you, Alos Parakliros, for insight. Hallelujah. We thank you for insight. Thank you, Yahweh. And we thank you for this broadcasting for your glory. Receive all the glory. All the adoration. Not our will, but that your will be done. Yes. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Yes, God. Name of Yeshua Mashiach. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Not our will, but that your will be done. Hallelujah. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. We thank you, hallelujah, for strength. We thank you for wisdom. Hallelujah. We thank you for restoration. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. We praise Him. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory. Thank you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This has, been, this has been awesome. This has yes. been awesome. Worthy Man. are you, yes. God. Thank you. Well, we thank Yahweh for his many blessings. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we, We've yes. had a wonderful time yes, here indeed. at the Deep Dive Hallelujah. Live. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you guys for being here with us. Yes. yes. We appreciate yes. you joining us oh, yes, every you. single Absolutely. Friday. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Sabbath. Yes. This one is no exception. Yeah, so we just yes. appreciate you guys. Yes. yes. And indeed. as I said before, your labor we're coming back. Yes. Oh, it's not in vain. We're coming back next week. Yes. We're going to be talking about World War III. The entire yes. episode yes. is going to be World War, War III. Amen. Prepare yourself. Amen. Prepare yourself because we, you know, it has to happen. It has to happen. Yes. Revelation said it's coming. It's coming. Right. So we can't escape it. We can't escape it. All right. And it's yep. been decided since Genesis chapter 10. That's it. So you know, oh. we talked about Gog and Magog way Ooh. back in Genesis chapter Ooh. 10. Ezekiel yeah. came, yeah, Ezekiel came and he said, this, you know, he confirmed that yes. he said this is yes. going to happen. And then it's John saw the battle of Armageddon. Yes. Yeah. It's all there. It's all, it's yes. all there in the Bible. So we believe it and we're going to tell you exactly who's going to be involved yes. in this great battle come next week. So we thank you very much for your participation, for viewing. Yeah. As soon as we end this broadcast, as I said, we're going to go live again. Again. And we're going to be talking briefly 
We're going to wrap up everything that we discussed yes. as well as give you just a little bit more information. So give us about two minutes. You're going to see us right back here. Right back, right live back. Live again. Yes, it's going to yes. be a separate video. Uh, you know, we would just want to condense everything that we shared. And then we're going to come back next week, Friday. Yeah. Guns blazing. Pun World intended. War III. Three. World yeah. War Three. Gun blazing. Joe <laughs> is going to design that 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 episode. And Amen. we're going we're gonna to do it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Quentin, yeah. Quentin said he's excited to hear about World War Three. Guess what, Ken, Quentin? I am too. I, I want to hear about World <laughs> yes, War Three. Yes. You know, just yeah. like you, my brother. Man. So thank you very much for being here, guys. We really appreciate your time. We really appreciate your your effort for making this and sharing it with all of your friends. Uh, like I said, give us a few minutes, and we're going to be back. Shabbat shalom Shabbat for those shalom. of you that have Shabbat to leave. Shabbat shalom. And Shabbat we are going to see you shalom. next week, Friday. Let's give the people a round of applause. Yeah. Take Shabbat yes. shalom. Blessings. Thank you. Yay. Yes. Blessing, awesome. blessing, yes. blessing, yes. blessing. Yes. blessing. Yes. All a prominent yes. woman. Yes.